from retired filmmaker George Lucas. Hello, I'm George Lucas, creator of Star Wars, and welcome to the George Lucas Talk Show 10th Annual Life Day Holiday Special. Uh, this is uh, part one of two shows we'll be doing this month celebrating Life Day. Uh, Patrick, are you there? Hi, George. How are you? I'm doing all right. Happy Life Day to you. Happy Life Day to you. We're here. We're doing it. We're here and we are doing it. And this is the yeah. 10th. This is the tenth time that we've been celebrating Life Day on this show. Uh, before we've actually reached our tenth anniversary of the show. Yeah, that's ex is January is the tenth anniversary, right? I think February, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, I'll that's look exciting. it up. I'll look it up. Okay. But we're we're close. We're we're nearing the end of our tenth year, and yeah. uh, and we've done ten of these shows. Yeah, here we are, and everyone's here, here with us. You know, well, which well, is the nicest part of all. No, that's not true. Uh, Watto's not here, and Jar Jar isn't here. I guess that's true. I guess we're missing two very important people. But I meant, I meant the audience, right? Uh, and the uh, the live audience that is often at our in person shows. Yeah. But the Georgie Porgies are in the chat. Look at them. They're yeah. they're. Uh, I hope you're all wearing your Life Day robes to celebrate this uh, holiday. It's a day to celebrate, to love, to live, to grow, to dream. To breathe, to mm -hmm. verb. Mm -hmm. uh, life day is a day for verbing. <laughs> I guess that's true, right? So I guess many verbs. Yeah, yeah. And we have our life day orbs, as you can, as we demonstrated before, to celebrate. Yeah, they're right here. <clears throat> light yours up. Light it up. Why is yours you so much brighter than mine? I think it's the. I think it's my because I have a uh, ring mine's light. Mine's more on. detail. Look at that. oh, why is mine showing so much uh, more detail than yours? I, I anyway, it's, it's very exciting. That's all right. Very exciting uh, thing. And I see you have your Life Day tree up in the background to celebrate. I do. There's, there's a Life Day tree and then there's a Life Day Chewy right there. Right. And then all your Life Day physical media on the shelf. <laughs> yes. Yes. Because it also is a day to celebrate physical media. The mm -hmm. only way that the only way that modern entertainment can actually make money because streaming is a, a, a pit of emptiness. Everyone's been laughing at me for years saying, well, you got so much physical media. And guess what? It's coming back, baby. It's coming back. Well, and even if it's not coming back, it's here to stay. Sure. That's sure. the one thing about physical media is it doesn't go away. Although every mm -hmm. now and then, if you put in a disc that you haven't played in two decades, <laughs> you find it just stopped working at some point. It's gone. In those it's two gone. decades. So do not try to play your old DVDs. Just believe yeah. that they are, they're like, it's like, <laughs> I I feel like a lot of like uh, the 35 millimeter, the 70 mil, like the film prints mm -hmm. I have, I know that those mm -hmm. will still play. Yeah. And the digital copies that I have of films, I'm pretty sure are uncorrupted, but things that are on physical discs, mm -hmm. um, I sort of think of them as like Schrodinger's uh, physical media collection that you don't sure. know whether the disc works or not, but it can be both uh -huh. things as long as you keep it in the case. And and let everyone take away that lesson tonight, right? And that's uh, and and Patrick, do you have any life day wishes? Um, my life day wish. Well, this segues into something I was about to talk about. Right. Tonight we're raising money for the food bank of New York City. So that's here's right. all the info. Uh, we'll have it on the screen during the show. But if you donate one dollar, it will buy five meals. They will be able to use that one dollar to buy five meals for people. So when you and donate that. You go to bit.ly slash FBGLTS and then Fib forward Blitz. your receipt to us. Yes. Fib Blitz. What is, what is Fib What is Fib Glitz? Food Bank, George Lucas Talk Show. That makes sense. Yeah. That sounds um, like it would be a name of a kind of alien creature, a Fib Glitz. Like some sort of true. little animal that helps people get, turns $1 into five meals. That's what yes. the, that creature does. Uh, so do that. We'll keep track of it. And we will uh, keep the tally running throughout the night. But um, I want to I want to buy a lot of meals for people in New York, you know. And, and, I think and also, let's uh, for Georgie Porgies in the in the chat. Uh, let's get some mm -hmm. fan art of what a fiblet looks like and how they turn one dollar <laughs> into five meals. Yes. Uh, now, George, we have a lot of upcoming things to talk about. All right. Uh, well, we can talk shows. about those later. We can talk about those later. We can spread those throughout the show, right? If you want to, I was I, I was going to say them all up top, but we could totally do it throughout the show if you want. Let's tease them, and and maybe we'll tell you about the future when we start okay. raising money for the food bank. Okay. 
Sounds good. Now, um, now, Patrick, we had some late a late breaking development. Yeah, it's very funny. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, so I I realized in my email to one of our guests, Ricky Lindholm, mm-hmm. in the subject line, it said two five instead of twelve five. And now two five famously is February and not December. That's the second yeah. month of the year as opposed to the twelfth month of the year. In the email, it said twelve five, but I missed typing that one in the in the subject. So uh, Ricky is currently in Edinburgh, Scotland, a place where we spent a month this year. Uh, we're going to find a new date, and we will get her on the show soon, though. Uh, right, because but, but so so, right. So you you didn't type the right number, and now I goofed up. I goofed very, up. A very funny goof that is a very is, very uh, silly goof. A, a, a very silly way that the show has been now affected at the very last moment. Yes, that's true. Oh. But we got a great guest here who's waiting backstage. Should we? Should we bring him on, George? I think I think we should bring him on. Okay, guest who's backstage. The way that we introduce our guests is we have you write your own introduction in the private chat, and then we will say whatever you write as your introduction. And you can take as long as you need, because yeah. uh, the one thing we are not short on is time. Uh, <laughs> not in the larger sense. Uh, I was going to say, we don't know that in the larger yes, sense. In the larger sense, time is a precious resource not to be squandered. But in the yeah. context of this of our live stream charity shows, time is our most abundant resource. <laughs> uh, we can vamp. We can delay. Mm-hmm. There is no end to the ways in which we can fill the dead air, sometimes just with additional dead air, and sure. sometimes with talking in a long run-on sentence until we have... Which we do. We have an introduction. Do you want to read it or do you want me to read it? I want you to read it. Okay. Here's a man who needs no introduction, Michael Ian Black. But if I were to introduce him, I would say the following. Please welcome Michael Ian Black. Oh, that's lovely. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. welcome. It's a real pleasure and honor for me to be here. Mr. Lucas, I'm a fan of some of your work and thank you Patrick. it's mm-hmm. it's great to be mm-hmm. here and to meet you so um yeah this is this is very exciting for me uh now we've we've never crossed paths before have we michael no um although i i i feel like i've grown up with you mm-hmm. uh through all the various george lucas productions um both as a director and as a producer yes and so i feel as if i know you but i'm I'm more than wanting to become friends during this episode. Well, I, I think that's we're well on our way towards achieving that goal, if nothing else tonight. Mm-hmm. I appreciate your kind words. I appreciate uh, your uh, your cunning and your uh, intelligence uh, in, in your in your comedy. Well, thank mm-hmm. you, thank you, Mr. Lucas. Is it okay if I? If, is it okay? You call me George. George, I, I didn't want to overstep. Do you like um, Michael? Yes, please. All right. And when it, when exactly is Life Day this year? What day does it fall? Well, Life Day is a holiday that I, I have ignored for decades. And uh, there is a day that is the anniversary of when the original TV special aired. But uh, I don't think that canonically, I, I don't feel like Life Day is any one day, especially on Earth, which is completely out of sync with other galaxies far, far away. It's one of those things where the time shift is so uh, extreme Mm -hmm. that uh, I think any time between Halloween and New Year's Day, you can celebrate Live Day. That's my opinion. It's it's the Star Wars version of every holiday that occurs between Halloween and New Year's Day, including New Year's Eve, uh, but not including Halloween or New Year's Day. And does it also encompass Martin Luther King Jr. Day or no? Uh, which day is that? Is that that's in January? That's, Jan- that's January. Okay. January. No, no January holidays. I, 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 w- I would that I could, um, but uh, I ha- I ha- I feel like I've drawn such a wide uh, uh, parameter for the holiday. I feel it would it would start to. I think people would be so tired of Life Day uh, by by Jan- midway into January mm-hmm. that it would sort of taint the holiday. And we're celebrating Life Day in 2023 but in a mm-hmm. galaxy far far away i imagine our life day that we're celebrating now won't occur for years and years and years mm-hmm. yeah it, it, it's it's best not to uh 
I mean, you can, if you enjoy thinking about these things, then by all means celebrate the enjoyment of the pondering of those things. I, I try not to give it too much thought uh, just because- Well, that was uh, clear from the special. The what? That was clear from the special. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, which I, I participated in and then washed my hands of completely. Uh, George, are there other holidays in the Star Wars universe? We've never actually talked about this. Sure. Or is this it? No, tons? Tons of holiday. Well, this is just a Wookiee planet holiday. They don't even celebrate sure. this in like that's one of the things that is a little bit silly in mm -hmm. some of the uh, some of the uh, Star Wars things that have happened since I uh, stepped out of the game mm -hmm. is the idea that that some of these characters are celebrating Life Day. It's just like, what are you talking about? You know, <laughs> I imagine there would be a lot of Imperial holidays as well. Oh, mm -hmm. sure, yeah. Uh, I, I, they would probably have some book burnings. At a certain, you know, like I think, you know, how in, in England they have bank holidays. I imagine mm -hmm. that the Imperials mm -hmm. uh, probably have that, but for book burnings. Mm -hmm. Do you remember any specific? Like, I just feel like you would know it some off. Oh, uh, it's Patrick. It's completely made up. It doesn't matter. Like I could tell you, I could tell you something, but it's until I need to reference one, I never thought of one. And then when people would say, "What's an Imperial holiday?" I'd say, "Oh yeah, Stick Day." And then the, it's a day when everyone gathers together to throw sticks at people. Uh huh. You know. Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean that seems fun. I understand why people like that. That feels one. like a holiday that the Imperials would create for the poor. Sure. To make them feel like they had some power. George, they throw dicks at each other? No, sticks. Oh, sticks. But I completely did, misunderstood. But I could imagine someone uh, uh, someone misunderstanding that and throwing a dick on stick day and then right. arguing perhaps that a dick is a kind of stick. It can be. Could is be there a dick day? What? Is there a dick day? I mean, I don't go in for that type of uh, comedy. Uh -huh. uh, although I will say, I will say, Michael, you and I have a shared credit that I'm not sure that you're aware of, and that we mm. both worked in the Robot Chicken universe. Ah, yes, I yeah. was unaware that you had appeared in the Robot Chicken cinematic universe. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, because they they love me in the Robot Chicken world. They they big. I, I have some of here. I think I have. Uh, I got some Robot Chicken stuff. Yeah. Look at this, look at this, Robot Chicken. Yeah. This is all just Robot Chicken Star Wars stuff. Right. You haven't even opened it. Why would I need to open it? It loses its value if you open it. I guess that's true. It, George, it George is it, always on the mystery. George I is actually, always looking for that resale market. That's what he's always looking for. I was so happy, Michael, with the Robot Chicken uh, crowd that I took a bunch of them and said, look, you guys like goofing on Star Wars, and I like that just fine. Why don't you come over to my place and we'll do it for real? Mm -hmm. And we produced uh, two full seasons of a Star Wars animated comedy series called Star Wars Detours. Hmm. We made 39 episodes of it before we uh, before we sold it to anyone. And then it was bundled in the Disney sale and they took those 39 episodes and buried them in the vault. Mm -hmm. uh, they likely, I'm told, they will never see the light of day. Are they? They're too uh, uh, irreverent. Too, fun, too funny. Yes, too <laughs> what I was told. Right. Mm -hmm. Irreverent. That's that's probably that's probably the word they used. Irreverent. And I understand they wanted to start off with something grand, and and I think it would have been confusing if the first thing they had released. But it was the final star wars project that i spearheaded and it mm. will it will never be seen it is basically uh roommates with song of the south that doesn't make imagine it doesn't make any sense to me there's an uh, you talk about an odd couple situation 39 <laughs> episodes of good-natured star wars fun and look who look who ends look who they end up sharing an apartment with Locked well, when, in a vault. I, when i think of song of the south what i primarily think of is racism well, there's Uncle Remus, to be certain. Yes. And there's Br'er Rabbit and Br'er Bear. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Br'er Fox. Don't recall a lot else. I think that's it. Mm -hmm. I think there's two I think two there might kids, be a frog. Too. There's a frog yeah. and some birds that sing. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a... Oh, Mr. Bluebird on his shoulder. Mm -hmm. It's the mm -hmm. truth. It's fa It's actual. It's factual. Sure. Everything is sad. I see, now sense. you've got me singing a racist song, Michael. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Maybe that, it's, such things maybe happen it's on the life best. day. I, I, I imagine you would have it on uh, DVD somewhere in the vault, but... You, Song of I the would, South, yes, I have a bootleg of it. 
Well, I'm I'm saying of your Star Wars series, but I you'd probably be reluctant to test right. out your Schrodinger's DVD theory mm -hmm. with that because mm -hmm. that I could be a, the last copy. Yeah, I do have I have a, a hard drive that contains all the episodes. Okay. And and Michael, that's true. I'm telling you, I got a hard drive with all the episodes. Can't show it to anybody. They'll that's take they'll cool. send they'll send me to they'll <laughs> send me to prison if I showed them to people. Yeah. We did uh -huh. one show, I'll tell you this. We did one show on a boat. I don't think we've ever said this, George. We did one show on but a go boat. Ahead. And we went out, we were over international waters, and we showed it showed an episode of the show. <laughs> uh, but it was just for the boat people. Yeah. Yeah. And they got, I will say, a lot of people when it was done said they didn't like it. Mm hmm. <laughs> But, you know, a lot of times that ha that happens. I heard the first. That could have just been the seasickness talking. I sure. heard the first screening of of Marty's Goodfellas was disastrous. So, yeah. in a way, I'm inclined to say that it was like the Goodfellas of animated Star Wars spoofs. Well, I remember reading a story once that uh, your friend Steven Spielberg did a screening. Oh no, I'm sorry. You did a screening of the original Star Wars before all the effects were in, and everybody thought, "Well, that's a disaster." And Steven said, "This movie's going to make a hundred million dollars." Yeah. And yeah, he was right. Brian was Brian De Palma was pretty hard on me in that uh, that at that little gathering. What did he say? He said, this makes no sense. I don't understand what's going on, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. He, he was part of the reason why we added the crawl to explain things. That's why we created Crawly to sort of set it up, because we just sort mm -hmm. of threw you into it originally. And it is a little bit unorthodox because the first hour is just robots looking for something and they're not even the main heroes, you know? Mm hmm. But um, did you watch it when you were a kid? Yeah, I watched it when it came out. Yeah. Uh, what, were, I, what, were, what were some other things that you liked when you were a kid? I never said I liked it. You just asked if I watched it. <laughs> Why would you watch something you didn't like? I didn't have any control over what my parents took me to see at that age. Your now, parents. OK, this is interesting. Your parents forced you to go to Star Wars. You did I'm not, not like saying, it. I'm not saying I didn't like it. I'm just saying you assumed that I did. And in fact, I did. I loved it. Oh, well, that's great. That's so yeah. great. But I, I I resent the assumption. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, and forgive me for making the assumption, although I, I do want to point out how absolutely correct it was, <laughs> which I think is the sad, I think perhaps is the greatest tragedy, is is when, when you assume uh, and then you turn out to be correct, it sort of validates all the incorrect assumptions that happen out there. And That's it gives right. power to those incorrect assumptions right it, and, gives and you, it gives you moral licensing to continue to make assumptions about people places and things and mm -hmm. on the very few occasions when you're correct it just reinforces those uh poisonous synapses in your brain i bet a few years later when they came out with other star wars stuff you went by choice i did see look i did it i made that assumption again I, you're right i was i felt empowered and entitled Yes. Have you um, have you seen all of them in the theaters, Michael? No, I don't think okay. so. I don't okay. think so. But you also, but you also, I think, uh, further assumed that I liked the subsequent films. Uh -huh. um, you said, and I assume you went to see other ones later in life, and the answer yes. was yes. But you didn't mm -hmm. ask the follow up question: Did you like them? Yes. And maybe mm -hmm. that's for the best, George. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's for the best. Uh -huh. Well, I would. I, I bet, as you grew up, your tastes changed a little. They did. Things that brought you delight as a as a young man. Now bring as, me disgust. As, as you matured, <laughs> I, I, I bet. Uh, I bet you started to real, to put away childish things. You yes. strike me. I'm going to ask this instead of assuming. Are you the kind of person that, as you matured into adulthood, you put away childish things, and perhaps? Um, use comedy as a way of making fun of certain kinds of childish behaviors, childish affectations, uh, as a way of distancing yourself. No? No, I don't think so. I think I'm very gentle on childhood wonder and, and childhood love. Mm -hmm. I think I'm very gentle on those subjects. What I didn't realize as a child mm -hmm. was that Star Wars and the Star Wars universe was mm -hmm. for children. Mm. Right. I didn't understand that as a child. Yes. And so as an adult, when I visited the Star Wars universe, I was outraged that it was for children. <laughs> <laughs> it, 
Is it true that one of your first professional jobs was on that most adult of programs, Stephen Bochco's NYPD Blue? It was my very first television appearance was on Stephen Bochco's oh. NYPD Blue, yes. Did you show your bottom? I didn't, although I certainly would have had they asked. Right. It, it, was, it was just one scene in Tompkins Square Park in New York City, seated mm -hmm. next to big time television star David Caruso, asking me a question or two and me answering as a uh, Puerto Rican street hustler named Joey ah. Diaz. I still recall the character's name. Joey Diaz. What was it like working with David Caruso? And did you interact with Stephen Bochco at all? To, uh, if I met Stephen Bochco, I was unaware. I don't think I did. Caruso was very kind, very nice guy. That's good. Uh, as was Nick Turturro, I recall. Also very yes. nice. Played uh, uh, sort of uh, was a uh, younger uh, police detective who uh, Caruso's character uh, had sort of taken under his wing. That's right. And I felt like, you know, for those few hours, Caruso took me under his wing. And we've remained very close ever since. Uh, have what you do been you, back to what Tompkins do you... Square Park? Mm -hmm. Say that again? Have you returned to Tompkins Square Park ever? Frequently. When you are there, do you feel yourself returning to the world of NYPD Blue, the world of of Puerto Rican street hustler, Joey Diaz. I returned there specifically to re-enter that world. <laughs> That's why I go there. And, and often I do show my bare bottom. It's just not on television. <laughs> How delightful. What do you think happened to Joey Diaz? Oh, I don't think he lived very long. No. No, I mean, he- Did he, he live he, it, Did he live in the area? Oh, yeah, I think he. Yeah, he okay. he was he was a street kid more or less, burning the yeah. candle at both ends, yeah. uh, doing some things he shouldn't be doing, but needing the dough, sure. and uh, and probably spending what little money he did have on substances that probably weren't going to do him any good in the long run. You sure. think you think Joey Diaz ever? Uh, first of all, do you think he lived into the twenty first century? No. Do you think he made it? No. So he that, that takes away my first question was you think he ever uh, stumbled over to uh, a midnight screening of Donnie Darko in the 2000s? Well, that is the natural follow up question. And I, I, I would have to answer probably not. Although if I one one very good redemptive arc for Joey Diaz would be if he died during 9-11, trying to rescue people from the towers. That would be a great, wonderful great redemptive arc for Joey Diaz. Do you think that happened? No. 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 Okay. Long before, long it's, it's a nice idea. Perhaps a, 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 it's, it's a nice dream, but but that NYPD Blue was not a, a show that was taken to flights of fancy or it was mm -hmm. not, it was a it was a, a gritty look at uh, life in the big city. Sure think Joey was. Diaz ever spent any of that money a, on a slice over at Two Boots? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I, I think Joey Diaz, well, first of all, Michael Ian Black worked at Two Boots. Second of all, uh, Joey Diaz, I imagine, would have been one of those kids who probably comes in a little bit towards towards closing time and says, mm -hmm. hey, can I get like a two for one? You're just going to throw this shit out anyway. Right. And then and they probably would give it to him. You know, we we started this show right next door to the two boots that sits over there. And mm -hmm. uh, and we would sometimes do that after, after the show. We'd go over and say, hey, you're going to throw this out. Why don't you give something to... Uh, Uncle George, George. And, and, uh, and it was Jar Jar mm -hmm. at that point early on. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. um, yeah, I worked at Two Boots for a summer and uh, learned. That's the one in the East Village? In the East Village, yeah. On oh, okay. Avenue A, I think. Yeah, and, and Third. Yeah, something like that, yeah. And yeah. Uh, yeah. learned very quickly how to steal from the till. Um, not proud of it, but that that is what happened. I stole a lot of money from Two Boots. I mean, not a lot, but but a lot for me, right? And uh, and and the great perk of that job was, as you can imagine, free pizza. Sure, free pizza. Did you have a favorite slice? Um, they had, you know, you know, the two boots. I don't know if they still are like this. I imagine they are. They don't have pepperoni. What mm -hmm. they have is soppressata, mm -hmm. thin sliced mm -hmm. Italian spicy sausage. Mild, mild the sausage. They also have andouille, which is the spicier one. And uh, but you know, it's it's a it's it's sort of like a combination of salami and pepperoni. That was probably my favorite. They also had a nice uh, shrimp pizza that I, yeah. that I enjoyed. Did 
did they back then because this is what they do now they name their slices after different pop culture characters yes yes, okay, yes. that was that was also the case then okay. yes i don't remember any of the names maybe lucy was that one of them mm -hmm. lucy lucy ball i don't know but yeah they ever have a stella slice to my chagrin they did not I mean, they, they should have. That would have been a real nice, like, real classy move on their part. And honestly surprised, George, that you know my comedy trio, Stella. I mean, that's a fairly, I don't want to say obscure, but, and, and I don't mean this to be offensive in any way, but it's not quite your generation. It's it's a little bit Gen X-y. No, but I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a trilogy guy, and, and there's something about a, a comedy trio that appeals to me. I like things in threes, ideally. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the, I like the sense of whimsy and abandon that, that Stella really brought to the fore. Uh, we did have whimsy and abandon. And going back to Stick Day, we also had uh, a dildo that we featured very prominently in many of our video shorts. Uh -huh. I don't know if you ever saw those, but mm -hmm. we bought a dildo and then really felt like we had to amortize the costs of that. So right. it appeared in many, many videos. Mm -hmm. That's smart. Yeah, uh, and, and then we sold it to Disney. We sold that dildo to Disney for four billion dollars. Wow, that's a good price. They haven't used it. They haven't used it. It's been put no, in the vault. They put it in the vault. Wow, uh, that uh, vault. Like, for, Patrick, we don't know that they haven't used it. There's any number of Disney products in which, uh, like, uh, films, television shows in which characters yeah. could be discreetly <laughs> using the Stella dildo, but they have an outward composure that doesn't uh -huh. give the game away. That'd be a fun game to spot which sure. Disney shows are the characters <laughs> discreetly taking, making use of the, of the uh, costly because for a, <laughs> for a physical prop, yeah, for a physical prop, anything over a million dollars, you're getting into pretty dangerous territory in terms of, of, are we overpaying for it? Right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I do feel, I don't want to reveal the exact cost of the dildo, but I do feel secure in saying it it, it, it didn't cost anywhere near a million dollars. So you made quite a bit of money on that sale, although you have to split it three ways, I'm assuming. And with the, the show is not just made by the creators and stars. There are many people who I assume uh, had their fingers in that particular pie. Yes. Uh, the fingers were in a lot of things back then. And um, the pie was one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. I remember particularly liking the dancing. Thank you. Thank you. Do you dance recreationally? No. Why do you think that is? Um, I find of all the things that I do in my life, George, and I do a lot of sort of uh, uh, ridiculous things for my career. Mm -hmm. Whenever I find myself in a situation where there's recreational dancing going on, I, n I never feel more stupid than I do in that moment. Moving my body rhythmically to music makes me feel like a fool. Mm. I'm, I'm not much of a dancer myself. That surprises me. Um, I like to create things and watch them uh, occur. I don't, I'm not really, I'm not a performer generally. I've done a few things, you know, obviously I, this, this show, there's a performative element to it and I'm the, I'm the host of it. Um, but generally speaking, I, more often than not, I tend to be a little bit reserved. Hmm. I mean, sometimes I find, I don't know if you've had this experience, Patrick, maybe you have, that yeah. sometimes the most reserved people are the least inhibited on the dance floor. Sure. That's their, that's the way that they, uh, get their creativity creativity out is they they just go out and, and bust a move it's rare that george loses the inhibitions it's usually after like a 12 hour live stream you know yeah. it's usually like really deep into the live stream is when sort of silly george comes out goofy george comes out mm -hmm. um patrick did you get an alert it was I that was me it was my email and i just quit it so that we wouldn't be getting those alerts um if you think it would be a fun email that would enhance the live stream, you're free to share it, but also you're entitled to your privacy. All right. This was an email from uh, Restream. Whoa. Uh, uh, ready, to gr ready to grow your audience? <laughs> Ensure you reach all your followers and clients by connecting your social channels. And then it tells you how to do that. Does that, does that, do you feel like that enhances the podcast? I, I like the idea of restreaming. It, it, it sounds like, mm -hmm. Uh, if I had to define what the concept is, 
a lot of television used to rely on reruns, rebroadcasts, rebroadcasts of a program in order to, you know, get another bite at the apple, sell some more mm-hmm. ads. You sort of exactly make money what we did with our dildo. Same, same business <laughs> model. And and in the age of streaming, uh, where you subscribe to a service, although people can watch things as many times as they want, uh, you don't uh, make more money necessarily off of reruns the way that uh, people used to. And right. because uh, unless it's monetized with ads. So restreaming mm-hmm. sounds like it would be a way of maybe trying to get back to the world of reruns. Could be. Um, now, so the, the streaming monies was a big mm-hmm. part of the reason that uh, the writers and the actors went on strike. I'm wondering as a producer and retired filmmaker, what your take on the strike was. Well, this is the first uh, show that we've done since the, uh, we've been doing strike shows. We have been doing our best. Sometimes we slipped up. We've been doing our best not to mention any of the uh, struck work during our shows yeah. since the strikes began. I will say, historically speaking, uh, I have not been, um, I've had a peculiar relationship to guilds and unions. Um, I am um, FICOR in the Writers Guild, meaning I'm one of the people who, uh, do you know what that is, Michael? No. All right, mm-hmm. there's, um, uh, Patrick, do you want to bring up the list of the FICOR yeah, sure. people? Because it's not a long list. Um, I I believe I may have been the first one to do this, but it's basically... <clears throat> you retain your membership in the guild, but you uh, don't think you don't pay dues anymore. And you you can't vote, hmm. uh, so you benefit from the benefits, but you don't have a say, uh, mm-hmm. and you don't have to follow the rules. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um, so, for example, you'll see 2019 Sylvester E. Stallone is on the list. Mm-hmm. Uh, who else we got? We got. Well, we'll go all the way to the back. Well, what happens if Sylvester East alone writes something? Uh, it still can be like a WGA project. It's sort of a way of sort of like uh, not participating, not um, and not but not being punished. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, like if you're FICOR, like a lot of the soap operas that wanted to, like if if a soap opera hired a bunch of FICOR people, they could keep writing during the strike and not be punished as scabs. Yeah. Hmm. So did the soap operas hire Sylvester Stallone to write during the strike? A lot of times what happens is the reason if you can use the way of zooming in, Patrick, so we can see some of those little names. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, a lot of times it seems like uh, for me, when I started dropping out of guilds, it was because I dropped out of the DGA because they fined me a quarter of a million dollars because in Star Wars movies, you don't put the credits at the top of the film. And when Empire Strikes Back came out, it wasn't me directing. It was Irvin Kirshner directing. And because I, as a producer, was putting his credit at the end, which happens a lot now in movies, but back then mm-hmm. it was unusual. The DGA fined me uh, $250,000. Even though Irvin was fine with it, it was just an aesthetic choice as a storyteller to not front load the movie with a bunch of credits. And uh, so then I resigned from the Director's Guild uh, furiously. Look at this parade of names. A lot of big names. A lot of big names. Yeah. Yeah. I believe I believe George Clooney uh, became. I just saw Fi- George Clooney go by. He became FICOR because there was a dispute about uh, being credited as a writer on the film Leatherheads. Ah. And I think Sylvester Stallone's might have had something to do with the, his Rocky, his like legal claims with uh, he's not happy with uh, uh, how the Rocky franchise is being. Mm-hmm. Uh, handled without his uh input or without him having control Mm -hmm. so i you know i moved star wars i did star wars in england and then i didn't like how the guilds uh the unions uh tea time in england is one of the things that you take a break when it's tea time i was like we could be filming star wars instead of having tea time so i moved them over to a different part of the world to get away from it but so i'm not perfect on this issue but i was very supportive of the strikes this year because i'm retired what does it matter to me Right. I, I will say that um, tea time. Great. It's a great institution. Mm-hmm. And uh, I support it on film sets. I support it mm-hmm. in a domestic setting. I support it everywhere. I think it's terrific. But just imagine you, you're getting ready to shoot the perfect job of the hut scene. 
got everything ready to go to Jabba's. You got everybody in the Jabba. They're getting ready to do a scene. It's going to be great. And then we're going to break for tea and crumpets. And you just feel that energy just, just mm -hmm. disappears. And then you have tea and you come back and you do the scene. But something was lost. Something that we can never get back. Was it worth it? Or should I take Probably. my Star Wars movies and go to a different country? <laughs> I mean, if it was me and I was and I was Jabba's left hand or whatever, mm -hmm. yeah, you want, you want I that? Would scene. You want that? You're scene. hungry. You're thirsty. Oh, yes, I want it. Are you Are you happy with the way the strikes uh, ultimately resolved? Oh, I haven't paid any attention to how they resolved. I just know that they did. Yeah, I'm not you worried I'm not, about it. You're not reading the contract. I don't know. I mean, also, SAG is not totally resolved yet. No, it's not. Yeah, it's close. So it's pretty close. <laughs> that that deal might get rejected, although I doubt it. Do, I don't. don't isn't it the deadline tonight? Oh, I, I have no idea. I don't pay attention to it. I just, it, I just it might be resolved during the show. I suppose that would be so strike. exciting. Yeah. I supported the strike without fully understanding the issues. I support mm -hmm. the agreement without knowing what's in it, <laughs> and I'm excited for where show business is going. Would here's I, a question? Which I don't understand. Would, would you sign away your likeness to AI? To be able to use in AI voice, AI building a Michael Ian Black in a computer, never, no. never, no never. Interest. I mean, I, I mean, if they give me like sixty bucks, maybe. Oh, oh, that's not that bad. I feel like a lot of things have that budget. Yeah, that that okay. that, that, that theoretically means that a new media project could get your digital double. <laughs> yeah, for sixty bucks. I know. I know Bruce Willis did it. Okay. He signed yeah. away. He can. You can. You. We're, we're going to see Bruce Willis popping up and shit till the end of time. Yeah. Well, I'm excited about that. I want more moonlighting. We got to get Sybil on board. When we get Sybil on board, we've already got Bruno. Okay. Then we're going to get some more moonlighting. That's okay. right. We get Mr. Pesto. Yeah. We, we get the whole thing going. We get Curtis Armstrong. He just turned 70. So we, mm -hmm. uh, we should get on that right away. That's right. Although the viewers got very mad when uh, his character started being featured too heavily at the expense of uh, uh, David and Maddie. Uh, because they were, uh, you know, he was busy. Uh, they they were working on other projects, and they yes, weren't they every were. episode. So yeah. we don't want uh, Curtis Armstrong is great. I think the viewers were mistaken, but sure. uh, I think he was a little bit uh, burned by that by the audience backlash. Yeah. I will say, I, I hear I hear a lot of people are worried about AI. I went back and rewatched my buddy Steve's movie uh, AI. Mm -hmm. Holds up. Mm -hmm. I felt like, and you can, and it, it, when you talk to Steve, please tell him this. I felt like that movie was very underrated. Mm -hmm. I thought it was lovely. I thought it was I, just mm -hmm. beautiful. I think every movie of his that isn't widely celebrated is deeply underrated. Mm -hmm. um, I think, and that one, you know, it's a collaboration with uh, Stanley Kubrick, who had passed away, and Steve finished it. And, uh, you know, the. I do think now I did see a thing today that um, do you do you use the calm app, Michael? Mm -mm. Have you heard of it? It's a is it a meditative app? Yeah. It's like I, to help I, you sleep, too. Right. I, I, I saw that they have an AI Jimmy Stewart voice yeah. that now will read a uh, it's a wonderful sleep. It's like a wonderful <laughs> life sleep story. Mm hmm. But it doesn't say narrated by AI Jimmy Stewart. Just a, the pop up ad that I saw just says narrated by James Stewart. Mm -hmm. um, I do feel like we need the AI stuff a little bit treated like um, it almost, we almost need like an FDA style labeling system mm -hmm. where well, it's like some it, idea. It's like they, uh, they label meat in Europe, GMO, mm -hmm. yeah. AI. Because I, I, I think, I think if you're using it as a, as a seasoning, just a little sprinkle yeah. a little AI here just to clean up a little something, a little something there. But when you're fully like, this is narrated by James Stewart. That's a problem. I also think it's, why not be proud of it and say, guess what? We got AI James Stewart. And kind of, I think if AI is so great and they're, if they're so excited about it, they need to lead with it and say, Guess what? We got we got a robot Jimmy Stewart is going to come in here and and knock your socks off. That's why when uh, hologram Tupac Shakur was performing, mm -hmm. they said this is hologram Tupac. They never said this is Tupac Shakur back from the dead. They yeah. never they never made that claim. They said this is hologram. Yeah, and I loved it. 
and now they've perfected Ooh. that with the ABBA and Kiss. Now Kiss is doing that too. Yep. Whitney did. Yeah. With are the we gonna, of Whitney. Are we going to get this? Is the state going to do that? Yeah. <laughs> We're uploading. We going to get holograms of the state. Yep. That's what that's what this tour is now. They're just like filming you on every stop. Just to, right. oh wow. Okay. Yeah, it caught it. We're losing a tremendous amount of money because the technology is still incredibly expensive. I mean, it's a hundred cameras per yeah. show. Yeah. That's that's yeah. actually a low number of cameras. So you're 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 playing with fire there. Yeah. And yeah, it's it's we're self-financing. I mean, we're we're no, nothing wrong with that. Here's the thing. The thing about self-financing is you can always just just set aside an extra billion just so you know you'll be okay. Yeah. Right. That's my advice. Yeah. No, that's smart. Um, that's that's very good advice. That's for the you. smartest. Take set aside some of that Stella dildo money mm -hmm. and just let it don't sit. worry. Don't worry. And then then you mm -hmm. don't have to worry about money. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Um, how's the museum coming along? Speaking oh, of you. speaking of self financing, thank That's you for asking. Would you like to see a Norman Rockwell painting? I would love to see a Norman Rockwell. I'm just going to pick a random one from the book that my buddy Steve and I did. I'm just going to pick a random. Oh, here, look. Look at this. <laughs> that Norman Rockwell. He had a way with whimsy, didn't he? He captured Americana in a way that few other artists have ever been able to do. That's funny. Here, hold on. I got a great one here. Look at this. Look at this guy. His clothes are funny fit, right? Too big. They're too big. Yeah. Clothes are too big. And look at him. He's he's like, what the heck? What is it? He's what is, he, is it a Boy Scout uniform he's wearing, or is or his father's military uniform? It's hard to see that. Or are this, they sending him to war? Well, what I'm wondering is, is he wearing his dead father's uniform and saluting a la JFK Jr. to mm -hmm. his father's funeral procession, sort of a similar thing, in which case sure. it takes on, yes, there's whimsy, but it also just horrible, horrible tragedy. And then look at that dog down there is like, what is the dog doing? The dog can't make heads or tails of it. Dog, does, dog just wants his next meal, you know what I mean? A little attention. Mm -hmm. Um. So we are probably, we're definitely less than two years away from the museum opening. Um, and and you you're a you're a Los Angelino, yes? No, but you I'll live in Los Angeles. Special, I live in Savannah, Georgia, but I'll make a special trip out there. I guess I just assume that you're so you you work so often, but I guess you just go where the work is. That's right. That's right. You live in in Savannah, Georgia. I do. Uh, what's in season right now? In terms of produce, yeah. Nothing what, are Savannah, what are Savannah's main exports as far as food? Uh, peaches. Okay. Pecans. Mm -hmm. Can you eat nuts? I do not have a nut allergy. So yes. In fact, uh, this afternoon, uh, the wife and I split a slice of pecan pie and it was Ooh. tremendous. That's a tremendous pie. That's a tremendous, that is a tremendous pie. Uh, uh, the first pecan pie I ever ate was uh, sent to me by home box office. Mm -hmm. I had never, you know, I'm famously diabetic and I, I have to limit my sugar intake. Um, but a pecan pie plays a uh, significant role in the storylines of The Leftovers season mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fine people at home box office uh, sent me a pecan pie a week before one of these pies appeared on the show. Uh, and that was the first slice of pecan pie I'd ever tried. How, did you enjoy it? I, I ate the whole pie, Michael. I I wasn't supposed to, but what are you, what are you? What choice did well, I have? You were, but you were you were supposed you to. That's why they, I think a pie is not for one person, but I was the one who received it, and I thought if I let Melody or anyone know that I have this pie, mm -hmm. they're not going to let me eat it. I better eat this pie now, and I I I housed the whole. A whole pie in one sitting. And I, I thought, can easily see that happening. It's a, it's just a, it's just a tremendous, tremendous pie. You're just not going to do any better. It doesn't. Uh, the, I'd had pecans before, and I think I'd even had candied pecans before. Mm -hmm. And I was skeptical about a pecan pie. It kind of seemed like a bad idea. It kind of seemed mm -hmm. like there's no way this works. It seemed like too many nuts in a pie. If someone said. How would you like a pie? It's mostly nuts. A nut pie? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And yet, 
somehow it's it's almost magical how how well it works as a dish. It, there's some kind of gelatinous goo that holds all the pecans in place, uh, and then there's the crust that surrounds it, and and whatever that gelatinous goo is is just it, divine. It must have a terrible name, or else they surely would have named the pie after that gelatinous goo. Right. Do it we want to know what's like in a pecan pie? Do you want me to tell you? <laughs> yes, I'd love to know. Okay, there's let me, one. Let me, see, let me see if I can guess as you as you okay. look. Okay. Okay. Great. Corn syrup. Yes. Molasses. Uh, no, no. Pecans. Yes. Sugar. Uh, yes. Brown sugar specifically. Brown sugar, right. Butter. Uh, this does not say butter. Well, the crust is going to, the crust is going to. Oh, oh, well, this one specifically is using frozen Pillsbury deep dish pie crust because we're on Pillsbury.com. I, I see. I mean, if you go to Pillsbury.com, that's what you're going to get. What are they going to plug some of your products? Like yeah. the person that web designer is going to get fired if they mention any. Let me other. try to let me try to find a better one. Hang on one second. Now, if we find it in every other website, we'll know that Pillsbury is just defaulting to the true recipe. Sure. And can't help but appear biased. Okay, great. So we said pecans. We said corn syrup. We said brown sugar. You said butter. butter. Someone's saying salt. Salt. Uh, there is salt. Yeah. Baking set, baking soda, and baking powder. You're going to need. Now this isn't in here, so I don't. Maybe you don't for a crust. Maybe you don't need bacon. Yeah, soda. it's not saying it. An egg or two? An egg, yeah. Some, a little bit of cold water, a tablespoon of cold water or something like that? Doesn't say that, but I'm sure that's an easy one to get. Two tablespoons of boiling water. No, no. I don't know if you guys are going to get the other ones. All right, let's hear it. All right, let's think outside the box. Uh, a, a, a back issue of Newsweek magazine. <laughs> no. no. Uh, two drinking straws, lightly salted. No, I mean there's salt, yeah, but not the. No, but this is the, the straw themselves. It absorbs the salt. Yeah, no. no, 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 no salt let me bad. ask you this, and I, I yeah. suspect the answer is no. A pork chop. A big banana. No. A small banana. Mm -hmm. Quarter of a grapefruit. <laughs> um, lemon zest. No. I mean, I bet you could use a lot of these things if you wanted it to taste lemony. You know. Or porky. Uh, uh, marshmallow. Or, or porky. Marshmallow. Yeah. No marshmallows. What? I, now I need to know what's in it. Pure vanilla extract. Oh, oh sure. On the tip of my tongue. And this, one's, this one says cinnamon. Oh. I don't know. But I feel then like... she writes, she writes, cinnamon adds an extra layer, layer, layer of flavor. I don't see many pecan pies with cinnamon, so thank you, Grandma, for giving me the opportunity to present a slightly unique pecan pie on our Thanksgiving tables. Ah, oh, bless, bless her heart. Talk, talk to this girl's grandma. I feel I can't. She, she's perished, right? Unclear, unclear. I, I don't know why I assumed that it was a, a cry to heaven. A lot yeah. of assumptions out there today, George. A I lot know. of assumptions. She mm -hmm. might be alive. She might be alive. I hope she is. Yeah. Happy Life Day. This might be a great <laughs> moment because we've been talking about this pie a lot. This may be a great moment to to rally people to give uh, a few dollars to the food bank oh, in sure. New York. Right? Let's pull this up. Yeah. And, and, as and, a reminder to everyone, if you donate $1, which it would be great if you donate more than $1, but it buys five meals. I don't know how they get five meals out of $1, but they do it. Uh, so if you send it, you can go to bit.ly slash FBGLTS and then forward us the receipt. We'll add it to the total. I've got some uh, some stuff you know, to give away later. We've got some stretch goals. Uh, that we'll get to in a little bit, but uh, let's let's get this let's get this baby moving. And maybe maybe, maybe they can afford five meals from a single dollar because they're terrible meals. Sure, sure. I mean, I hope that's not the case. I, I would hope that's encourage not true. people to to send five dollars and specify. Yes. I want this five dollars to go to one meal, <laughs> one slightly better meal, uh, like a, a five dollar like donation. Stuff. Make sure you give them the good stuff. Yeah, uh, I I bet at the first meeting I wouldn't be surprised when they were saying like let's have some ideas for how we can get five meals out of this dollar. I bet that was yeah. one of the suggestions. Like we could just make the meals really terrible. Mm -hmm. I think if we did that, we could easily meet this goal. And I bet they're like, "That's great, Mark, but let's keep thinking." I think yeah. we'll do that if we don't think of anything else. Right. I'd be very curious suggesting... to know what one of these 20 cent meals looks like. I'd be very curious to know. Okay, wait, he did the math. He he narrowed it down. It's a 20 cent meal. 
Yeah. What is that? Is that just like it's a bag of water and like a <laughs> granola bar? <laughs> a bag of water. <laughs> Old bottles cost too much. So, so I remember I was in jail one night and the meal that came around was uh I think it was a bologna sandwich. Like okay. just a slice of bologna and a little bit of bread. And that that probably that probably cost them about 20 cents or so. You now, were is in this jail. real or you yeah, you doing it better is this real? No, I, I was in jail just for one what? night. One what night. What happened? What happened? I got, I went, I went, I was, I was working on a TV show. It was late at night. Yeah. We're in New York City. I'm living in Connecticut at the time. I have to drive home to Connecticut. And as I'm leaving New York City, there's like a sobriety thing. You know, the cops are pulling over people mm -hmm. to check their sobriety. I, I didn't, I didn't have any concerns on that front. Mm -hmm. I, I pull over. The guy says, uh, can I see your license and registration? No problem, officer. Give him the license and registration. He goes back to his squad car, and then he does not return for a very long time. So long that I'm thinking to myself, should I just leave? <laughs> Eventually, what happens is he comes back, knocks on the window, and says, will you please uh, uh, step out of the vehicle? And at this point, my heart's starting to go a little pitter-patter. I'm like, does he yeah. know I'm Jewish? Is that the problem? Turns out, unbeknownst to me, I had had a some sort of parking ticket or, or moving violation or something in the state of New York that I never paid. My license in the state of New York had been uh, suspended I, I, probably for years. I didn't know. And then next thing I know, I'm being hauled off to jail for the night. It's a real slap in the face. To a scoff law like me, how, was how it? old? How old were you when this happened? Two good, two good questions. 42, 43? <laughs> I don't know. Forty-two, I don't know forty-three. It was. It was not. It was not a great experience. I have to tell you. Were you by yourself in the room? Were there other people in well, the room with the you? What was the, Initially, yeah. I was in a big holding cell with a lot of people, and uh, well, first, first they put you in like the kind of the drunk tank. And there was a drunk dude in the drunk tank. And then they transfer you over to the tombs down there in lower Manhattan. And then you get put in a big holding cell while you're waiting to see the judge. And But then uh, something fairly embarrassing happened, which is one of the guards recognized me <laughs> and, and escorted me out of the holding cell and put me in my own VIP holding cell, which was just <laughs> like the other holding cell, but it was empty. So I was by myself which was nice actually, because I could lay down on the bench. Um, but it, it is embarrassing. There's, there's a couple of places where it's embarrassing to be recognized. One is jail. And the other one is Taco Bell. Those two places are where you just don't, you just don't want to be recognized. Did the cop bring up the dildo? Like, did he mention, Oh, I'm a fan of the dildo videos. Uh, I believe it was a female officer and oh, she okay. did not. Okay. okay. But, 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 there was an understanding, I think. There, sure, sure. There was, there was an understanding. Did you find out what she recognized you from? We, I didn't talk about it. Okay. I, I, I at that point, right. I was embarrassed, but also yeah. grateful because I was yeah. because I, suddenly I'm a high roller. Sure. Wow. You know. I wonder who else used that cell. Could have been anybody. Could have been the shoe yeah. bomber. Sure. Could have been the blind shake. Uh -huh. you know, it could have been John Gotti. Could have been anybody. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what you did, you're you don't even have a clear memory of what you did. You 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 you. It could have been a moving violation. It could have been a parking ticket. I don't know what it was. You're still to this day unclear what you did wrong. But you I paid a price. You paid I'd a price for whatever it was. And somehow I didn't pay the ticket. And then, and then you know the long arm of the law finally caught up with me. 42-year-old man whose past finally catches mm -hmm. up with him. Yep. Mortifying. Mortifying. You know, wow. and it was it was especially uh, terrible because, you know, they do give you a call, mm -hmm. but it has to be a local number. And I didn't live locally. So the only local number that I knew, and the fact that I even knew the number is something of a miracle, uh, was my friend Michael Showalter who was living in LA at the time, but he still mm -hmm. had a telephone number. So I called him 
and I just left a message saying, hey, I'm in jail. Please call my wife and tell her I'm fine because it's the middle of the night, you know, because that's when we had broken for the TV show. So, yeah. And uh, she's going to be worried. And I don't think I explained to him why I was in jail, because at that point, I think I wasn't sure why I was in jail. I just knew that I my license had been suspended. I didn't understand why. Um, so that was kind of embarrassing. And, and I think it I think it freaked him out a little bit. But but he had been to jail for a similar thing. The same thing, I think. How many members of the state have been to jail? I don't know the answer to that question. And surprisingly, okay. it's never come up when we've talked. Yeah. Yeah, We've yeah, all yeah. asked each other who here has been to jail because I'm <laughs> suspecting it's yeah. more than half, but we've never yeah. talked about it. Do, do you think that if you had named your group something different that you would – do you think there's a connection between naming yourself the state and this seemingly random persecution by the state against you? Mm-hmm. If anything, I think it probably worked to my advantage. Right. Because, because I'm sure. saying I'm an institutionalist like you yes. guys. Yes. Yeah. I'm all, yeah. you know, blue lives matter. That's what I kept saying. They handcuffed sure. me. And I'm right. just sure. screaming, blue lives matter, blue lives yeah. matter. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So they took it easy on me, you know? Well, that's yeah. good. Did you tell the people on the show that you were working on that this happened? I don't think I did. <laughs> yeah. I was so embarrassed. I don't think sure. I did. I remember I was working on another TV show uh, years before that. And uh, one of the fellas on the TV show got arrested for buying crack. And uh, that made the mm-hmm. tabloids a little bit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not going to say his name, but uh, let's say his name was uh, Jerry. We started calling him Crackhead Jerry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think he liked that very much. I wonder, right. I wonder why. Well, wow. <laughs> I mean... I'm assuming he didn't like that name as much as he liked crack. I guess not. Well, so you're probably so, comparing it like from my understanding, I've never I've never done crack cocaine. My understanding yeah. is it's if you try it, that it's amazing uh, that it's very dangerous. I don't recommend it. But the people who love it really like it a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think it probably skews your sense of how much you like other things. So I'm not sure that you could have come up with a nickname that would have satisfied someone who had experienced the delirious joys of crack cocaine. Right. Nor like, it'd have to be a hell of a nickname. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I just feel like once, you know, once, once you've been arrested and your face is in the newspapers for buying crack in the middle of the night in some sketchy neighborhood in Brooklyn, it would yeah. be a disservice to him if we didn't then call him crackhead Jerry. Right. We, because it 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 would be it would be minimizing, I think, that mm-hmm. experience. And that's the last thing I wanted to do. Yeah. He put in the work. You just want to acknowledge it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Wow. George is thinking about this a lot. George is like really considering this. Well, I was uh, you said you were 42, and I know Harrison made a movie called 42, but I don't think it's about the same thing. No. No, that movie was about Jackie Robinson, who straight as an arrow, that guy. Right. The yeah. only crack that yeah. he loved was the crack of the baseball the bat hitting those mm-hmm. home runs. That's right. Played baseball in New York City, though, which is where yeah. you were leaving from when you got And that's arrested. a natural high. The the thrill of hitting a home run and rounding mm-hmm. the bases. <laughs> and the irony of what you just said, Patrick, is he played yep. for the Brooklyn Dodgers, who also yeah. left New York. That's true. God. That's true. The wow. synchronicities lining up here are just unbelievable. And you were dodging that parking ticket or whatever wow. it was. Wow, look at this. Yeah. And, and, and in the car with me was uh-huh. Pee Wee Reese. Oh my God. Oh, and my buddy Steve made a movie about an alien who liked Reese's pieces. Yes. Happy Life Day, you guys. Happy Life Happy Day. Life day. Like what is, uh, what's the art you have on your wall back there, Michael? It's just art. There's no, no such thing as just art. I, I'm about to be a museum. This founder. piece here, the trees, mm-hmm. yeah, is uh, was featured in a in a show by a woman that I know who used to live next door to me in Connecticut, mm-hmm. and so we bought one of her pieces. And then that mm-hmm. is called Minstrel Girl, 
and it's a oh. picture of like a of like a devil lady riding a horse. And uh, I found that in a little gallery in Austin. And then that's a, a, a dead butterfly. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that came from. That's a castle we visited. And then that's a chupacabra that my son made in like sixth grade. Oh, wow. So you are, an, you are a, a connoisseur of art. You're an art collector. You support local artists, uh, independent artists. You put the you you pay for the work. You put it on display in your home. Yes, yes. we're not so different, you and I. No, no, no. I no, I no. I mean, we're both we're both art we, collectors. We're both art collectors. We we're both, both made. We both have made comedy. Yes, yes. Did you know that I I'm responsible for the most financially successful joke of all time? No, I'd love to hear it. Uh, okay, well let. It, it, it usually you need sort of a, it's a joke that exists usually within a narrative, but something uh, looks like maybe there's going to be trouble. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, ooh, we're going into a place that's a little scary. Maybe we're going to get hurt. Maybe we're going to get killed. And someone says, I got a bad feeling about this. That was you. That was me. That was and the reason I say it's the most financially successful joke of all time is because there are a lot of jokes that are are more successful, older jokes, um, uh, the, why the chicken crossed the road, but these are all sort of pre, they were not monetized appropriately. This joke has been featured in all of the Star Wars films and mm -hmm. additionally other films that I've made, the Indiana Jones films will use it. Uh, other non-Star Wars movies I made will use variations on it. And then other people have uh, um, sort of borrowed it and used it in other films since then. Uh, and the 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 total box office on this joke is billions of dollars. Yeah, so much money. So as far as jokes, specific jokes that recur within multiple uh, uh, films, and you look at the box office time. Obviously, people aren't coming to Star Wars just for that joke. I'm mm -hmm. not crazy. I don't. I don't think people when they pay their ticket money uh, that they're just going to hear that joke again. Some of them are maybe, I don't know what people's reasons are for what they do, what they do, but uh, no other joke has a similar tally, a similar track record. And I'm proud of that. In what way is that a joke? Well, this is a great debate. I love talking with comedians about this because we really get into the nuts and bolts of like, well, what is a joke? Right. Well, what do you think uh -huh. is a joke? Because, you because there's a sense, there's a, there's a, there's a sense of foreboding. Yes. Right. This could be bad. Yeah. But and then, then the character funny. just expresses this could be bad. But it's funny because they're, it's kind of an understatement. Nice. I have a bad feeling about this. Oh. The, the, the simple answer is it just is funny. Mm. Because people always laugh. I have a bad feeling about this. Mm -hmm. Some of it may be the delivery. Mm -hmm. But it is a joke. You know yourself. You've probably delivered a few jokes over the years where you're like, well... It's going to be my delivery that really sells the joke. Sure. Mm -hmm. I've had a few singers like that. But I wonder if, if just structurally, if the joke, and I'm not saying that this is better, but I'm just saying it would be more of a joke if they're, they're walking into the, into the foreboding situation and somebody looks around and says, I've got a pretty good feeling about this. Now, that to me is a joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've different got a joke. bad feeling about it. It's just, it's just speaking the subtext. Well, you ever hear of truth in comedy? Sure. Yeah, well, this is a classic example of that. You say something that's <laughs> so true, it's funny, or it's mm -hmm. funny because it's true. These are these mm -hmm. are truisms that people in the biz will will often throw around uh, willy nilly to justify anything comedically. Mm -hmm. I think there's a little bit of uh, of um, kind of like you can say that again. Mm, sure. sure. Another that's a that's an unmonetized joke, probably. If also, we were if we were going to try to monetize it or attribute it, mm -hmm. it's probably much more successful. But you can't attribute it. Nobody right. knows who you can say that again. Classic joke uh, works in almost any social situation. If you could monetize the social situation uh, uh, economy, which I don't think would be a good idea. I think it would destroy society. Mm -hmm. But if you could. You can say that again. That's right. a classic joke. Well, that, I mean, it's a great example, actually, because as I think about it, like I, I had, I, I, I'm sure I had a Star Wars lunchbox at one point, but I never mm -hmm. had a "you can say that again" lunchbox. That's right. And if you bought the Star Wars lunchbox, I would, I would count maybe one percent of that goes to the joke. Right. Still adds up because we sold a lot of boxes. Yeah. 
I have a question. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know you don't necessarily have control over, over this kind of thing, but when is this show coming back? It's a great question. And you're right. I don't mm -hmm. have control over it, but we, it was, if, if you're, you're it's on, in, it's, it was on CISO that I, on I haven't CISO. been able to get, I, I don't think they make CISO anymore. I don't think they make it anymore. No, no. I think that's part of the problem. Yeah. You know, they, I'm pretty sure they don't make CISO anymore. Yeah. I, I think they stopped making CISO. You have one of these posters? I don't. I'm surprised you have one. You well, must have been a big this fan. Was on the short, this was on the short list for the museum, and I, I, mean, I hate to tell you, it's looking like it might not make it into the, the opening uh, collection, but it's in. we have it in store. It just might go up at some point. All right. And this goes back to what we were talking about earlier with physical media. I do have that entire season on DVD. <laughs> that is that is 100% true. So you, You're probably the only one. Who probably has. one of the only ones. Yeah. I uh, now I I noticed I was watching a show. Uh, oh God, it's so great we can talk about uh, shows again. Uh, I was watching a show uh, called Slow Horses on mm -hmm. the Apple TV Plus, mm -hmm. and at the end of the show, it had a production logo that I think it's by a group. Maybe you can verify this, uh, Patrick. Slow Horses, I think, is produced by a, a company called maybe Seesaw. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And have you seen the oh, logo for Seesaw? I, I have. Let me pull this up. Hang on one second. Yeah. Uh, the logo for Seesaw, which is the company that one of the production companies behind the, the show, Slow Horses, which stars Gary Oldman, is yeah. identical to the famous <laughs> yeah. Seesaw uh, logo. He pulled, it he is he such a memorable up. logo. I mean, hang on one second because everyone's yeah. gonna. That's iconic. The iconic. <laughs> now look at that. Look at that. Look at that. What are they doing? What are they doing? What are they doing? What is it? Slow Horses is a hit show. Are they making fun of CISO or are they trying to bring it back slowly but surely in the non comedy space? Are I they think, trying? I think the progress it goes CISO, mm -hmm. Seesaw, mm -hmm. Hee Haw. I think they're oh. getting ready to. I think they're getting ready to reboot Hee Haw. I finally a payoff to all those New York Times think pieces trying to understand the Trump voter. They're bringing back <laughs> Hee Haw, and all will be well. I, I really, I really think that might be the answer to a lot of our problems. Is mm -hmm. if they bring back Hee Haw, suddenly you'll find like, hmm, we had another election, no one stormed the Capitol. Why not? Well, Hee Haw is on. Right. <laughs> Roy Clark it, picking his banjo. We that, can't even have time to go to DC. There is, is there? Go ahead, George. Yeah, there is a correlation between I think a, a certain sense because I'll read some of these New York Times pieces where they'll they'll go around the country, they'll try to figure out people just like I'm not happy. I don't feel like I don't feel like things are as good as they used to be. Mm -hmm. I just feel like somehow we lost our way. Mm -hmm. And I can't help but think now that maybe they're just talking about, like, if they'll put Hee Haw back on the air, it gives people something to laugh about uh, in a rural context. Hang on, George. We have an exclusive right now from yeah. a uh, development exec from CISO in the chat. This is real. Literally, the logo was going to be that logo, and I knew it looked familiar. And the day before we launched, we switched it because someone finally realized it was the exact replica of the Seesaw Films logo. Oh, so Seesaw Films preceded Seesaw. But that is the Seesaw logo. Right. They just changed it slightly the slightly. day before. Like, like if, you, if you're getting ready to go outside and it's a blustery day and you take uh -huh. out your, your lip balm or chapstick and it's your Seesaw, Seesaw branded chapstick, that's the logo. Uh -huh. So you're telling me that Seesaw, how old is Seesaw Films? Because Seesaw wasn't so very long ago. 2008. So they were around early Obama era. Yeah. Seesaw Films, are they a UK company? Australia. Australia. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, British, so British, Australian. British and Australian. So, per, so we owe perhaps an apology mm -hmm. um, to Seesaw. To, to Seesaw, yeah. 
uh, while we're at it, let's throw in an apology to Hee Haw. I think that'll be healing. Uh, let me give you a quick Hee Haw story. Yeah. It doesn't have to be quick, Michael. Great. <laughs> the gals on Hee Haw, you know, they had they had some some buxom gals awesome. and long, long legged ladies. They were called the Hee Haw Honeys. Mm -hmm. One of the Hee Haw Honeys was a woman named Misty Rowe. In around 2003, 2004, maybe, Misty Rowe had a Christmas show in Atlantic City. Mm -hmm. And in that Christmas show, which I went to see for a very specific reason, there was an audience plant in every episode and every uh, show. And, and the audience plant was supposed to come up and sing with Misty Rowe as if this is just a spontaneous thing that's happening. Wonderful. That audience plant and the reason that I went to see the show, Peter Dinklage. Oh, Peter wow. Dinklage from the station agent, Game of Thrones. That's right. And I think that was the nadir of Peter Dinklage's career. And then after that, sure. things started happening. And haven't stopped. Wow. Hunger Games, Ballad of Songbird and Snakes, star right. Peter Dinklage. Right, starring Rachel Zegler. There's Misty Rowe with Santa. Yep, yep, yep. And it was a terrible, terrible show. Uh, and Peter was miserable doing it. And and all of us who went down there uh, to to watch him perform in it had a good laugh at his expense. Just a just yeah. a great laugh at Peter Dinklage being stuck in Atlantic City for the holiday season. The bleakest spot in america uh and it, i mean it wasn't really a laugh at him it was more a laugh with him because he understood sure. that it was terrible too but uh yeah that was that was something do you have any other do you have any early jobs that were a similar kind of experience to you either pre or post joey diaz early early jobs in the show business do, 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 nothing well I was going to say nothing as humiliating as that, but but my very first New York theatrical performance was when I was a either a freshman or co a sophomore in, at, in college, and I uh, was cast as a corpse in a in a show, mm -hmm. and my job was to be the corpse on stage for in, I think the entire run of like a one act. And so, and there was a guy that was talking to me and I, my job was just to be a corpse and my eyes were open and I had to oh. sort of figure out how to blink in moments where the audience was unlikely to be looking at me. Uh, star of that show was a terrific actor named Ned Eisenberg who recently died. Oh, terrific sad. New York actor, character actor. Now, mm. did they tell you to leave your eyes open or was that a, was that a Michael choice? That was an artistic choice. On okay. Sure. Do you regret that? At the time, yes, very much. Yeah. Very. What about now? Oh, oh, that being the corpse? No, I don't. No, regret no, no. That. Do you? No, do you regret the eyes? Open. The eyes. Yeah, terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible choice on yeah. my part. Yeah. Although it did focus the mind quite a bit. Like I didn't get bored. I was mostly thinking about not blinking. Yeah. Was the play good? Don't remember. Okay. Great. I suspect sure. not. Most theaters terrible. Sure. Sure. True. Um, do you have dream projects that you, uh, uh, have in actively in development or passively in development things that you really want to accomplish? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But we, I don't talk about them because to talk mm -hmm. about them would be to jinx them. Yes. Mm -hmm. We don't want, and that's certainly not my intention. I was not preparing to jinx them. It seemed but, like you were. No, no, no. I would never, I would never, unless, unless I would have to have a reason. And I, as of now, I don't have a reason I'm, I'm rooting for you. If I had a reason, then it would be a different story. Then perhaps I would wish to jinx you, but I don't. It don't would be very it. easy for you, I feel like, to just finance some of them. I mean, you'd think so. Right. But that's, that's why I said I think it would be very easy for you to. Yeah. And yet we began this conversation with you lecturing me about making mm -hmm. assumptions. I, I, I hazarded a guess. I didn't say I assume uh -huh. you, could pay, you could finance them. I said I. I think I might have said I bet or I guess. Yes. But well, this that's, is that's offering a wager. But to hazard a guess, I mean, even the the verb of that hazard uh, right. is fraught. It, it, exactly. To hazard a guess, it, there is an implicit danger in what you're doing. You're 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 going into the realm of the unknown, 
and stating a possibility boldly. And a lot of, I'll, I'll be honest, I could finance, I'm sure many of your comedy projects or even dramatic mm -hmm. projects. If you had something where you thought, I don't want to be funny. I want mm -hmm. to move people to tears with the mm -hmm. seriousness of my craft. Um, do you have any, I'll ask in a general sense, is there anything you'd like to do that is not funny, but very serious and uh, you think, I don't want people to laugh during this. Yeah. I want them to feel yeah. different things. Pathos. Lots of pathos. Pathos. Mm -hmm. Do you think we're going to get any more of the the Wet Hot American Summer universe? I doubt it. Do you think if you all become very old, that, that might... That, might, uh, that would be the time to relaunch it, yes. Yeah. It, to do... In, when we're in our 70s, playing late I, teens sure like I, I do think i do feel like because i i was so pleased with the uh both of the revivals i thought were were very exciting mm -hmm. but it does feel like the next step has to be at a point where to to even see the cast again would be shocking Yes, because <laughs> I, I do feel like I do feel like there's something about both the discipline it takes to wait, to wait another twenty years, yeah, and then the boldness to embrace. This is why we waited is so that you can right. see us. Wet hot American summer next summer, and then we're all in our seventies. That's uh -huh. right. It's one one summer later, mm -hmm. and it's been a hell of a year. <laughs> <laughs> like. <laughs> It really is. The storytelling, you should almost film part of it now. Just a little <laughs> part of it. Just to show the, the bad thing that happens to each person that is so, so stressful. That it, it would make if if someone was watching that in chronological chronological order, it would the midquel of it all would make it so confusing because you'd watch the prequel, which is the last thing, and then the original, and then the old people, and then the other one. You know, I I do think I I do think here's my here's my genuine recommendation. Yeah. You should wait until everyone is um, terminally ill, is is <laughs> astonishingly diminished, <laughs> physically <laughs> and mentally. <laughs> then give a call to Industrial Light and Magic, and by this point they will have perfected so many technologies. But you should insist on them dusting off the original Irishman uh, set of uh, <laughs> de-aging tools, patches and, <laughs> and uh, whatever they have in the, in the toolkit yeah. and say, I'll, we'll have a little bit of that, please. Right. That's the aesthetic <laughs> we're going for. Yeah. Cause I feel like it'll be, people will be hungry for it by then to see like, we haven't seen a good old fashioned Irishman in a while. No. Mm -hmm. You know, in the, in the, in the, in the storytelling sense, we do a format here called the Irishman Plus, which is that we try to make our shows at least at least one minute longer than uh, Marty Scorsese's The Irishman, mm -hmm. and it's not hard to do. How was uh, how was it? What was it like? To, was Rick Moranis in American Graffiti? Seeing that? Uh, no, no. Uh, I'm trying to think what you might be thinking of. I'm thinking of the guy who looks like Rick Moranis. The guy who's yes, right over your very... shoulder, George. Yeah, yeah. Why? Yeah, he's right over your shoulder. No, the other shoulder. shoulder. Other shoulder. He's in both movies. There he is. Yes, he's in. Yeah, Terry the Toad. That's his name in that movie, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Charles Martin Smith. Charles Martin that's Smith. Smith. Yeah, Charles. Yeah. I was looking for his name on the poster. Charles Martin Smith. Very much a prototype of uh, the Rick Moranis uh, movie nerd. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, very, uh, very horny, very frightened of getting hurt. Um, no, but is Moran I, I, is Moranis one of your guys? Well, Moranis was Dark Helmet. I, in, I was asking in, Michael. Well, I was oh, just saying one guys. of my guys. He played a, yeah. he played a space ball. Oh sure. Um, he's not one of my guys. No, I've never who are your guys? Method Man. Method Man. <laughs> Mostly Method Man. And Red Man. Uh huh. Okay. And um, Man of La Mancha. Impossible Dream. And Hungry Man. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's it. That's it. All men. Good guy. No, they're good guys. Good guys. 
Uh, were you? Uh, did you watch SCTV growing up? No. No, I n never saw it till I was in my probably early twenties. Right. It wasn't. It wasn't. They didn't show it uh, where I lived in New Jersey, mm -hmm. or at least that I was aware of. Right. What was? What were your big influences comedically? What are some things that would maybe surprise people about about like either comedic or or, or thing? They don't even have to be things that were funny, but things that uh, you fa you uh, took inspiration from your work uh maybe the, the maybe the oddest is was a show called that's incredible you know that show yeah that was yeah that was uh, hosted by kathy griffin no not kathy griffin kathy not kathy lee gifford what's her name uh, fran tarkenton john davidson and kathy something and it was a sh it was a show that just featured people doing incredible things and that show has stuck with me more than- Kathy Lee Crosby. Crosby yeah. has stuck with me more than maybe any other thing I've ever experienced. Huh. That just sort of blew my mind open as to the possibilities that are just inherent in this world. A, a yogi could fit into a box this big. He just bends him, just fits himself into a box about this big, no bigger than a shoe box. Yogi just fits himself right into there. There's archers, you know, splitting arrows with arrows. There's all kinds of stuff. It's incredible. What What's something like that that you wish you could do? Or is there something that you would have done had you gotten the chance to go on that show? Well, I'll tell you a direct inspiration that I did do was mm -hmm. we used to, I, I, I co-created a show called Viva Variety. Mm -hmm. and, one of, and one of the things on the show was we always had a variety act. And those acts were just directly could have been on That's Incredible. Like, you know... They, I mean, they tended to be a little bit more stupid than That's Incredible because it was a comedy sure. show. But, you know, there'd be like a guy who could regurgitate billiard balls. I had knives thrown at me. A uh, guy drove over me with a truck. Uh, you know, uh, uh, bola boards, you know, people doing circus acts yeah. and stuff. All that stuff right out of That's Incredible. Did any of those not work? Like during production, did you guys have any... Uh, no, we were not, yeah. an injury. I mean, we had people lighting yeah. themselves on fire. We had people uh, uh, it, 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 like dealing with rattlesnakes and shoving them yeah. in bags as fast as they could. Like all kinds of crazy shit. No, nobody, nobody ever got hurt. No, wow. no injuries, no mishaps, nothing like it. That's great. We were very fortunate. And Duran Duran was on. So that's a good show. Yeah. Yeah, George, I, I, you I, on, caught on, few, I caught a few. I caught a few episodes of that back in the day. Sure, sure. I bet you did. Were you Were you a fan of new wave music? Um, I have an appreciation for some of it. I don't. I I I wouldn't say I have a lot of new wave music in my collection, but I do appreciate it. Um, that's not not really my generation. I was sort of like focused on my own thing when that was, uh, but. You know, uh, made a movie that had Bowie in it. That's it. there's a little bit of overlap between Bowie and some of that new wave era, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Labyrinth was that you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I produced it. Yeah. Oh. Jim Henson movie. Right. Who directed uh, it? That was, Jim Henson directed it. Oh, he directed it, and yeah. his company made it. Got it. Yeah. Terry yeah. Jones wrote it. Oh, really? Elaine, May, Elaine yeah. May did a did a little bit of work on the script. Hmm. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah. Uncredited, I assume, as always. Yeah, a little bit of uh, script doctoring. Sure. Yeah. What's your favorite Elaine May movie, Michael? You like Ishtar? What's the take on Ishtar? I never saw it. Oh. Did you see uh, the uh, honeymoon uh, kid? Years ago. The Heartbreak Kid. The Heartbreak Kid. Sorry. Heartbreak Kid. And I remember liking the Heartbreak Kid quite a bit. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good movie. Good I don't well, remember Patrick, anything. Patrick, who owns that movie right, right now? Is what? Oh, it's like a, a pharmacist in Britain owns the Heartbreak Kid, and like the rights it. to it, and that's why it's not streaming anywhere. It's not on DVD or Blu-ray, really. Like it's it's all tied up in this like weird uh, British pharmaceutical company. Um, we want to encourage people to look up that company and write to them and tell them stop holding the Heartbreak Kid hostage. Yeah, I what are, what, I don't know. Like off the top. What happened? Patrick, 
What happened? It was Bristol Myers Squibb is the name of the company. Yes. Patrick, we've lost a guest. I didn't do that. But you are the booker. I didn't. Did you pull him off the stream? Do that. He said off the top of my head. <laughs> and I mean, it's a great way to leave if that was how he left. And he was gone. But he did not warn us in the private chat. Like sometimes people will say, like, I'm going to do something. Get ready. Yeah. He said off the top of my head. And he was gone. <laughs> like that. Dave, did you do that? I don't so know. We know it wasn't Dave. He would cop to it if he if it had been him. Um. Well, let's. Well, thank you, Michael, for stopping thank by. Thank you, Michael Ian Black. Shocking, Michael Ian Black. Thank you so Very much fast. for stopping by. Thank you, thank oh, you Michael. Just, it, it, in in looking up Elaine May uh, screenwriting credits, I somehow exited. Oh, okay. The show, All right. my chagrin, and I apologize. But she wrote some great ones, Heaven Can Wait and Tootsie mm -hmm. and all kinds mm -hmm. of stuff. She's terrific. Yeah. 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 Um, What did you do today, Michael? It's come to did, this, has it? Did you have? No, did you have? No. <laughs> we want to get something. We want to get something that nobody else has. Oh, you want an exclusive? Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, told you, I told you, I, I, I gave you the, the, the pecan pie. That's an exclusive. Yeah. yeah. Um, I also, uh, took a, took a long walk with the dogs over to CVS, mm -hmm. uh, to pick up some Zolpidem Tartare, which is Ambien. Oh. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm, I've been having trouble sleeping. Mm-hmm. So, have you found that that helps? Have you tried other methods? What's the? I feel like what? I've tried everything. Yeah. Um, and yes, it does help. I I, okay. I love being drugged to unconsciousness. Sure. It's why okay. I, it's why I like it's why I look forward to the colonoscopy every five years. Mm -hmm. Do you have dreams that you remember, Michael? No. Oh, uh, and ever? Sure. Ever. Sure. Do you generally have good dreams or bad dreams? My dreams tend to be fairly pedestrian, which I think is common as you get older. Like it's yeah. just going about your daily life, doing some boring task. Uh, you know, maybe something a little bit off kilter happens. Like, you know, I'm at the supermarket. I'm I'm looking and they're out of Kiwis. <laughs> what am I supposed to do now? <laughs> and then you wake up. Then you wake up covered in sweat. In a panic. And you carry that feeling over into your day. Like, do you yes. feel the the lack of a kiwi uh, as your day goes on? Yes. Do you ever act on it? Like go out and solve the problem in your life that you couldn't in your dream? No. Mm. You should try that sometime. It might feel good. It might. It might. You I think you'll write another book, Michael? Yeah, do you think you'll write another book, Michael? Thanks for asking, George. Um, yeah, probably at some point. I've written well, a few. Uh, I've got I've got a couple of children's books coming out in the next year, but those don't count. They count. They do count. They, they get count. if they have an if they have an Isbin, they count, Michael. Then I guess they count. Yeah. yeah. Which has been your favorite book that you've read? That I've written? Yeah. Or that you've read. I don't care. Either uh, one. Uh I'm looking up at my shelf of books that I've written. I got one right here. Oh, that's a good I one. I got I got two right here. Oh, you do. Look at that. I got I got a partial one right here. Oh yeah, you there's got a lot of a... You, you got a lot of content from me. You, you got a big bookshelf, you know. Yeah, the the last one I wrote is called "A Better Man," a mostly mm -hmm. serious letter to my son. Mm -hmm. Pretty fond of that. That was a good book. Um, has he has he read it? No. <laughs> How old is he? Twenty two. Okay. Do you think he'll ever read it? When I'm dead, probably. Yeah. He'll he'll uh, he'll probably feel badly that he never read it, and then he'll he'll open it up and realize that at one point I loved him. Yeah. Have they interacted with your work at all? Like, have they watched anything? Have they? Not that much. No. I mean, every once in a while, like they, they uh, my son flew up to New York to come see the state perform. Mm -hmm. That was nice. Uh, every once in a while, they'll come to a stand-up show. Yeah. Uh -huh. But. They don't care. They don't care about their father. How how has the tour been going? How's the reception? 
is there any uh, is there anything that you wanted to do in it that everyone else said no or like people just weren't excited to do? No, uh, surprisingly, the reception's been very good. Yeah. We're done touring for the year. We've got a couple shows next year. And no, there was nothing that I wanted to do that everybody else didn't. I'm trying to think if there's mm -hmm. something everybody else wanted to do that I didn't yeah. want to do. Not really. Yeah. I don't think so. There's like a big dance number in the beginning. And I did want to do that. But it was such a pain in the ass to like learn the dance. Mm -hmm. And How did you guys? I don't yeah. love dancing. Sure. How did you guys decide on what to put in there? What was the the process like? Uh, it was, hey, what about this? Sure. What yeah. about this? Yeah, that sounds good. I've got this uh, thing here. You want to try yeah. that? All right. Yeah. It was very easy. Putting it together. That's good. I mean, it was a lot of work putting it together and making all the pieces come together. And yeah. but in terms of like deciding what would be in them, it was it was actually fairly fairly easy. There was, you know, there's a lot of new stuff that we had to write for it. Uh, some old stuff, but yeah, it was pretty easy. Right. George, you've never done a live show of your stuff. What we toured with this show, we've been doing this show for a decade. But I mean, like in this in this uh, sense, like you've oh, never like I don't do a... well. I let other people. There's an Indiana Jones stunt show that they do yeah. at Disney World, and uh, yeah, but <clears throat> no, I pr primarily worked in cinema, so mm -hmm. it's not. I I don't think that. I know there have been people who've talked about doing a Star Wars musical. Has there ever been a Star Wars on ice? Because that seems like a natural. <laughs> I mean, there are small ways that certain things would, but I, you know, I, I do primarily think that, that the mediums that Star Wars uh, has, we've done, done film and television, obviously, and we've done novels and video games, and we've done a, a few breakfast cereals, <laughs> I don't know why mm -hmm. I skipped over theater and did breakfast cereals, but I felt like there were C3PO's was one, it was a cereal that I sort of helped. I wanted to make sure that it was a slightly healthier than a lot of the more sugary cereals that were on the market. It didn't last long, but it was a very good cereal. Mm -hmm. What what made it healthier? Just a, just a little bit healthier ingredients, not quite so much sugar as um as the R2D2 uh, cereal. Yeah, we never gave R two a cereal. In all seriousness, we never gave R two a, a cereal, and and this is something I don't really joke about. C three PO, we gave a cereal. We never, we never gave a R two D two a cereal, but R two D two was very much a part of the the promotional, you know, because they're best friends. Uh, I, I know mm -hmm. as much as they fight, as much as there are times when they don't get along, and R two certainly pushes it. Uh, yeah, C3PO is very easily agitated, but I think there's a genuine affection there. I do, do think they genuinely are best friends to the end. But I just, we never cracked an R2-D2 cereal. We just, I, I said, if we can't make it work, if it's not as good as C3PO's, then I don't want to do it. And maybe someone will at some point, but... I mean, in my mind, the R2-D2 cereal is sort of like uh, Alphabet's with maybe star-shaped marshmallows uh, or something something like that. Well, isn't that kind of what C-3PO's was, George? Uh, no, C-3PO's was sort of like little, little like, uh, bring it up, bring a picture, I'll show you. It was I'm, like, I'm, or like little, little, like, um, almost looks like little weird. eights. But like, r 2 kind of looks like a marshmallow, but also the letter A is pretty close to approximating, a, depending on how low the, the, the uh, horizontal Cross line spot. is. And the A, and if you if it's a cornered A as opposed to a pointy A, if you have a cornered A with a fairly low uh, uh, middle ridge, horizontal ridge, uh, you're pretty close to approximating a, a mm -hmm. R2D2 in serial format. So it was not a production issue. Uh, we could have cranked out an R2D2 serial. And uh, uh, part of me looking back and thinking, should we have tried harder? Uh, zoom mm -hmm. in and you'll see the serial. Mm -hmm. If you zoom in, you'll see. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hang on one second. What, 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 is, what, is, what is the shape of that supposed to represent? Those are C3PO's balls. Okay, that makes sense. Wouldn't have been my first choice necessarily to mm -hmm. make robot gonads. The oh no, not genitals. Those are just like like stress balls that he like plays with. Ah, well that yeah. makes mm -hmm. sense. So like the part joints stress, don't part the joints don't free, cut. Part of a stress-free breakfast. <laughs> okay. right. What's your favorite breakfast cereal? Yeah, what did you have for breakfast this morning? Okay, so there's 
Those are two separate questions that have two separate answers. And a third okay. follow-up, because if you didn't have your favorite breakfast this morning, Michael, what are we doing? You should have your favorite breakfast every day. Normally, including today, I don't eat breakfast. My favorite breakfast cereal is Frosted Flakes. It's a classic. Mm. They're great. It's tried and true. They're great. You can't Agreed. improve on it. It's just a fantastic, fantastic cereal. Frosted flakes of corn. But you don't have mm -hmm. that every day for health reasons. I hardly ever have it. Every day you deprive yourself of your favorite breakfast, even though, let's face it, you can afford it. I don't think I'm telling tales out of school here when I say that Michael Ian Black is in a position to pretty steadily have a bowl of frosted flakes every single day of the week. Well, that that dildo money stretches mm -hmm. pretty far. Yeah, especially <laughs> when you when you spend it on sugary cornflakes. Uh, yeah, I think it I think it buys a flake or two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't mind saying we, we did get some fan art uh, that I do want to show on Twitter. It's from Oh Not Great. This is uh, Michael and the dildo inside the Disney vault. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> is that that is me? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. I didn't I didn't recognize myself, but yeah, that is me. Uh, is it Showalter show. next to you? Who is that? I don't know what that is, or who that is? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Know. That might be if it's the Disney Vault. That might be Bob Iger. <laughs> might be. Or <laughs> you think he hangs out? Like, fuck you, Bob. Fuck you. Who's the guy that Bob replaced? Who replaced Bob? Uh, then Bob, Bob Chapek. Might be Chapek. Yeah, yeah, it's probably Chapek. He's probably in the vault. Bob probably put him in the... Uh, Iger probably put Chapek in the vault. <laughs> he said, uh, ah, let me escort you off the premises. No, it's the, no, no, it's the least I can do. It's the least I can do. And then they're going down the stairs. And he's like, I don't think this is the way to the parking garage, Bob. He's like, oh, Bob, there's a... It actually is. I'm taking it a, a different way. It's better. It's like, okay. It. This, is, uh, this is going down... Uh, well, what's this? Well, this looks like we're going into the, the vault, Bob. I'm like, no, this is not this is the way to the parking garage. Your car is on the other side of this door. And then he opens it up. He's like, all right, a uh, car's in there. I said, all I see in there, Bob, is a copy of Song of the South and 39 episodes of Star Wars Detours. It's like, your car's just right behind those episodes of Star Wars Detours. And Bob Chapek steps into the vault. And he's like, right behind these episodes, these episodes, it's like a pile. It's like a foot and a half. Hi, I drive a, a mid-sized sedan. And <laughs> at that point, Bob Iger says, no, no, just, just go a little further. And Bob Chapek goes, Bob Chapek says, Bob, I don't see my car anywhere. I don't think we're anywhere near. <sighs> Bob? 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 <laughs> Bob! And then we cut to Bob Iger. He's back at his office. Son of a bitch didn't miss a beat. <laughs> I buy it. I think, that's, I think that's what happened. Do you think the show would have been better or worse with Ricky? Ricky, great question. Ricky Lindholm, Lindholm? Was supposed oh, to be on the show. I thought yeah. I thought you were talking back to NYPD Blue when you were talking about Ricky Schroeder when he took over if he'd been in from the beginning. No, that was Rick Schroeder. Ricky Schroeder was never on NYPD Blue. Potato, but Ricky. <laughs> I'm glad she's not here. Um, I'm great. sad and also oh. mad. Mm -hmm. And yet at the same time, I do feel glad because uh, I feel like we have your undivided attention. You do. Mm -hmm. But I also can't help but feel uh, uh, delighted by the nature of the mishap because it's just uh, a single number changed the, the, the course of the evening. Um, although, if we think it through a little bit, yeah. because she's in Europe, she mm -hmm. may also have read 2-5 as May 2nd. Which mm -hmm. would be us preparing for our May the 4th show. Yeah. May the 4th be with you, you know? Yeah. I don't know. There's don't, so many we'll different ways that tonight could have gone differently. And yet here we are. And I think we're having a delightful time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you having a good time, Michael? I, should, I shouldn't assume. Let me check in with you. Uh, yeah, I'm just wondering when I get to leave. I mean, I left, leave. Once, I left <laughs> once mistakenly. Yeah. yeah. And in a way, that may have, that may have cost you. I think because, it is. Because <laughs> to leave once, you're gone. Unceremoniously, yes. That's that's yeah. that can be chalked up to any, any number of reasons. To but do to, it again? To come back 
there's sort of an expectation. Oh, he likes it here. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Ian Black, Thanks for coming by. Hold on. All right, George, can we plug some stuff? Because I want to do this before. Uh, I should also say, show's not done. Uh, there's surprises hopefully coming later, uh, which will be fun. But I want to plug some upcoming stuff that we have, George. All right. Okay. All right. Here we go. I'm going to pull this up. Look at this. Upcoming shows. Now, some of these have been announced. Some of these are exclusives. You're about to get some exclusives. Okay. Uh -huh. First show, December 16th, 4 p.m. Eastern time. It's an, an afternoon, afternoon show, a late afternoon, afternoon show. Okay. At Caveat in New York City. This is, you can get tickets to come in person or you can live stream it from anywhere in the world. Uh, here's a QR code. It'll bring you to the ticket link or bit.ly slash GLTS deck for December. Um, you can uh, also, you can also watch the live stream after it's done streaming. If that's something. Yeah, you don't have you to can, watch it. You can, yeah. But you have to buy it, I think, before it happens. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, Wada will be at that. George will be at that. I'll be at that in some fashion. Uh, maybe we'll if have some in, guests. If you're if you're in person for that, yeah, I think Uncle George is going to be giving out quite a few Life Day presents at that show. Yes. So yes. so the price of your ticket might also include getting a, a little extra gift of some sort. Yes. It might be something uh, really good, or it might be something that you think this wasn't much. Yeah, and it's it's kind of the sister show to this show. It is part this two of our. We decided, you know, we do different kinds of shows for different yeah. kinds of reasons. And we decided that for Life Day this year, because we've done a lot of different kinds of shows this year in a lot of different places. Yeah. And we know some people really like the old fashioned live stream. So we said, and we, and we hadn't done a charity fundraiser in a while. We thought we want to make sure to raise some money for a good cause. But a lot of our New York audience likes to be able to come see a show in person, certainly for Life Day. Uh, uh, after taking off a, a while for the pandemic, it feels good to be able to do a Life Day show in person in a venue. So it would be very different uh, than this show. And George, you're 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 making it feel so small by just saying our New York audiences. You're forgetting our New Jersey audiences, our Connecticut audiences, our Pennsylvania audiences. We've had, people, wants come, to we've come. had people come from Canada to see uh, shows true. in New York. You know, that's true. Anyone, you can um, feel free to travel to New York uh, on December sixteenth to see that show. And the great yeah. thing is, you can come see our show and then uh, go check out a Broadway show in the evening. Because the thing is. Uh, I'm not going to say that we have that 4 p.m. slot because all the other slots were taken by the time we decided. I'm going to say uh -huh. it's because it's called Life Day, not Life Evening. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Uh, I did just notice one slide is missing, but let me bring up this next one. We're also going to be at San Francisco Sketch Fest, um, which is in uh, uh, San Francisco. The first obviously. weekend in February. Uh, we have three shows in San Francisco for Sketch yes. Fest. Normally, we, we come to San Francisco and we do a single George Lucas talk show. But this time, we are doing George Lucas talk show. And we are also going to bring our two shows that we tested out at the Fringe. Yes. Uh, we're going to be bringing uh, The Baron and the Junk Dealer and George Prov, an improvised theatrical experience. So uh, the, the talk show is in one venue. And it's a, uh, it's a very large venue. It's a big venue. A lot of seats, so uh, would love to get um, as many butts and seats as we can for that. So if you're anywhere near San Francisco or want to come out to San Francisco for the weekend, it's a great weekend. There's a lot of good uh, Sketchfest shows going on. Um, so that's at one venue. And then we're also doing The Baron and the Junk Dealer, uh, the play with George and Watto. Uh, that'll be at a smaller venue. So if you're thinking about coming, you should grab your tickets now because tickets are going pretty quick for that one. Um, and then later in the night at the same venue as Baron and the Junk Dealer, George will also be doing George Prov. And George, do you want to explain George Prov? Because some of them are up on YouTube, so more are coming in a little bit. But uh, tell yeah, people George, what George, George Prov, Prov is. is uh is a show that, uh, for those of you who are familiar with uh, ABBA Voyage, the, the uh, show that Industrial Light and Magic, my old company, designed the technology for, mm -hmm. um, Basically, ABBA did one concert in a motion capture studio and the technology captured them doing all their hits and their new songs. And then their av avatars, which we call avatars, performed the show digitally 
uh, every day in London in the same venue, yeah. even though ABBA only did the show once, really. And so uh, last spring, I uh, went into a motion capture studio uh, in Marin County. And for about a week, I did all of the improv moves that would enable audiences to witness uh, my uh, avatar uh, performing improv based on a suggestion. Uh, yeah. And so uh, we ran four of these uh, demonstrations. Uh, we have a we have an analog performer, uh, and a digital skin is. Uh, I don't want to say too much about the technology, how the nuts and bolts of how it works, because it's proprietary. Kiss is using it now for their upcoming uh, digital shows. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna we're gonna do a um, we're gonna do a, sh a single George Prov show in San Francisco at Sketchfest, where you'll be able to see. Uh, an analog performer that will appear to be me, retired filmmaker George Lucas, and will appear to interact with the audience. But everything will be be done. It's 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 a mix of uh, algorithmic um, sort of uh, uh, it'll interactive algorithmic digital uh, artificial intelligence meets analog uh, performance. Uh, by all appearances, it will look like just a single performer doing improv by himself for an hour. But what you will mm -hmm. actually be witnessing is billions of dollars of the latest performance enhancing technology. And if you want to get an idea of what it's like, and I think people are uh, sleeping on these a little bit, some of the fringe shows are up on our YouTube uh, and you can watch them and you can see what George Prov is, even though every show is different. You'll get some uh, good ideas uh, for that. Um, also, all of our fringe shows are up on YouTube. And if you haven't seen them, there's a lot of fun ones. And I think people should watch them more. Uh, okay, now here are the ones that are not announced. Here comes the exclusives, George. The week after San Francisco, where are you going to be? Oh, uh, well, where do I need to be? You're going to be in Los Angeles. Because we're going to be doing two shows at Dynasty Typewriter, two talk shows, an early show and a late show. And you can get a discount if you buy both live streams. So those are, you can get them in person tickets or you can buy a live stream ticket. And if you buy both live stream tickets, you get a discount on it. Um, right. It'll be a there'll be a regular a conventional talk show followed by a live after dark. Yes, uh, and it's and this shows is on, a, on a Monday on a Monday evening, I believe. Yes, I believe so. Yeah, I believe so. Monday, February fifth, um, a Dynasty typewriter. Yeah, uh, it's going to be fun, and I think those tickets will move quick. So if you're in LA or in the area or want to go to LA, um, grab those tickets because they might not be around too long. Now, but George, what about later in the week? What about those people who couldn't make it to San Francisco who want to see the Baron and the Junk Dealer? Well, uh, why don't you uh, just refer to what we're looking at on the screen right now at the Elysian uh, Theater uh, on Thursday, February 8th. Uh, that'll be Los Angeles. Uh, that'll mm -hmm. be your opportunity to see the Baron and the Junk Dealer uh, at mm -hmm. the Elysian Theater, 7.30 p.m a single performance, just like with San Francisco, just one performance in LA, a small venue. Uh, how, do you know how many seats are at the Elysian is? It's around a hundred. Yeah. I think. So, so again, 100. we would encourage people. Uh, I think those tickets will go fairly fast. Yeah. Um, and, but George, that doesn't seem like enough. Oh, it feels like we need something show? else. I think we need to do something else that night. Also right. at the Elysian, February 8th, 9 p.m., George Prov. Is it pronounced Elysian? 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 The Elysian. Not Elysian? No, because that Elysian. would take two eyes. Yeah, the Elysian. Uh, uh, a whole night, though. whole night of George. Why would it be two eyes if it was Elysian? Wouldn't it be E-L-Y-I-S-I-A-N for Elysian? The Z-N would happen after the S. It's E-L-Y-S-I-A-N? Yeah. I don't know why. I'm tempted to pronounce it Elysian. It feels more elegant than Elysian. You can say, what, say whatever you want. I'm going to keep saying the Elysian. Okay. Now, George, there's another thing, too. Yes. Because we... Before any years, of these things. Before any of these... Yeah, I mean, this is available right now. What? Are we talking about the same thing? No, I don't think so. Okay, great. Well, let I'll, I'll say mine first. For years, we've been using Below the Collar as our merch uh, provider. They are closing up shop, so we're going to a new place. Uh, we have a new merch store, gltsthreadless.com. Okay? And now, George, 
with with below the collar and a lot of other places you can do t-shirts you can do hats that's about yes. it sometimes yeah. you can do some more stuff but that's about it this yes. one we've added a lot of new designs most of the old designs are there um not all of them not the hat working on the, getting the, the, the hat the... yeah we're working on getting the hats back i think that'll be soon um but we were able to bring back some stuff that uh wasn't able to be at below the collar anymore i don't know how long these will be up Okay. I don't know how long they'll be there. So if you want this, you should grab it because he's back. He's back, George. And and who knows for how long. There he is. I, I dare not say his name. I don't want to either. The, for fear that some ambitious lawyer might decide to file a cease and desist order of yes. all things. And now the good thing about this site, George, is that you can sort of make these designs into almost anything. So, for example, uh, you know, there's also the uh, pretend it's a, uh, this guy. I'm not going to say his name. And you could put it on a pillow if you want, and right? You, it looks so comfortable. You can nestle your noggin on that. Yeah. You could put it on so many different things. There's a new design that I made up uh, based on something Wado and I say sometimes. This is a duck tits woo thing. And you could put it on a skateboard, George. Pretty good skateboard. That's a, Is that a deck, they call it? It's a deck. That is a skateboard deck. But you yeah. can also get this on a t-shirt. You can also get this on a pillow. What truly, like, your heart's content. You can get whatever you want. Some other ones that we added, we added, this is a uh, Jersey Dave's Friends sweatshirt. Uh, these are some of Dave's friends. You're excited about this, Dave, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, these friends, I, I make them and then I, sh I ship them off and I don't see them again. These, these friends yeah. are living on a little bit more. Let's zoom in. Let's get a look at those friends. Uh, I can't zoom in. Oh, you can't zoom in? Via, via StreamYard, I cannot zoom in. Sorry oh about that. Well, I, gee, I can't. I'd love to see them a little closer. Um, but we, we added ones where you can get this picture on almost anything, or you can get individual pictures of all of these characters on stuff. Great. Um, we also, we're playing a little fast and loose with stuff. Fast? And we made one. And more intense. That, yes. That, again, I don't know how long it's going to be up there. It's just the Detours logo. So if you want the Detours logo on a shower curtain. <laughs> or anything. Your time. Sure? Or any, truly anything. Now all is your of time. these things come in all like all of these options. Yes. Yeah. You can get a Star Wars Detours pillow. Yes. We're flying real close to the sun, as Sir Mo Payne says, but I think it's fun. And I just there's one more. I mean, there's a lot more, but the one more that I chose to bring up, I feel like this is going to be our best seller. It's a Patrick Duvet cover. Just get the Patrick Duvet cover. This is gltsthreadless.com. Um, there's a lot of other merch on there that you can see uh, when you go to that website. And truly, you, you put it on a mug. Put it on a, a, you know, what else, Dave, was there? There mouse pad, notebooks, like yoga mats. Just art prints. If you want art prints, mm -hmm. you can just get that. Like, there's so many insane things. Um, go do that. Go do that. It's fun. Uh, but I hope people come out to the shows, and I hope people um, will buy some new merch. But that's about it on the plugging front. No, that, we've left out a major thing that people might not have heard about. What else? Well, what else could there be? What else could there possibly be? Oh! Oh, yeah! Yeah! This is in January. Yeah. Uh, before uh, the, before any of those shows happen. Yes. Except for, the doc except for the Life Day, December 16th show, part two of yeah. Life Day. The documentary about the George Lucas talk show uh, is in the Slam Dance Film Festival in Park City, uh, Utah, in the uh, third week of January, I believe. We, the date is not public yet, but... Yeah, the uh, finance is happening between the 19th uh, and the 25th. And uh, yeah. the the George Lucas talk show, the documentary about the making of the talk show, uh, will be making its world premiere at Slamdance. Mm -hmm. Yes. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, that's um, what I thought you were going to announce. And you're like, no, I want to talk no. about the t-shirt. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, I should bring up the... Hang on, let me pull this up, though. Um, I was told we could show the poster for the first time poster for what for the documentary oh i don't know if i've even seen this really oh this will be fun hang on one second 
it might be a little confusing for people just because there's some names on there that people don't know. Uh, but let me pull this up. Um, now, George, you're excited for this documentary. You're feeling good. I'm excited. Yeah, I mean, I, it's this is not my project, uh, but I did cooperate with it. Yeah, that's true. The uh, oh my God. yeah, and we obviously helped them uh, get some finishing funds by rallying mm -hmm. the Georgie Porgies. Yeah, um, and really just a, a, a snapshot. Initially, the reason for cooperating certainly initially was to get a snapshot of how this weird little show came to be at a moment mm -hmm. when, uh, when we weren't really sure what the future of it would be, whether we would keep doing it or not. Um, so it's a little bit of insight into that process. Um, here's the, this is the poster. Here's the poster. There's a credit block down there that uh, is a little tough to read on this screen, but yeah, um, I think it's a cool poster. I right. think it's fun. I like that picture of you, George. Yeah, and then that is, I believe, a reference to the Kurt Vonnegut uh, drawing of an asshole. Uh huh. At the top, from Breakfast of Champions. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm George Lucas, and that's me. Then I'm looking up at it, and I can't really read the bottom parts. Yeah, it's a little too small to read. But if you guys are in the uh, Park City area, or going to Sundance, or going to be, you know. Anywhere around there, uh, you should come to the screening because a bunch of us are going to be out there. G George, you're going to be there. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Um, and someone just pointed out that this poster is like a work of narrative art. And I think that's probably true. Do you think this will go in the museum? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe we'll put it in the museum. Maybe we'll put that up next to uh, next to this poster of Mike Lee and Black doing the debate wars. Mm hmm. Yeah. He's like Wild. a poster, sort of. It's like you never left the show. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. I see uh, the doc will be streaming. Yes, I believe so. But here's what I'll say. Uh, the, the producers will be releasing it in their own way. And I would say it's nicer to give the money closer to the production company than to a film festival. Do what you want, but hold off a little bit if you're thinking of streaming it. Uh, because there will be there will be alternate ways to see this documentary um, sooner sooner rather than later. You know, we're in the home stretch on people being able to see the doc, uh, and we're working on other screenings, other film festivals. Hopefully, you know, there's there's a lot of a lot of parts in motion right now. Now, George, we should do some some more fundraising for this because I think donations have been a little <laughs> slow, but I just wanna I wanna get that moving. Um. Absolutely. I think that makes a lot of sense. I have some stuff that I can auction off. Let me go grab it. I'll bring it back here. And I think people will like that. Uh, Butch Daniels, does Georgia have new friends? I have only one right now. Um, could auction off. Just haven't really been making friends lately. It's hard to make friends. Let's auction. Let's auction them off. Right now? Do you want? Why don't you save yours for a little bit? Let's auction some yeah. other stuff off, and then we'll see what uh, you know. Get people, get people moving and grooving. Um, I have a. Uh, I have some some bring the noise shirts. Ooh. Let's some original some Bring the Noise shirts that are mine. And, 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 and I'm how, just, do we have a total for how we've done with the food bank so far? Yeah, we're let's let's do this first and then we'll bring up the total. Okay. Okay. We don't want to motivate people with how poorly we're doing. <laughs> okay, we can do it. Sure. We are at six hundred and eighty two dollars. I'd like to get some more. Look, I have a three thousand a visit from an old friend. I think we can get to that. So we get an old friend to visit the show at three thousand. Yes. And that means we've uh, gotten 3,402.3 meals for people, um, which is exciting. That's a lot of... Wait, $3,000 gets us how many meals? Every $1 gets five meals. Yes. So if, it was, so if we raise $3,000... That's 15,000 meals, yes. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's, let's get going on that. Uh, okay, here we go. You ready? 
Let's see. First one. This is GLTS in a baseball. It looks like the San Francisco Giants logo. This was the shirt I wore uh, at our last SF Sketch Fest. Um, it's a really good shirt. It's a really good it's shirt, really... especially for people who um, might be attending any of the Sketch Fest shows. Yeah. To have a piece of San Francisco GLTS merch. Yes. It is a, shows is a real the brand is a, I can't really see it. It's a canvas branded shirt. It's a medium um we love it we love the medium if anyone's does it, interested does it smell a little bit like you a little like, bit it smells like your laundry detergent it smells like my laundry detergent i think more so they're very nice soft detergents. yeah um if anyone's interested you can throw in a dollar amount in the chat uh or if you're not interested just throw in a dollar amount in the chat you know and you can give it to a friend 40 dollars from lena i'm seeing Forty dollars from Lena. Um, not a shirt I've worn a lot. I'm, I've worn it once, maybe one other time. Gently used. Gently used. Yeah. Uh, I'll, look, you want me to sign it? I'll sign it. You want whatever you want, we will do it. I won't if you don't want me to. I did say the size. It is a medium. It is a medium. We're at forty dollars. Is what I see. They're all mediums. How about because sometimes people don't necessarily want a signed shirt, but while well, you'll sign a little a little index card or something, it says sure. this is instead of ruining the shirt, Patrick. Huh? Yes, I'll give you the. It, it could be used as provenance if you ever try to sell it somewhere. Yeah, I'll say this came directly from me. You know, blah 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 blah. I gotta go tuck my uh, kids in. I'll be right back. Okay, good luck, good dad. dad. What a good dad. Um, and a little kissy. Sure, we're at forty dollars. If we want to close it at forty dollars, I'm happy to close it at forty dollars. This is forty. This is forty. Um, let's give it. Let's give it one more minute. If anyone wants to go higher than forty, we can go higher than forty. I bet someone can go uh, forty-two in honor of the age that uh, Mike Liam Black was when he was arrested, and in honor mm -hmm. of uh, the Jackie Robinson movie starring mm -hmm. Harrison Ford. Mm -hmm. I bet someone could do forty-two. I bet. And that's ten. And that's ten more meals from forty that's to forty-two. Is ten more meals. That's truly a lot of me. Look, Lena can also up her own bid to 42, you know? Yeah, that's true. Nothing stopping her. We certainly wouldn't stop her. Yeah. Lena was like, I'm not I'll, throw an, I'll throw an extra two just for those 10 more meals. 10 more meals. Okay, we're going to let's count down from here. George, we'll do this. You ready? At the end of this video, we are out of time. Okay. Looks like we're at 40. That's 40. It was meant to be. This is 40. All right, Lena, congratulations. Uh, send your donation. Remind me in the email that it's yours. And we can uh, go from there. Um, George, how can we get people to donate? Well, what do they want? What do they want? Let's find out what they want. Let's find out what the people okay. want. Yeah. What do you guys want? Yeah, if there's so a lot of people are asking for bumpers. Um, the um, do we have a way of calling up Bryson and seeing if he'll make a bumper? Uh, I don't know. I mean, we might as well try it, right? Yeah, if not, I'll, I'll make a bumper if we if we if someone requests a uh, a bumper of some sort, I'll make a bumper. Do you want to call him? Um, it better if you do it, I feel like. I'm not, no, it's got to come from you. No, better come from you. Otherwise, he'll be insulted. He'll feel like I'm putting too much pressure on him. I don't think so, George. I think he's more likely to say no to me. No, I'll be on the call if you put him on speakerphone. Well, George, okay, but let's make this a stretch goal. All right, we'll call. Let's make yeah. this a, call How Bryson. Much, at, are we at now? We're 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 just barely past the devil's number, aren't we? Yeah, we're we're at like seven hundred or so. 700 or so. You want to say 1500? I wonder, wonder if it means old gin or so. <laughs> I 
1500 right, call Bryson and ask for a bumper. This number hasn't been updated in a second. Yeah, this is the same number you showed me before. Yeah, it's because Dave's Dave's doing that. All right, and um, he, was, he needed to say goodnight to his kids. Yes, yes. Call Bryson and ask for a bumper at 1500. I think we can do that. There's 300 of you watching. If each of you donate, you know, three dollars, we're we're past it. Uh, which would be great. Which would be great. Um, what are some other what are some other goals, George? Okay, well, Ishtar watch along. Do you own Ishtar, George? Uh, I do, but I don't think I have access to it. And here's the thing. I'm not in any position to do any kind of watch along. Uh, it adds That's too true. much time. To, That's true. Uh, we're not going to, this will, you know, we're going to go late, but we're, uh, we have. And we also, uh, we have friends showing up later. So we got to keep it, you know. Yeah. And the thing is, I think the, uh, the, the watch along era of the George Lucas talk show, mm -hmm. I think, I think I'm going to call it. I think it may fully be over. Wow. Um, now, wow. it might come back. Sure. It might come back. For now. For now, but, it's over. But right now, the thought of having to stay up uh, much later watching a thing feels uh, feels terrible in a way that I can't fully communicate. Now, does that include if someone donates the 3000 whatever for an Irishman? Where is that? Well, that's that's on another one. Let me see how much it was for the other one. If, it's if someone on the... donates three two eight zero, if there's a single donation drop of three thousand two hundred and eighty, it's an Irishman. Um, we here's what I'll say: we could always come back and do a uh, live stream where we just yeah, watch. It, the it might not be an immediate Irishman; it might be a pocket yeah. Irishman. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't think anyone's going to donate that tonight. Okay, could happen though. But I, yeah, if someone is willing okay. to donate for the the pocket Irishman, and if they uh, if they donate ten thousand dollars, we'll do it tonight. Uh -huh. Also, a reminder to everyone: five hundred thousand dollars, George gets drunk. Five million dollars, the wrecking crew goes to Malta. And yeah. I'll say this. And this is not a brag, but since moving to Los Angeles, I've seen multiple members of the Wrecking Crew, and I think I could make this happen. Do you always bring up the potential? Uh... I've seen, look, I've seen Weber, I've seen Walsh, I've seen Tobolowski. I think those are three major members of the Wrecking Crew, and, and I think I could make it happen. And have you brought up the topic of going to Malta? I believe Walsh and I, J.D. Walsh and I talked about it, but that's the only one. Yeah. Yeah. So, just, you know. Keep it in mind, it's up there. Five million dollars in one night. Wrecking crew goes to Malta. Mm -hmm. um, what else do people want? As a uh, uh, Lena, yes, send the receipt to the GLTS email. It's on the screen. Forward your receipt to the George Lucas Talk Show at gmail.com. Um, uh, George, what do you think? What do you think about the year in general? We're wrapping up another year. You know. Well, uh, this was, uh, in some ways, a very um, a strange year for everyone, yeah. I think. You know, it's another one of those years, but per particularly for people in our business, or my, you know, I, I'm out of the game, as we said, but it affects me. You know, it's still mm -hmm. seeing that, um, you know, the writers on strike and the, the, the show business is in turmoil. Mm -hmm. Um. The museum has been, you know, soldiering on. We're getting closer day by day. Mm -hmm. um, as far as the George Lucas talk show, you know, we try to think how many shows we did this year. Because um, in oh, some okay. ways it feels like we did. Um, do you have a count of how many shows we did this year? I can probably count. Yeah. Hang on one sec. We did. We did a lot of live shows. Right. We started out the year with Sketchfest, right? Yeah. And then we yeah. did. Um, Shows in London, mm -hmm. and we did shows in New York. Uh, that we we crossed Delancey. We did the two in one night at New York. Would you like me to go through and name them all? Yeah, let's go through. Let's name them and shame them. Okay, and and a lot of these live shows, uh, people don't watch the live shows as much, and I think you should because I think the live shows this year were some of our best live shows ever. I think, I think there's a lot of really good moments in these live shows. Um. 
started the year Sketchfest. Rose Degnan, Gary Witta, really fun show, very silly. And then we did our Oscar show with Rachel Zegler and with Lee Unkrich and Anthony Giacchino. Mm-hmm. And then we did a uh, uh, caveat show in New York with Amy Irving and Michael Urie and Andrew Barth Feldman. We did another caveat show with Richard Kind, Jeff Hiller, and Karen Chi. We did a London show with uh, um, Katie Cartwheel and, and uh, Dave Chapman. We did another London show. Remember the other London show, George? I'll never forget it. We did another London show with Pierre Bohana and Jerome Blake and, oh, baby, what a scorcher, you know? We did our May the 4th with Michael Giacchino, Christina, uh, Christina Ariel, PFT, is, Ben Schwartz, was a, live, a live stream show. Yeah, Manzukas, Sheer, a lot of people in that one. Uh, we did another live stream, Padgett Brewster, Tom Lennon, uh, Natalie Morales, J.D. Amato. Did a live stream with Colin Hanks, Melissa Fumero. Uh, we went to, um, we threw a sandwich in that one. Remember that one? Yeah. Uh, and then we went to Edinburgh. We did shows with Ed Gamble, Aiden Chair, really fun show. Did a show with Larry Owens, Paul Chowdhury. Did a show with Avatar Ash, Sophie Zucker, Matt Goldich. Did a show with Zach Zimmerman, Courtney Peruso, and Bronte Barbe, which was really fun. We did our Bell House show with uh, James Austin Johnson, X Mayo, Zach Cherry. We also did we all did... of the Baron and the Junk Dealer shows, and we did the George Prof shows. So we add yep. those to the mix. Yep. Uh, and then we did the Comic Con show with Max Brooks, Tate Fletcher, Heather Antos. And now and we're here. Three shows this month. So even even not counting the Baron and the Junk Dealer and George Prov, what do we do? Is that like 20 some shows? It was a lot. Yeah. A lot. It was a lot of shows. It was a lot. Here. Um and oh hell yes, Brandon is in the chat. Who oh, yeah, uh, I threw the sandwich to. That was oh, me right. through the sandwich at. It was very good. I bruised my ribs on my car window catching it. Um was it a was it a rib sandwich? No, it was a ham and cheese. Ham and cheese, no ribs. Yeah. And I, and I, it's you know normally we don't list all the shows at the end of the year like that, mm-hmm. but it does. I do feel tired in a way that it makes me feel like we have done a lot of shows this year. Yeah, we did a lot. And. Uh, and maybe maybe the next phase of shows, I'll have a burst of energy. Mm-hmm. Or maybe part of the show going forward is me getting increasingly tired. Sure. And, and and I'm not I'm not saying that's good or bad. Yeah. The part of me feels like I'll never not be tired ever again. I think that's probably more likely. That might be it. That might be it. Mm. I had a thought. What was that? What was my thought that I was going to share? Um about those shows. Oh, was that a little Lauren? No, no. You got a wasn't. little Lorny there at the end. No, surely not. Surely not. Um, but I, I do want to thank because I, I do feel like uh, even though we're part of the reason we wanted to do this charity fundraiser tonight is because been a while the the more recent fundraisers we've done this year have been to help the we did the fundraiser i don't know if that, that wasn't this year but it was at the end of last year to sort of help the the documentary folks uh mm-hmm. finish get to the finish line with their with their project yeah and then we had to sort of be bailed out of a big very big hole in mm-hmm. order to um in order to not be ruined by going to edinburgh so i yeah. hope that being able to do the shows a couple of other places that people who helped out with that will be able to come see them because yeah. uh, we wouldn't have been able to get through it without the Georgie Porgies. It's true. Um, it's true. And we appreciate all of you, you know, oh, but it was a good, it was a different good kind of year. You know, we did a lot of different things that we don't normally get to do. And that was, uh fun and it was uh it was really a uh change of pace for us and we had a good time and i mean i've also been and and i i haven't really talked about this uh we talked about this at, at um some of the shows that you may have seen live streams of you might have seen on mm-hmm. youtube but i think it's the first time talking about it on one of the just strictly live stream to our to mm-hmm. our to our twitch audience yes
Why am I backstage? I've sort of been. You left. You left. I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> my, look, my hands are right here. I didn't do nothing. You. Okay. okay. All right. Go ahead. Let's talk uh, about this. I've sort of been going through something this year, and I haven't wanted to dwell on it because I don't want to bring people down. Um, but it's on my mind, and I can't pretend that it's not. Which is that mm-hmm. I, I have been fighting a legal battle mm-hmm. um, because I found that I. Uh, George Lucas, retired filmmaker, storyteller, mm-hmm. museum founder, um, creator of Star Wars, do not own my own driveway. Yeah, this has been and, tough. And I'm, and I, it's a legal matter. I've taken it to court. And uh, uh, someone asks, oh, "Oh no, is this the driveway?" Yes, this is the driveway. Um, the driveway to my home. Uh, my neighbors died, and they're descendants Mm -hmm. uh discovered that through an error in um zoning i don't know what you want to call it district uh whatever they do the surveying surveying error basically yeah my driveway the the piece of land that i use to drive onto my property and to leave my property apparently belongs to the heirs of my dead neighbor so i decided i would take them to court to reclaim my driveway. I have done repairs and refurbishments to improve the quality of this driveway. Um, So I have invested money into the driveway. And also if they own my driveway, I either need to come, be forced to come to terms with them, but fundamentally I will not have agency over either returning to my home or leaving it. I I, I must choose between being a prisoner of my home or in exile. George, someone in the chat is saying, I'll donate $100 for driving rights on the driveway. I think we can give that, right? Um, in spirit, yes. In practice, since I don't own the driveway, I I can't make any promises. I may... But you could just say it. Just say it. Oh, I can just say it like a story. I can tell you a story. I'm a yeah. storyteller. Yes. Yeah. The, the story I'm telling you is yes. Yes to the 100 for the driving rights on the driveway. But from a legal point of view, the person you should be negotiating with are the heirs of my dead neighbors. Uh, yeah. They are the ones who probably be charging a hundred dollars to go on Uncle George's driveway. That's my nightmare. Is they'll probably be selling tickets, to go on the Star Wars driveway. Yeah. Um, so I think that's a yes, Remy. I think yes. I think we'll give it to you. I, I my hope is that on a, on a karmic level. That hundred dollars goes to the Food Bank of New York. Yeah, and eventually it will find its way towards achieving true justice for yeah. George's driveway. Um, it's it's my it's my way in. It's my way out. I don't know what more I can say about it, mm-hmm. uh, except that we. I guess we found an answer to the uh, age old question in this holiday season. What do you get the man who has everything? Okay. How about his fucking driveway back? How about that? I agree. I agree. How about how about we give Uncle George his fucking driveway back? Yeah. I'd love to just have the peace of mind. There are so many people who have driveways never have to think about what it would be to lose one's driveway. Yeah. Now we I know you probably can't talk about it because this is like an ongoing court battle. Do you feel like you have a good case? Here? I feel like I have a great case, but I, there is always the possibility of a miscarriage of justice. Yeah. There's always the possibility that some renegade judge yeah or or that one juror who just doesn't want to give George's driveway back. If it's a jury mm-hmm. trial, I don't know how it's going to mm-hmm. be. Are you gonna? Are you gonna go like into court? Like, are you gonna take the stand? I need to. Yeah, I'll take the stand. Have you ever taken the stand before? You must have, right? I've been deposed. Uh, yeah. yeah. You know, at a certain level, you're. De- you know, most of the time, you just like the lawyers deal with things, but. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think you're good at it? What? Well, I'm a storyteller. Sure. Okay. So if you okay, here's what. Let's do a little. Let's do a little pretend time because you're a storyteller. A little pretend time. If, 
if you were uh, uh, representing yourself up there and you had to give your closing argument to the jury about this is why I think I need to, you know, keep my driveway, what would you say? Um, I would say that when I was uh, a young man, mm -hmm. nay, a boy, I wanted nothing more than to be a race car driver. I wanted to drive fast. And that dream died on the day that I was uh, pulling out of a driveway and a car that was going way too fast um, uh, collided with my car and um, I almost died. And as a matter of fact, my life was saved by a malfunctioning seatbelt. Um, if the seatbelt had... Uh, performed correctly as it was designed to do, uh, I, I would have died. But uh, I was unconscious for uh, quite a long time. Uh, I awoke days later in the hospital to find that I had um, come close to uh, death. My dreams of being a race car driver um, were uh, dashed. Yeah. So I found other ways to enjoy not necessarily the, the actuality of speed, although I am a fast driver, but I've incorporated speed. If you're familiar with my work at all, I love things with, which go fast spaceships or uh, choo-choo trains or, you know, any kind of vehicle that goes fast. I, I like speed. I like velocity. Um, but I never did achieve that singular dream of becoming a race car driver. Instead, I was just a billionaire, philanthropist, filmmaker, storyteller, um, sometimes actor on occasion, writer, producer, um, founded um, several companies. Uh, I've helped restore old films. Um, but I, I don't, I don't drive in races. What I do drive is in and out of my driveway. I almost had my life taken from me once because of something that shouldn't have happened anywhere near my driveway. I was almost killed. And I feel that same thing is happening on a metaphorical level. It's not one-to-one. -one. My neighbors are the ones who are dead. And their heirs are the ones who are crashing their zoning mistake into my daily life. Every day that I am not the owner of my driveway, I feel like I am being hit by that speeding car again. Not in a real, uh, tangible, physical or medical way, but in a metaphorical way. It feels like I am revisiting that same trauma not as a strong, healthy young man who can survive such repeated trauma, but as a near octogenarian, as I approach the age of 80, as I finish my 80th year on this mortal coil, I find that my daily thoughts are increasingly of my lack of ownership of my driveway and how wrong it feels that anyone but George Lucas should own what is commonly known as George Lucas's driveway. Ask any neighbor who knows that it's me who lives there what they call that driveway, and they would say, well, that's George's driveway. Um, I don't know if there is such a thing as a common law driveway in the same way that there are common law marriages, where the bond is acknowledged despite uh, the fact that uh, there may not be the correct paperwork or or uh, the correct uh, um, forms filled out. But I say to you, this is an injustice, what has happened. And not just an injustice that, like so many, happens and then is over. And then you look to the past and think of what has happened. But an ongoing injustice in that every second that I am not the owner of my own driveway is a second that in which this should not be the case. I can think of nothing 
more simple than to just let me have my driveway, please. Let me have my driveway, please. Now, members of the jury or judge, if it, it's a judge trial, I feel like that'll be easier if it's just one guy. You say, Your Honor, please, please don't take my driveway from me. It's already, I've already experienced so many days in which my driveway is not my own. Don't make me experience another. I know, I know but two things in this life for certain. One is that I am the creator of Star Wars. And the second thing is that I own my own driveway, no matter what the state might say. And when I say the state, I do not mean the sketch team populated by people such as tonight's guest, Michael Ian Black. But I mean you, Your Honor. You are the arm of the state today. Please use that arm to hand me back the rights of ownership to my driveway. I forfeit the rest of my time. That's not worth a donation. I don't know what is. I got something else to auction off. What do you got? This is a limited edition. This is legitimately like something that's like you had to be in the room to get this. This is from Star Wars Celebration. I believe Anaheim from two two years ago. I believe Anaheim is they, as well. Is a, is a beach ball Star Wars Lego Summer Vacation coming to Disney Plus. Is a beach ball for a Star Wars Lego special. They're not making more of those because they're not making more of these because it's no longer coming to Disney Plus. It's, it's there. No. no, had to be in the room for it. Uh, what do we got? Twenty bucks. I see. I see twenty bucks. Twenty bucks is a great collectible. You can actually take this to the beach. Have you inflated it, or has it never been inflated? It's never been inflated. Ooh, this is prime. So. You testify you've never uh, put your mouth on that little I've nozzle. never put my mouth on it. If you want me to blow it up on the stream, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll I think do a lot it. of people are probably going to want to um, want to you to blow on that before they yeah. buy it. That's Sparky. Up the, it's up to the buyer. Sparky has upped themselves to $25. Look, I'll do it if you want. It's up to whoever wins this. Um, I think we can get this to $40. I'm. I gotta tell you, I am. Tempted. Will more people? Hang on. Will more people donate if I blow it up? I tell you what. I'm halfway tempted. What's the bidding at right now? The bidding is at twenty five dollars. I am halfway tempted to put in a little bid because I get somebody who'd love to meet that. Uh, oh no! Oh no! Mickey knife. Oh god! Mickey knife would love. Here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Someone can bid, and I will have to send it to George to meet Mickey Knife. If someone uh, wants to bid more money oh, for me to send this to Mickey Knife. I, I'd love to make a new friend. I'd love to make a new friend. Send it to me. Send it to Mickey. 25 bucks if anyone wants to pop a uh, top $25. Oh, Freudian slip there. If anyone wants to pop $25, 27 for Mickey from Sparky. Once again, upbidding themselves. Whoa, excuse me. Pistol McDaniels, $500. Send it to Mickey Knife. Is that true? Is this real? Pistol, is this real? Not a joke. Pistol says not a joke. Okay. Okay, I pistol. I, it looks like it looks like that that volleyball is gonna make a new friend. Hey, Mickey, what do you think about that? Oh boy, oh boy, hot dog, hot dog. So this will have to happen on the next live stream. Pistol, uh, uh, this balloon will meet Mickey. Um, I if, wow. if it gets to me in time, if it gets to me in time, uh, this can happen on our part two of our life day special. Oh, I guess that's true. Yeah, I and guess that that's and true. that poor audience and that poor audience won't be able to stop it. Okay, okay, we can do that. I think Pistol wins, unless someone else wants to one up Pistol. I think Pistol wins. I doubt anybody out there has enough cheese to get in on this just to save poor old uh, Lego holiday special summer vacation beach ball. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Pistol did it. Pistol Wait, wins. We... All right. All right. Pistol okay. wins. Congratulations, Pistol. Can't believe it. Let's see. Let's see what you else had I got. To be in, you had to be in the room to get one of those. 
Oh, George. <laughs> this is me cleaning out closets, being like, what what GLTS stuff can I get rid of? You ready for this? I'm ready for this. This is from our Studio 60 episode, George. Okay. This is a, a flag from the state of Nevada. Mm-hmm. This hung up behind me in the Studio 60 episode. They right. flagged for the state of Nevada. Which was Nevada a reference born... to the two-parter, right? Yes, when they get arrested in Nevada. If anyone interested, uh, uh, send, in, send in the numbers and we will, we will get going, you know? And That's again, a... look, okay, $25, King Klon. I see $25 from King Klon. Forty dollars one B B B R. Forty dollars one B B B R. That's very exciting for the fifty dollars uh, King Klon. For the fans of Studio Sixty, this is a very exciting, a huge, huge thing. I did not think that this would be the thing that brought in the most money. Well, not it's not more well, than the five hundred. I guess it's not. I guess for it's Mickey not. Knife killing that beach ball. Anyone topping fifty? Does anyone fifty-five dollars? No more cap. $55. Anyone want to go higher than 55? 55. 55. Now's your chance. Look, I'm not saying one BBBR, but this could get to you by the Life Day show if I sent it with this to George. $55. $60 to King Klon. Look at this. This is amazing. Anyone want to go higher than 60 for King Klon? This is riveting TV. Riveting this TV. This is TV. All right, we're going to call this, let's say, 15 more seconds. 14. $65. Anyone want to go higher than $65? 15. 14. 13. 12. 11. 10. 9. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. No more cat, sixty-five dollars. We love it. We love it. Uh. Now let me ask you this. Yeah. Uh just as a little bit of um, for a little bit of uh, content that some people might have seen, but I think might be worth sharing um, because not everybody, sometimes people are surprised by things that get announced on our social media and they're unaware of every development, you know? Yeah. Um, I think uh, Patrick, uh, and we also <laughs> What's happening? We have another guest, George. We have another guest. All right. Well, table what I was about to say for okay. whatever. Great. So we're going to take a break on the uh, the the auctioning off to bring the new guest. Guest, uh, there's a private chat that you can type into on the side. I don't know if you can see it or not. It should be it's on your right-hand side of the screen. If you can't see it, give me a thumbs down, and I'll just I'll move past it. Uh, thumbs up. Great. It. So the right. way that we introduce the way that we introduce our guests on the show is we like to have them write their own introduction in the private chat and then we will read that verbatim. So just write how you want us to introduce you and then we'll bring you in. Because a lot of times people never really get to introduce be introduced the way they wish to be introduced yeah. with a little bit of wish fulfillment. We like to give yeah. the power to the guest for this moment. Yeah. And there's George, almost I'm nothing excited. that there's almost nothing that we won't read i'm excited for this guest george i'm excited to well i'm i'm very excited <laughs> um i'm so yes it does work i see your i see your comment in there um george i'm psyched for how much money that uh that made that was a lot of money right then i'm very excited it's a lot of meals it's a lot of meals yes um we're currently we're over ten thousand meals donated which rules um, I bet we can get to twenty thousand. 
I mean, maybe. Who knows? What do you think? Um, so curious what this introduction is going to be. Well, so far, there's. I don't know if that's the introduction. What's it going to be? I'm so curious. I could just say what's in there now. That could be. It. No, but I don't. I, I think that would be a. a <laughs> right now, I think that would be a misrepresentation. Okay. Great. I'm going to read this exactly yes. like it was typed. Perfect. You ready? Perfect. Yes. Perfect. <laughs> just Kate Walsh, Gray's Umbrella Academy. Emily in Paris. That's good. <laughs> Question mark? <laughs> Question mark. How are you, Kate? All right. I'm really, I'm really well. This is an yeah. honor. I am well, honored to be on. The, the, George the Lucas, honor this is very exciting for me. Well, this is very exciting for me. You know, I, I and once, Patrick. Cre I and once Patrick. created a TV show for ABC that ran for a little while. So I feel like we have the ABC and, and we have the ABC drama um, uh, uh, world in common, you and I. Yeah. What was the show that you created? The, I created a show called the young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Oh, right. I remember it, that. It ran for slightly Seriously. fewer episodes. <laughs> than, than yeah. Phrase or, or private practice. Mm -hmm. Fewer episodes. But I have to tell you very this expensive. Like, I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm going to. Please do. I feel like this is, this is, I do, and I, I'm not exaggerating, probably at least a few times a week I think about you because I live in, in Australia now in, in Perth, but there's the city that's sort of right adjacent to us at the port. It's like the oldest city on the West coast is called Fremantle. And there's a massive, that's where all the shipping ca containers come in and they have the things, those big, things that inspired your creatures in star Wars to take the containers and pick them up. And every time I drive by as if anyone cared in the car and sometimes there's no one in the car, mostly there isn't. I say, those are the things in, you know, the port in outside of San Francisco and Oakland, that that's what inspired George Lucas apparently. That's, right. the, that's correct. Right. And I that say it as if, Hey kids, but there's actually no one in the car. And <laughs> you're um, impressing yourself. I am impressing you're, myself. You're, you're saying it to to be like, oh yeah, wow, that's a good point. Like it that. actually it yeah. actually means more to me that you do it without requiring an audience because it shows me that you're in it <laughs> for the love of it and not it's not about impressing anyone else. Mm -hmm. It's not a need to perform. It's not about yeah. It's just it's you know I often talk to myself out loud, but I think it's a sign of um I don't know age yeah. madness. How is Australia? Australia is good. We're in summer now. So it's a little yeah. disorienting. Yeah, yeah. It's a uh, full summer. We're opposite completely, like, literally six yeah. months opposite. So yeah. How long have you been down there? Now? <sighs> I've been here. I came here literally like right before COVID March, oh, wow. 2020. I got, well, I got here. I left New York city on Thursday, March 12th. Uh, on maybe one of the last planes out. <laughs> Oh my god! And then got here because it takes two days to get. I am in the future. In case you guys yeah. are interested, I'm coming to you from the future. Yeah, yeah I'm in it's Wednesday, Wednesday right? and it's great. We're still here. We're in Wednesday. Yeah, that's the good. sixth. You're that's on the sixth. Good. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, yeah. we're still on the fifth. We're still. On, we're still finishing. Trying to finish the fifth here. I mean, geez, uh, is it hard? hard? Like, when you wake up, are you like, I feel like I missed so much news? Like, does that happen ever? Um. Like you'll just be like, oh yes. my gosh, I missed so many world events because it's the middle of the night here. Yes. Also, even though I am technically in the future, so I should know about it before you guys do. <laughs> I, um, we're in an island nation, and it is very. We're an island nation yeah. at the end of. The world. I'm literally living in the most remote city on the planet, Perth. Are you? If you would have asked me before I came here, and they said, "Do you want to go to Perth?" I would say, "Oh, Perth, Scotland, right? That's a city sure. in Scotland," which sure. is true. But no, this is Perth, Western Australia, Australia. Oh. Are you in front of a mural or are you outdoors? <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is literally wallpaper. It's not wallpaper like the term for digital wallpaper. This is wallpaper right. in my room in the back That's office. Clouds? It's clouds. Yeah, it's clouds. clouds. So it creates the yeah. illusion. And those are pillows. So you're on like a 
are you on a sofa? I'm basically, I'm on cloud nine. This is, yeah, I'm on a couch with a sofa mm-hmm. with pillows and there the, are clouds. The, the sofa, wait, there's more. The, I'm going to show you. There's oh, also, there's oh an air gosh. conditioning unit. Wait, wait, there's oh, disco oh, balls too. Oh, oh, and a, a nice ring. ring that's, my, a nice ring light? that's the ring light to try to help me not look so tired. Yeah. So many yeah. different uh, competing uh, uh, images. There's a uh, lot, a lot going on. We're getting a question in the chat for you from our friend, Anthony okay. Carboni. He wants to know how many spiders are in your shoes every day now that you live in Australia. <laughs> there, you know, that's kind of no joke. It's, we yeah. were just, so I came here for love. My um, guy is here He's and, and he has a farm. He, um, and we were just up there this weekend and we have our little, you know, Blumstone, little, little boots. And there were, we hadn't been up there and it's full summer and there were spider webs all over the boots. He's like, don't put your foot in the boot. Yes, it's clear that, but everything here can kill you. I mean, a friend Mm -hmm. of ours just sat in a WhatsApp chain of like a a snake strangling a giant lizard like that she found in her, you know, garage. So it's, it is a deadly place, (laughs) but it's so beautiful, but it is sort of primeval. It is. So spiders, there's this one, this is like a story I told when I first came here, I was up at the farm and I was FaceTiming my brother in California and in the middle of the night. And I looked under the coffee table and there was a spider, like as big as a tarantula, like that big and, but blonde because it's Australia. So, you Uh know, and they have more fun. A little hot, little blondie, you know? Uh-huh, but uh-huh. I said, oh my God. He said, he's like, wake up, Andrew. This is what he's there for. Go wake him up. It was yeah. like two in the morning. I woke him up like, look, there's a massive spider. He's like, ah, what does it look like? I like, it's like a tarantula, but blonde. He's like, I'm like a little taupe, a kind of taupe. He's <laughs> like, oh, that's, that's the huntsman. Don't worry about it. They're fine. The huntsmans are fine. I'm like, the name is huntsman. Huntsman. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then the next morning, so I just ignored it. It wasn't moving. And then the next morning he's like, stay out of the closet. I'm like, why? He's like, I, I, I'm getting a spider. I'm like, Oh, what kind? He's like, it's a huntsman. And I'm like, so it is dangerous. So everything, oh. he just didn't want to get out of bed. It's sure. yeah. Sure. There's a lot of danger here. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow. George, yeah, George, there's a lot of some spiders. Movies. George shot a couple of movies in Australia. George, yeah. what did you shoot here? What did you sh- shoot part of star Wars? What did you shoot here? Some of the prequels, mm-hmm. prequel stuff, yeah, yeah. In the Absolutely. like, in the where, like, in the middle of the country, like in the high, like, crazy desert. No, I mean, by the or time, was it on sound stages? Most of it on sound stages. We really just moved because it was just e- easier. This is not fashionable to say, certainly at the end of this year, but a lot of it was trying to get away from like guilds and unions. <laughs> Listen. Yeah. If that's the turn you've taken, um, <laughs> I guess I, I mean, I'm going to, we just finished our strike. This is really, I, I know we're going to go there. As a, re- as a retired filmmaker, and as the host of the show, I've been deeply supportive of this year's strikes. Uh-huh. Um, yes. Uh-huh. And I was always a good employer. I just, yeah, yeah. I, I'm a, think of me more like a quirky billionaire. Who's just got a, just got a weird thing about guilds and unions. Uh, <laughs> But but <laughs> you don't want anybody it. telling you when you can and can't create. Yeah, it's I, it's, I, it's just like I'm a generous boss. Yeah, and because of that, there's a part of me that just can't help feeling that it's like, why you gotta make this more difficult for me? I'm being a good boss. Why we gotta do? Why we gotta do a tea break? Okay, I'm gonna leave England because tea there's, break. Tea, there's tea breaks for the crew, and it was driving me nuts. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go to where they don't have tea breaks. They have deadly spiders everywhere, but no tea <laughs> breaks. And sharks. Don't forget about the sharks and crocodiles. Oh. But wait, what about, do you prefer French hours, would you say? Would you like to work straight mm-hmm. through and just like eat as you go? Yeah, I wouldn't mind that. I, I don't want to have to dress up in a suit like Paul Feig, but I'll I'll do French hours, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, who does? Yeah. 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 I, uh... what's, the, what's your ideal call time, Kate? Yeah, you have a favorite call time? Yeah, I'm going to say like 11 a.m. Who's this? Who's this? Oh, oh, wait, who's this? Is that your tail or you have a cat? <laughs> is that another blonde spider? A... <laughs> what is that? <laughs> is... Oh, my gosh. This is Rico. This is one of, I have. <laughs> I just want to see Rico. That's Rico. 
Rico. He's the um, um, one of the cats. We have three cats. They're brothers. Yeah. They were litter. Oh, hold on. I Jim's didn't, I didn't want to assume this at first Jim? it just looked like a tail oh was emerging gosh. from you. <laughs> Jim. Jim. And then, uh, so there's Jim, Rico, and Frank. They also have a small spaghetti and wine dealership. Um, <laughs> no. Do you know what, what movie that line's from? There's a small spaghetti no. and wine dealership in the cinema okay. cinemaplex. That's from Neighbors. Like, like mm. neighbors from 800 years the, ago, Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. Yeah, and John Belushi. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And John yeah. Belushi. yeah. yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. That dates uh, me. Yeah. So. My buddy Steve worked with them uh, on on uh, the movie 1941, which was a little before that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Those were the, that's my time. Because I'm, you know. I'm you like that that around your age, that George? Lampoon, no, yeah, that was that was the good time. Those were like the great the sort of when I was in high school and like, oh my gosh, this is that was when we first started watching Saturday Night Live and yeah, yeah. like this is and you know your movies. You remember Mr. Mm -hmm. Bill? Yes. Oh my God, um, Mr. Bill! That early Saturday Night Live uh, animated <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> yes. where he, is a badly badly made little claymation character and he would get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty funny. Yeah, I recently sold it. I they believe they've merchandised Mr. Bill as like an a pet toy, like a, a chew toy for dogs. Mm -hmm. Oh really? Yeah. Who's pretty making exciting. oh is S did SNL do that or did somebody I don't, I don't know if I don't know if this is a Lauren thing. I don't know if Lauren had to sign off on this. I suspect not. No. Yes, but uh, do you think he's falling on hard he times? He needs to Mr. get some. Bill. He's not. Do you think Lauren doesn't have enough money? He's like, damn it, I need to somehow merchandise gonna, something. Got to bring well, back the Mr. Bill revenue. Mr. Bill, maybe maybe something for a pet or for an animal. Could be could be a could be a good idea. <laughs> Patrick, will you bring up the Mr. Bill uh, pet toys just so we can Chew see them? Toy, yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, Let me the, see. Um, I want to see it. Is exciting. it for cats too, or stuff. just no? Yeah, I think I, I, I don't know if a cat would be interested toy. in Mr. Mr. Bill. <laughs> now, this the thing that I'm seeing, George. It's called a multi pet. A multi. -pet? So maybe cats too. Maybe cats too. So multi. Okay. Yeah. Um. Hang on a sec. Do do do. Uh. He looks very. Uh. He's he's just. I'm gonna bring up all of them so you can see all the Mr. Bill toys. Yeah, so are both wait listen are you gentlemen both in new york oh yeah oh that's actually really yeah i don't even remember mr will being that bright is that well, like a holiday yeah. outfit or no well, like no, the original he, he, mr bill I, yeah i think that's what he looked like but you're right is if it? you mean in the sense of intelligence i do not think mr bill was all that bright <laughs> I don't think I don't think anybody said this guy's got a real head on his shoulders. He he knows yeah. what's what. He's constantly being. Uh, no, it was vibrant. I mean, bright. The primary yes. color. What are you guys? Wait, I haven't even seen this. So forgive me. I'm a yeah, first time okay. guest and viewer. Yeah. So yeah. you've just. What are you wearing? Are you guys wearing? Oh, oh we didn't even talk about that. <laughs> yeah, what are you wearing? Oh, <laughs> yeah, it's like it's also matching. It's Life so, Day. Chris, uh, the, the Christmas holiday season in the Star Wars universe is called Life Day. Okay. And these are, these are officially licensed Disney products for Life Day. So, okay. Uh, that, it's, it, this is our holiday special. That's what we call this. And uh, It looks great. Is it like a giant onesie kind of thing? Or? It's like a robe. It's like a, a hospital gown. It's a robe. It's, it's, it's uh... so it goes, yes. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, hey, look, Patrick's dressed like Mr. Bill. If he takes the uh, the robe off, he's wearing the same outfit as Mr. Bill. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, a totally reasonable question. Uh, thank you for asking. Yeah, uh, I'm in. I'm in. I'm in, in, at Skywalker Ranch right now uh, in mm -hmm. Northern California, and Patrick is in right. uh, Southern California. Do you ever leave the ranch? Do you? Oh, yeah. You've... When we do, when we do shows in New York, uh, mm -hmm. I'll do shows in New York. I went. Uh, we had a lot, of, did a lot of traveling uh, this year. We went to Edinburgh to do the Fringe, and in the middle of the Fringe, I flew back to New York uh, for Bobby De Niro's 80th birthday party. <laughs> one of my friends. You did. Yeah. How yeah. was that? Well, let's. That must uh, have been do incredible. we have some? Patrick, are there some pictures of me at Bobby's uh, birthday I'll, party? I'll, yeah, I'll pull it up. Yeah. Um, you um, had a good time though, George. It seemed like. 
I I was exhausted. I uh, you know it's one of those things. I lost a lot of weight right before I went to his party, and then gained it all back almost immediately. Oh yeah. my god! Yeah. Um, so it's just one of those things where just like uh, it, it's almost embarrassing to see. Uh, uh, the was it? Of the can party. I just ask? Can we just ask the obvious question, George? Yeah. Was it? Did you get on? Did you get on the Ozempic for a bit? I took I you... took some Ozempic by mistake. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was candy. <laughs> now, George, I found a picture I've never seen from this party. And this is a fun. Wait, Frank I just wanna... came. Hold on. Oh, this good. is Frank. Frank. Hey, Frank. Hey, Frank. These yeah. are all orange cats. Yeah, they're brothers. There's a li there was a litter yeah. of them, and I took them. Yeah, I adopted them. Yeah. All now, right. this is an Instagram post from Al Sharpton saying, "Chatting with business mogul Melody Hobson and her hub hubby George Lucas." Of Star Wars at Robert De Niro's 80th birthday. Uh, let, let's okay. zoom in a little. Are we, are we able to zoom in a little on that photo? Yeah, I think we probably can. Yeah, I'd uh, love to zoom. There you go. Oh my God. Yeah, you look tiny. You're getting tiny, George. Yeah. Tiny well, and a little bit tired. You look a little tired, probably because I am you, a little you're, tired. You're, yeah, you're no, in that photo, it was like you looked like I just want, why aren't they giving me food? Yeah. <laughs> You don't look super <laughs> into the conversation, George. I know you look bored. Do you ever, do you look a little bit like, gosh, the sound of her voice sometimes. Oh. <laughs> well, her name is Melody. So you, I guess maybe that sets a, a, a false expectation. Melody does look great. That someone she's, just yeah, chimed in. She's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm just projecting. Sometimes I say yeah. that to my person i'm like do you just get sure. sick of my voice sometimes you get just sick of hearing well and I he mean, says I, no but i know that's I'm not, not true I'm, i got i'm not exactly a songbird you know what i mean this can't <laughs> this can't be the best thing to hear every the, day the dulcet tones yeah um, um are there more pictures of me at the birthday party patrick i'd love to show no, more that. pictures of me at bobby's birthday sure <laughs> Okay. Like I, I, like I was in the middle of, of a 22 show run in yeah. Edinburgh and I flew back to go to this birthday party and then immediately back to Edinburgh. A lot of people yeah. were like, how do you, how do you get around to all these different places all at once? Like, it's not easy. It's not easy. Did you, wait, was it his 80th, eight zero or? Mm -hmm. I believe so. Yeah. I'm about to turn wow. eight next year. Are you? You look yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, here, here's another one. This was on a couch, I believe, at that couch. party. Yeah, that it's one. With oh Coppola, Scorsese, and another man. <laughs> it's like three really tired men. <laughs> <laughs> you George, you least, all look you like up. you're tired from all the movies you made. It looks like you were. Someone said you have to make all the movies <laughs> all together now, and then that's what happened. I mean, that's what I feel like. I feel like I had to make all the movies all together now. <laughs> I know there's more photos of me at the birthday party, Patrick. Yeah, but there's some that are sad, George. So I'm not going to bring I'm not, those I don't up. shy away from a sad photo. Did you do? Did you get crazy at Bobby De Niro's 80th? Uh, or yeah, I actually or I think truly I sad. Did you cry? He just he, cry. George is starting to look a little older, you know. I didn't cry. <laughs> um, yeah. Hold on. I actually have a little something that I snuck out of Bobby D's birthday party. Somebody offered me this and I took it. I'm not supposed to. And actually, you know, we're raising money for the Food Bank of New York. Yeah. Which is fantastic. Uh, yeah. Yay. What are we at right now, Patrick? Uh, yeah, we just right. passed 2,000. We just passed 2,000, which gets us uh, 10,500 meals. Okay. So That's beautiful. Okay. It's great that we That's passed one one three eight, which is my my big number. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and so we're we're just past two thousand. Yeah. Uh, at uh, two 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 two, uh -huh. I will reveal what someone handed me at Bobby De Niro's uh, birthday party. Okay. When we get to two 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 two, that's so yeah. easy, everybody. That's, that's just super easy. that could be right literally. Seconds. A moment away. That could be seconds away. Seconds away. And the reason I've set the goal so quickly, so so close, is that uh, there'll be a second part to this. Mm -hmm. They'll bump it a little higher. And mm -hmm. it's not quite food. It is a little bit like food, but it's more like 
what happens when you're on the party scene and somebody hands you something that maybe is a little bit wicked, maybe a little bit illicit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. And I've held on to it, but I think tonight might be the night where. Uh, oh, what time is it where you are, Kate? We're at ten fifty-five in the morning on Thursday. Ooh, good, in the morning. good morning. Good yeah. morning. This would be where five minutes before my my ultimate call time, like my uh-huh. preferred uh-huh. call time of eleven a.m. Yeah, yeah. 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 They say they say that uh, to be on time, you should be five minutes early. <laughs> right. Right. I've never adhered to that saying, but yes, I think. Have I've, you have you filmed stuff in Australia? I know I've oh. done two plays here. Mm-hmm. And then before I came here in 2020, the only other time I'd been here was like literally 2008 to do press. Mm-hmm. I was in Sydney for a little bit, but yeah. Wow. So I haven't, I've done two plays. Oh, I did a short film in Sydney. Okay. During it was it was approved during our guild's uh, negotiations. But then you've been you've been treading the boards. That's correct. Yes. What were the plays? So what were the plays about? If I if I don't recognize them. Okay. One actually, I did it. It was called um, the other place, and it was a a play that I had done a reading of with for I think it was Broadway.com for during Mm -hmm. COVID to raise money for out of work everyone in the theater. And then we ended up doing it here as a little theater company in Fremantle near the port where your creatures are. And then I did a production of Mary Stewart, wherein I played Elizabeth the queen at the international festival here. They also have, they have an international festival and a fringe festival here annually. It's good. It's big in Perth. In case you want to come down, George, you should consider it. I might. You could be big in Perth. We should do shows in Australia, George. That seems fun. That seems fun. What do you do on the What do you do on the flight when you are flying somewhere from there? Like, what What keeps you busy while you're while you're in the air? Uh, I watched uh, movies, and then I um, did you watch all of the movies? It seems like you could just watch every movie. You could watch all of the movies. No, but I did do this on this last trip because I just got back from New York a week ago. I did a, I used a new app, a jet lag app called Time Shifter, which sounds like it could be a, an episode on your TV series, George, just the name of one episode or perhaps a series Time Shifter on the CW, but it is a jet lag app and it works. So, and it goes by circadian rhythms and it's not that interesting to talk about, but I talk about it all the time. Yeah. I, if I created a show <laughs> called Time Shifter, the main character would be named Jet Lag App. Jet Lag App. <laughs> <laughs> that would be the name of the hero. Jet Lag App. Jet Lag App checking in yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. Huh. That's exciting. I mean, that's uh, when we were coming it's back. It's not that um, exciting. It's but not it exciting, is. but... But it's exciting that something like that exists because what I was going to say was when we were coming back from Edinburgh, that really messed me up going back to LA. Like that's a substantial it's, amount of time difference, you know? Yes. So I can't even imagine what that is, but it's nice to know that something could help me even if I choose not. No, to it work, does. You know, It's really cool. Yeah. It becomes like a fun game and you feel like you're doing something important like training for space, but when actually you just don't want to have jet lag. It's... Sure. But yes, because I went from Australia to LA and I had my I had to do some work and I had my mother's 90th birthday. It was not Bobby De Niro's eight, you know, it wasn't that. Like you weren't there, obviously, George. No, Scorsese like, was not there. It was more like Mickey um, Mouse's Mickey had a 90th birthday recently. There was a Mickey 90. Oh, really? Yeah. Your mom is the same age as Mickey Mouse. No, Mickey's a little older. Oh Mickey's God. a little older. Wow. Mickey 90 was a few years ago. We've uh, but <laughs> okay. But more. I don't like, want to but, offend her. But that's interesting, <laughs> though. Yeah. yeah, but anyway, the the app helped. I was totally, I yeah. was fine. It works on circadian rhythms, guys. Look it up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh wait, hang on one sec. Someone's saying they will donate two hundred and twenty-two dollars for a full screen two-minute <laughs> explanation of the jet lag app. I mean, Kate, Seriously? if you're up for it, if you're up for it, they'll do it. Yeah, time just, me. I'll do it. Talk about, okay, here we go. That's Ready? Pistol McDaniels. Sec. All right, Pistol, Pistol McDaniels. McDaniels. Here's how it works. Let me, let me start the Are clock. we starting One the second. timer? And uh, hang on. Let me get the app up. Here we go. Two minutes. Starts now. 
Okay, so it's called Time Shifter. And all you have to do is you answer a few questions. Like you put in your preferred sleep patterns. Like say, you, I go to bed at 10, get up at 6. Um, which interestingly, it used to be opposite. I, when I was in New York, I was much more of a night owl. Mm. Anyway, uh, and then you put in, if you're, if you're willing to use melatonin um, to help with sleep, you don't have to, P.S., if you don't want to use melatonin, but it tells you, they use the verb use, which I think is very interesting. To, what, what they tell you then, you put in your flights. So for me, it was, it was Perth to whatever, Dubai to Los Angeles to New York. Blah, blah, blah. And then they just calculate very, very quickly when, to, when you should, should start altering your sleep patterns. So about three days before we left Perth. They started, you know, having us go to bed an hour earlier, getting up an hour earlier. And then we were able to use caffeine until noon or 1 p.m. And then uh, it tells you when on the flight to get light, sunlight. And if you're on the flight and it's dark, you have to be willing to be a passenger that will turn on their overhead lights and, and even use screens because it helps. That's part of what helps set reset the circadian rhythm. And then it tells you when to nap and when to stay awake. That's probably the most challenging thing on the flight. Like when we first left on our night flight. Oh, are you still listening, Pistol? Mm. 34 more seconds. Uh, we've got, we had to only, we're only able to nap for two hours. We had to stay awake for five hours and then get to our layover place. Again, expose ourselves to light. Even if it's artificial, screens actually work. And then we were able to sleep. And then it said sleep for 10 hours from Dubai to Los Angeles, in which case we did use uh, melatonin and um, it worked. It worked like a charm. Like, and then it gives you a couple days once you're in your landed place and like within a day or two, you'll be totally transitioned. Wow. There we go. go. Did we get it? Are they going to do the donation? Cause I feel like that was a riveting story. I mean, it's, I mean, George, you have to weigh in here. Cause I mean, I am a storyteller in a sense by trade, but mm -hmm. most people, <laughs> <laughs> this is fascinating. Fascinating. One B B B underscore B B underscore R. Yeah. Yeah. I should get paid to endorse it because we, that's all we talked about on our trip. Like people haven't seen us for a year. Like what's going on? Well, we use time shifter. It's like, we're just two losers, but we, uh, all right, now if we get that $220 and I want to see the goods, George, from like oh, the yeah, first thing because, you said you're going to reveal. Yeah, well, I think we've got that, right? <laughs> Did we Patrick get it? Or... Thanks, Pistol McDaniel. Thank you. Patrick, are you muted? That's that's a great contribution, too. That's like going to feed, I don't know All what $222 right. does, but it feels like a lot of meals. So All right, thank so you. We've, so we've, we've, now I, I can reveal... Uh, the illicit thing that I acquired at Bobby uh, De Niro's 80th birthday. Uh, and this is someone just, I don't want to say who, because I don't want to get somebody in trouble, but I'm uh, famously diabetic. And somebody said, hey, George, it's a party. Um, how about, uh, can we try one of these? Wow. And so it's, oh. it's just nothing but sugar. And I thought, not tonight. I don't want to, I don't want to get out of control. Here at the uh -huh. party, but what, uh, once I know what our total is at, I'll I'll do the whole stick. Sure. I mean, what? right now we're right now we're at twenty three forty, which is eleven thousand. People are really meals. concerned. Your levels, George. <laughs> not, don't worry. I know what I know. My your levels. I know my <laughs> limit. Uh, I think you go. I think you go for it, George. Wait, no, I don't. I, I feel like we want to set a number to really put me over the edge. It could okay. be. Uh, what are we at right now? We're at twenty three forty. Let him go. Twenty three forty. <laughs> two three four zero. Okay, so two three four uh, five because that's a right now. So all we need is five more dollars. Um, <laughs> okay. Five more five. dollars. You're gonna do the pixie stick? Yeah, because I like that two three four five. Yeah, and then I would okay. do the one. Then Makes this looks sense. like the number one. Um, okay. So I have one two three four five, uh, and I'll try Great. to do it in five seconds if I can. Uh, George, we're already there. We're there. Great, great, great. Okay, so. Oh my gosh. Uh, How long before it would really do some damage to you? I mean, we're going to find out, aren't we? You're <laughs> on the famously diabetic all, situation. It's, it's, obviously, <laughs> it's been a few months. I can feel 
it's not fully yeah, loose in here. Here. See this. It's not this isn't like fresh off the factory line. So yeah. see. Jim's so back to see. Oh good. Wait, we can't oh there it goes. Oh my god. Whoa. Jim, this is this is too much. Jim had to turn away. This is crazy. <laughs> this this feels like <laughs> deep COVID lockdown content, <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> this is so weird. <laughs> Happy life day. so much. That's Happy right. life so much. I wasn't expecting Melody. Really well. Where is Melody? <laughs> Melody's like I can't. Melody's like I this is not not Melody my problem. Is, she is checked out of this show. She's like checked this is out. your own thing. Go do I don't it. Think Melody even watches anymore. Yeah. <laughs> now, this is a sign of a desperate man. Look, I'm Gonna slice it down the middle and get the extra. <laughs> this is insane. This is this is a problem. <laughs> this is living. It's what's good what's one. your favorite mm -hmm. kind of candy, Kate? You know what? I used to have those when I was little. And what's I just in the freezer at the farm, which just mm -hmm. sounds already creepy, but I found um, you know those. <sighs> old like those just popsicles that are in the plastic sleeves mm -hmm. that you had and they're mm -hmm. all colors yeah. that are not ever found in nature and then you have to cut or when you were little you would chew it yeah. chew it off to try to get it yeah. and then hopefully someone would help you with with the scissors so i just found one of those and it was pink and i think the flavor mm -hmm. was bubblegum i literally had that yesterday it was disgusting those are great. But super satisfying but you can buy like 500 of those for like 12 dollars that's you can go what's to Costco. So great about it's, it. it's the best. It's the best deal. I think that might you yeah. might have just cracked how they are able to get five meals for a dollar. Just doing the math, <laughs> learning about how. I wonder if the meals are all candy. <laughs> They're all candy. It's popsicles. all candy. Yeah, popsicles. The little. Oh, it was delicious though. Oh. It and they don't ever turn there. That was in that. I don't know how long they've been in the freezer, yeah. but they were. Yeah. It was very satisfying. And you know the kind of thing when you have. There's that plastic, and then you kind of it scratches your throat because you're probably ingesting plastic fibers, but you don't care. <laughs> yeah, so many, so many, so many flavors in the freezer on the farm. Kate, can so we <laughs> finally can we finally get people to like the cute. real the real meat of what people want to hear about? What was it like playing Lana Powers in Club Dead? Oh my God, what the heck? That's funny. Hold on. First of all, Jim was so freaked out by watching you ingest that sugar. Look at really? it. He's oh just, it's almost like he had it. And he's like, That's how I, he feels how I look. He's high <laughs> as. A lot of, holy cow, that's very funny. That's Let's talk about Club Chicago Dead. Madness. Club Dead. Club uh, Dead. An MTV video game? Yes. I'd forgotten about that. There were a I couple things in Chicago. That were amazing. One of them was that, that like the beginning of my career things. Mm -hmm. There was another one where it was like a, a dramatic reenactment of a crime show. Mm -hmm. You know, like like one of those mm -hmm. things, like, an, like a true crime investigative thing where I played a role of somebody looking, a detective looking through a hotel room. Um, but yeah, Club Dead was like a big get. It was a big yeah. win. Long, yeah, with this crazy cartoon was it Characters live action? Because I didn't know about this, and now I'm Googling it, and I'm fascinated You got to Google it. I think, was Nick Offerman in that, too? I think oh, Nick I was in it. There were all these Chicago actors. Mike Gillio, who's more of a rights now. Yeah, but... Nick Offerman. Yeah, we, they were all, it was like, yeah, we got club dead, guys. <laughs> Dig it. Yeah. That's so funny. What was what was the first thing when you were like, like, oh, I'm I'm really doing it. You know, I'm really making it. Even if in retrospect that was not the case, but what was the the thing for you? Well, oh my gosh, so many. There were so many things like this is it. Mm -hmm. Um Okay, well, here's one. Okay, so I went when I first I was in Tucson, Arizona, and I auditioned for the Midwestern Theater Conference at Webster College. And I got two offers. One was like as a snake charmer in Bush Gardens in Florida. I passed, guys. I passed. Right. And the other one was for the Oxford Festival of Southern Theater in Oxford, Mississippi, home of William Faulkner mm -hmm. um, and Ole Miss. 
And so I went there and, and I thought I'd made it because I got into my first summer stock and I was in two out of the three plays. It was great. Yeah. And I moved to Chicago to do a play. The only play Kurt Vonnegut ever wrote. And he came to oh. see it. Yes. Happy birthday, wow. Wanda June. That's correct. Yeah. And um, yeah, I played Penelope. Wow. And because um, Vonnegut lived in Indiana, so he came over. It was a very exciting moment. So that those were these little I've made it. But mm -hmm. then when I got my equity card in Chicago, I'm like, I've made it. Then, you know, or when, also when I first moved there, because I had <laughs> I had some money saved and I thought, all right, that's it. I'm going to make my living. I'm going to do theater. I'm going to make my living doing commercials mm -hmm. in Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that was my idea. And I uh, and then I, I ran out of money after three months and was I started uh, I became a barista at Starbucks. And this is when Starbucks first opened on Oak and Rush in Chicago. This was in the day like where you could get stock and health insurance. If you lasted 90 days, you had full medical and dental. And I yeah. lasted like 88 days. And I was like, oh. I quit. <laughs> if you had that stock now, though, just thinking about Can you imagine? how much the stock would have been now. Wow. Had I been a little less lazy, um, yeah. but I was just like, I can't do it. I was just jacked yeah. up on caffeine. It was too much. It was. So you yeah. had that feeling, you were in Chicago and you had that feeling like, things were really going to work out. And then you, the, that came crashing down sort of in Chicago. Yeah. I served coffee. And yeah. then again, I got my equity card. That was great. And then I moved to New York and there was sort of that mass exodus, which mm -hmm. that's when ASCAT first came, or when Upright Citizens Brigade first came there. I came there in yeah. August of 95 with like Adam McKay and Tom Giannis and Dave Keckner and they people who were hired there to write for SNL. And then like six months later, five months later, Amy and Matt and Matt and Ian came out and we were literally, mm -hmm. we would news, we had paper telephone poles for them for UCB. Like just, yeah. and so there was all these people that had sort of descended. And then Andy Richter was already there with, with Sarah. So there were all these Chicago people and we all were coming up together, like working, like waitressing, working, waitressing, working. And so it was a very, romantic time but every time i got a job i'd be like see ya i used to waitress at cafe luxembourg in new york and i would be like bye <laughs> and then i'd come back and ask for some beg for shifts I'm like hey guys can yeah. i get some so there are many but then i think probably the big thing was uh getting on drew carey because that was then i That's didn't have to Tap after Look, every, that. everyone in the chat is asking about this. They said you do a musical, uh, a musical number in a fridge at one point, and they really love that. Yeah, so she, that was a, a big one. Number in a giant fridge. Yeah. Oh, it was so fun because Drew loved to dance, so we would do all these dance numbers. It was just that was iconic. I mean, that was a massive yeah. show at the time. This is before yeah. the internet, kids. Right. Um, it was so wonderful. Yeah, it's a show it that great. I wish was streaming. It's like really hard to find that show and it's a bummer because I feel like it, it would do well on streaming. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I think you're right. So that was a big win for me. Yeah. And then, you know, then Grey's and Adam, but then they were like, Oh my God, yeah. I got a movie with Will Ferrell. That's a big one. Sure. And then, sure. you know, these little things that were so cool. Yeah. Um, right. And everyone's seen wake up Ron Burgundy. Yeah. Yeah, I I love Wake Up Ron Burgundy. It's it's back here. It's like right. Yeah, I have not seen Wake Up Ron. I have not seen there. Wake Up Ron Burgundy. Oh, it's good. Go go fetch it, Patrick. Show it for real. Go fetch it. I'll go media. fetch it. Well, it's in, in an it's in an Anchorman case, so you're not gonna be able to see it. But well, you can open up the case. Okay. All right. Look at this. There you go. Both DVDs. It's on one of these. Wow. It's on disc two. It is on this one right here. It all exists right there. Now, Crazy. let me ask you, because I, I've, you know, I've created a lot of, uh, you know, I, I've mostly been on the, the storyteller side. I've, I've only occasionally have I dabbled in acting. And I, in, in most cases, I tend to be pretty, um, pretty straightforward in terms of my approach. Uh, I don't do right. a lot of research. Mm -hmm. uh, the... I tend to draw on my own life experience. I played a man uh, who was visiting an amusement park in Beverly Hills Cop 3. Mm -hmm. 
and okay. uh, a police Powerful. officer a police officer cuts in line he's doing police work but i don't fully understand what's going on all i know is that i waited in line to get on this ride mm-hmm. and right. i kind of take issue with the fact that the the rules are not being observed uh right. before this you know and and i i sort of i remember looking at the script and thinking you know i was doing it as a favor um just a little cameo uh, but I thought I don't really feel like I need to do a lot of research in order to understand who this guy is, where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. Uh, what is your approach as an actor? Do you do you do a lot of do you do a, a lot of research, or do you in, intuit a lot from the uh, your own experiences, or or a mix of things? Well, wait. Let me ask you this, George. When sure. you were looking at that, when you actually shot it, then. Yeah. What did you draw from? From did you draw from your own life experience of being irritated, waiting in line, and having someone take cuts and not really knowing what's going on, and but you sense that it was something official? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There. There, yeah. there you are, George. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'd been humiliated before. There, I'd been through experiences where I felt like I was being disrespected, and I yeah. felt like yeah. I could sort of take those and port them over. Uh, it had been a while since I'd had to really wait in a line in any any uh, major way because people tend to be like, George, come on in. Um, right. But I still remember what it felt like. I think it's something, it's very relatable experience. You're in line, someone else yeah. sort of jumps the line and you feel, uh, well, this is not uh, the way it should be. And I'm, and I'm going to speak up. I'm going to say something. And uh, the character has just one line. He says, hey. And, um, and I thought, you know what I'm going to do? Uh, it's just the one word. I'm not going to make a meal of it. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm just short, staccato, almost like the words fail to come. Uh, and see how yeah. much I can pack into this moment. Hey, hey, just almost like a, almost like a, a waterfowl. Hey, right. hey. Right. How uh, how do you remember who 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 directed you? Did, did the director have you do? Was it like a Michael Mann situation where you had to do it like sixty takes? Or no, it was, was my friend it? John Landis who uh, people had died making okay. a movie. He 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 had irresponsibly killed several people making a movie. So I was glad we didn't do a lot of takes because I didn't want to die making a movie. No one wants to. I mean, it's not that. No, I, the uh-huh. people that he killed making the Twilight Zone movie I didn't certainly didn't want it, but. <laughs> I thought, you know what? It's a fun movie. It's been a decade. What the heck? Um, uh, he was acquitted. <laughs> I mean, maybe it'll be fun. Maybe it'll be. And again, in hindsight. You know what? Like, Everybody needs a second chance. Well, mm-hmm. I actually don't even believe that. I actually think he's back. <laughs> no. well, maybe this is too many chances. I just said that to try to I know. move away from I, the I awkwardness of the to, murder. Of, uh, he was I accused of. Trying to, I appreciate you trying to help out, uh, and 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 he, he's been a pal uh, over the years. I do think when I look back, maybe not the most fun cameo to do uh, mm-hmm. in hindsight. Um, yeah, but you know, it also you know <laughs> uh, maybe there didn't. I, I look forward to. I know they're coming out with the fourth Beverly Hills Cop movie. I mm-hmm. don't know if I'm waiting to see if I get the call. I don't think they're bringing my character back, which I'm fine with. I sort of feel like. Um, maybe it's time to in that world to move on from my character and tell other stories. Like I've had my moment in the Beverly Hills cop world. Sure. And I think everything that happened, uh, um, but, but to answer your question, no, not a lot of takes for which I was grateful because the last thing that I would have wanted to do is to do so many takes that something goes wrong and I perish while filming it. Exactly. Get in and get out. Yeah, he's a murderer. Um, it, <laughs> this is, um, yeah, but get back to answering the question. Yes, I don't think I don't do. It depends on what the role is, but no, I don't do mm-hmm. a lot of research generally. I don't. Mm-hmm. So, is that bad? Is that bad? I don't. But I feel so. like <laughs> I do. I'm going to say this is going to sound really cheap. No, I feel like I'm very. I don't know. I use prop props. Props are my friend. I don't really, I can't really act. I love so, props. I love costumes. Let me ask you this because you played a doctor yeah. for a long time. That's true. If someone comes to you and they're like, 
I'm having a medical problem right now. Can you help? Is there, do you feel better equipped to help now than before? The same equipped I, or less? Equipped? I don't, I feel the same <laughs> equipped, but I probably have the confidence to answer that in a, in a way as if I'm more knowledgeable than I actually am. Like what mm -hmm. are your symptoms? What are you, what are you experiencing? And um, I do think absolutely in a pinch, I could deliver a baby. Great. on a plane. I feel like you guys probably could too. I feel like sure. you could assist yeah. me. I feel like we could do it. I mean, unless there was some really gnarly, which is a medical term, um, pre-existing condition. Yeah. You yeah. Know, like I mean, diabetes. on that, on that Australia flight, the woman could get impregnated and have the baby in the time that it takes to get back here. Yeah, that's right. You know, that's correct. Oh, yeah. oh, actually, on two of the flights that I took, because these are long flights, yeah, um, mm -hmm. there were medical instant, there were medical problems. Like one, yeah, on when we landed in, uh, was it in yeah, in Perth, we had to wait because some there was a medical situation, uh -huh. and then oh, this is. Do terrible. you ever get? Was, have you have you ever yeah. been around a? Is there a doctor in the house situation where people sort of turn to you? No one turns to me, but I've heard on the plane, is there a doctor on the plane? Yeah. yeah. And nobody I'm gives like, you a little bit like you're close. No one, not that they haven't said anything. <laughs> I mean, maybe the person, whatever, I'm like, like drink, having a, you know, but. Yeah. yeah. What's some, can you throw some medical jargon at me? Uh, some Bilateral little... oophorectomy. Bilateral oophorectomy. Bilateral this is nothing you'll ever have to experience, George or Patrick. Yeah. It's, um, if you have both. Uh, size of your ovaries taken out. Okay. Right. Are you are you good at remembering right. that stuff? Right. Like, is that easy? Does no, that there's come just easy certain you? things like that, like bilateral. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just yeah. a strange. No, there's like a little piece of my brain somewhere that just computes it, and then right. usually just yeah. dumps. Yeah. How many you, times? I recently. Go ahead, George. How many times did you have to say preeclampsia? Pre so many times preeclamptic. Pre All right, preeclamptic, preeclamptic, preeclamptic. We get have it. a reel of just that. Do you guys yeah. have that? Is this a Christmas? I, surprise? I, don't, I, would, surprise? I wish we. I, I wish, wish we had a super cut of it. A life we, day surprise. It will be. It will be. If we could ask the Georgie Porges if someone wants to put together a, a super cut of of medical terms, that would be delightful. Yeah. It'd be so uh, good. Did Did you have a trick? Like I, I just heard a story. I don't know if this is true, but this is a story I heard. Oh, wow. This is a new segment on the show where Patrick what? says something that he doesn't know uh, if it's true. This is unverified. But I heard that George Clooney always used to carry around the clipboard on ER because he would have his lines on the clipboard. So he yeah. would be like pretending to write stuff down because it'd be right in front of him. Yeah. Did you guys yeah. do tricks like that or, or was it? Yes. You just all the yeah. time. I would have folders and clipboards pretend to be looking and look okay. official. And, uh -huh. and then that's also the school of kind of ER and medical sure. acting where you're so, you don't have to make eye contact because you're so mm -hmm. arrogant and professional <laughs> and, so, mm -hmm. you know, good at your job. You're such an expert. But also, we used to famously in the surgery scenes when they're in the close up. Justin Chambers, who played Dr. Alex Karev, he would tape sides like to our scrub, like across from us and just yeah. tape them until we kind of wised up and we realized we could do a, a lot of those lines, the really medical, medical and ADR because we had masks on. So oh, sure. uh, we'll, get that, we'll get it in would, post. Would you ever say placeholder words? Just like we got to order a Google to gobble on this guy. Yes. In fact, they would sometimes put that like they'll give you the term when we we're closer to shooting because they didn't even have it. Oh, <laughs> oh interesting. Uh, well, wow. to make it medically accurate. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You yeah. Know, like recently, you've been coming back a lot on Grey's Anatomy. You're in six, five, I did. six. It's like a pretty I good amount. Almost episodes. 10 episodes. Yeah, what is Did that? Because like? it, no, it says I went back. Five Did this it? most recent season, three the season before that, so eight. Okay, that's eight in total. For if my yeah. math is, if, uh, yeah. if our maths line up. What is um, that like? Yeah, it was like, ten years. Ten years in between. No, and I had taken off. They had asked me to come back, and then I figured, ah, uh, why not go home and sort mm -hmm. of visit? And then for the first 
season where I did three, there was a storyline there. And then I, they, we, Krista Vernoff was running the show then she's not anymore, but mm -hmm. she talked about coming back for a bigger arc. And we discussed uh, a whole women's health storyline and I was like, let's do that. So yeah. and it felt like a way I, we could make, that's one of the things I did love about, um, Grays and private practice and Shonda and all the writers writing as they really did make kind of it. She was a great storyteller. And as you can, I'm sure identify George having a great social impact. I mean, it's metaphor and big, big story, you know, mm -hmm. it's not just a medical show. It's not just, you know, yours isn't just a space show. Like no. I'm thinking we're, we're talking know. about, we're talking about the way that systems work. We're talking about the way that yeah. society uh, can, uh, fall prey to to fascism uh, mm -hmm. in in uh, in the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. We were teaching about history, so we're using adventure as a way of like learning about the ways that uh, uh, things have happened in the world and using them as sort of using like the uh, you know adventurous archaeologist as a uh, you know and having action adventure as a way of sort of exp exploring the way that that uh, that um, different cultures uh function and the way that uh, different historical figures have uh uh made their mark on the world yeah sometimes yeah. You can, a good storytelling can be uh, a way to you sort of like uh it's like a spoonful of sugar so you know make me make people eat their vegetables by uh sort of mixing them in with that's something right. fun that's right i concur and Ch and Chanda had a really sneaky great way of bringing in social issues and mm -hmm. yeah it's cool. It's great. I feel like I, I feel like the, the, great, which is why I'm not writing those shows or films. It's cool. It's great. <laughs> I feel I feel like they've missed the mark. There should be whole Grey's Anatomy like action figure play sets. You know, like where I feel like there's a, yeah. a lot of there should be a lot more merch. Are you in the video game? No. Is there a video game? There is a video game. Yeah, yeah. Well, what There's no way. I am. 2000, I don't know. 2009. About it. 2009. So you probably run prior practice no. at that point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh my gosh, that's funny. Generally unfavorable reviews for the video game. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, says okay, hold there. on. You guys, we only have a yeah. few more minutes left. Where yeah. are we? How much money have we got? How much money have we raised? At uh we're at 2386 i'd love to get to 3000 i don't know if we're gonna but i'd love to get to 3000 what can we do can we to get, get to 3000 3, in three minutes right. <laughs> how many people are how many people are tuning in Here's are there any there. questions there's there's 250 260 people tuning in kate what is something else that you like that you can talk about for three minutes on end because that got money that got a lot of money <laughs> i mean what are you obsessed cats? with? What are things cats? You want to talk about cats for three minutes? That'll get money. I mean, I don't know if anybody can stand that. I think that time shifter might be more interesting, but uh, we can't go back to time shifter. No, we can, can we? never go back to time shifter. No, never. They're, um, they're all saying we love cats. <laughs> we love. Adamant. We love cats. You we love cats. All right. Cats. Do you think Catsy. you could get all three cats in the frame at once? Well, <laughs> hold on. One of them's out stalking Frank. Um, there's one that's we're gonna start a cat TikTok account because I have that's three of them and they're just ridiculously cute. That's uh Rico currently bathing. Right. Uh Jim is still passed out from the pixie sticks. He's still like, This is too much. Mm -hmm. Um, I love cats. My parents, I was raised by cats, not wolves, but yeah. So I'm super into them. My partner is acquiesced, he's he's agreed to have three cats and um Actually, I don't know what else to say about cats. Okay, oh my God, I got I gotta keep talking about cats. All right. I love cats. a ginger cat. Gingers are like dogs and cat suits. Oh, look it. Um, Frank just came back in. He's like, You want me in the screen? Um, you guys are about seven months old. And um, hold on, somebody's trying to call me. It's probably you heard about <laughs> the cat stuff. Things off. These cats, yeah, they're they're asking, bring Danny the, this one. They're brothers. They were from this place called Cat Haven, which is a shelter here in Perth. And they're seven, yeah, they're seven months old, like seven and a half. So they're teenagers. We just put up a fake Christmas tree because it's summer here. And um they're we're gonna see if they tear it down. 
We're starting a TikTok account for them. They largely bathe, play, um, then sleep. They're super cute. Um, and they do laps, but we have so much video footage uh, that I'm excited. Yeah, we have, I'll have, if you just follow, go on Instagram for a minute. Well, okay. then I'll, po I'll post my TikTok account because we're in the process of setting that up. And uh, they're the best. People, I, mean, I, was, I don't know. My parents used to go to Mexico. They're like, see, and they'd leave a cat. I was like, got it. I'm 11. Some people call that abuse, not me. And <laughs> would you take care of the cat or would the cat take care of you? Ding dong. Okay, George. Ding dong. Yeah, Ding dong. it was definitely a symbiotic relationship. Do yeah. the cats like the cloud wallpaper or do they? Do you think they notice it? I don't know if they, I don't think they notice it, to be honest with you. don't care you. about it? No, I will tell you though, you know those those faux fur blankets, those throws. Oh, look at mm -hmm. theirs. Yeah, there's the three of them. Oh, yeah. it's not even the, I didn't even, I'm so bad. I didn't even put a filter to lighten them up because the lighting's not great. <laughs> but they're, um, yeah, they're amazing. But they don't like faux fur. It's almost like they sense, they're like, that's this is some kind of sick joke. Yeah. Right? It's like two home they're not into it they won't touch they, any of those blankets uh -uh. they want the real stuff you got to get the real stuff. no because they, they're, <laughs> they're hunters they don't want to it feels like stolen valor or something they want yeah. they want to yeah exactly. real kill. Like, yeah they feel maybe like they're being mocked um mm -hmm. so yeah that's it Did yeah. i get to i don't think i got to three minutes of cat talking You're, but people i don't know if that really inspired any contributions do you know what do you know what the tiktok is going to be called is it set up can people go follow it well i thought it was going to be called katie's cats because my that was a silly but i think we're coming up with a different name but it was because my nickname as a kid my katie cat was like my nickname yeah uh, play on kitty cats. Cats. i know cute but we're gonna we're, we'll find something already they they have many names there you go like it's do we get it? I'm <laughs> still talking. Still, yeah. no, no, hold on. Okay. I got 30 seconds of bonus. Um, so this is an interesting story, George. Um, the, when I got him at the shelter, uh, Jim was named uh, Fred. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to name him Kenny. Mm -hmm. So we had to call him. But he only knew his name is Fred. So we we're like, Fred sure. Kenny was his name. But then as he grew, he was very clear he's a Jim. Right. So now he's Jim Fred right. Kenny, which is also JFK. So Great. powerful. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then Rico's just Rico. Sometimes we call him Ricky Bobby, but it's really just Rico. And then Frank was Gus, but then we made him Frank because he's the biggest eater. And yeah. he... What does he like to eat? He just eats all the food all the time. Kibble and his canned food. Um, but he sits usually, this is like the, mo he usually sits like a person and he has a very, he's got a bit large midsection. So we called him Frank as in Frank the tank. So now he's Frank Gus. Mm -hmm. So they have long names, almost like they're little, uh, Catholics or something, little Spanish yeah. cat. They have a lot of names. That's right. all they, I got. Do they respond to their names? Like, do they come when you? Yeah, they them? do. Yeah. yeah. Especially Jim and Rico really respond, but, uh, Frank's a little more like I I'm not going to really, yeah, but the yeah. otherwise, and Jim plays fetch. So, all right. That's nice. Did you know that Fred mm -hmm. Kenny was the uh, judge advocate general for the United States Coast Guard? No. I, Are I'm you kidding you me? Need, if you need to name him after someone, it could be Frederick, uh, Frederick J. Just Kenny. Just say right now, Bath, look at, they were just doing, look at like, him. can you see Bath? Bath yeah. Yeah. What's the Coast Guard do? Have you do? heard the Hang expression clean as a cat? Have you heard the expression clean as a cat? Heard that. They're clean. Yeah. That's all they yeah. do. They bathe. So yeah. the, no nice. one's commenting. They all went to sleep. Did your audience abandon you? Because I went, oh my God, is that Fred Kenny? This is Frederick Joseph Kenny Jr. So. Oh my God. <laughs> I love oh. it. We're here. Okay, good. I like, read. Please I read. It says he is currently the director of legal and external affairs at the International Maritime Organization. I read it as he is currently the director of legal and extramarital affairs at the International Maritime <laughs> Organization. Wow. I was like, wow. what a job. What a job. <laughs> if there are so many extramarital affairs in maritime that they had to get someone to co like coordinate and they need legal. Yeah. yeah, this is chaos. Somebody's like, in charge of this. Like, if, we got to fly Fred over to, 
We can't prevent Let's it. We acknowledge that it's happening. It is Let's get organized. organized fashion. Yes. Let's oh, get our ducks so in a row with Fred um, Kenny, Fred Joseph I Kenny. He's the man to do it. The king. The king. Um, thank you for um, coming on, Kate. Wait, I still have it. Did you already? Did Ricky already come on? And and Michael Ian Black. Did well, they... Michael Ian Black came on earlier. Here's what happened with Ricky, Kate. In my email to Ricky, in the subject line, it said two dash five instead of twelve dash five. So Ricky so she thought, thought the it was, show was in February. See in February. Yeah, Patrick. I Patrick up. booked I her for up. a show that will never happen on, on that day. <laughs> I messed so up. Here's a fun fact about Ricky. Ricky yeah. Linholm and I were did theater workshops to plays together at the Actors Gang before she was like oh, wow. working. As, yeah, That's she's cool. a is extraordinary yeah she's really yeah there you go that's yeah, it she's the best, she's the best. yeah um but well, and you're the best um, so thank you we appreciate you waking up early and hopping on and have and happy life day to you thank you happy life day to you wait where are you at financially where do we get to with the donations we're at, i don't uh, need to pressure your audience but i just want to know we're at like 2500 2500 okay we still got time. Where's we're well, when we get, when we get to three thousand? We'll think of you. Yeah. We just okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks. That was your thanks wish. so much. That was your wish. Okay. So we'll. It, thank it you. is my wish. I'd love yeah. for you to get to three thousand. Okay. We love it. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks you for like for Come back again. Cats. We love you. All right. See ya. Bye. 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 Cool. Okay. She's so cool. Huh? What was I about to say? Oh, you were talking about something. I was talking about something. And now I can't remember what it was. I got something else to auction off. What was it? This is going to drive me crazy because I was really gearing into something. Mm -hmm. um, how did I get Kate on? Kate uh, did ask that a couple years ago. So we met that way. Oh. She's great. Um, George, can I auction something off? This is yes, related to something we were talking about. Try to remember what something we were talking about earlier. And this one is kind of annoying because it's actually I'm gonna have to get a box for this. Oh, so it's this I, is gonna cause you some amount of hardship to actually send this yeah, off. It's gonna be a little bit of a pain. Yeah. Uh I'm I'm I got I got a Funko. And I want to pass this along to someone here. This is a Funko, Funko that I don't I don't know how many they made. I don't know anything about it. Is a Jim Henson holding Ernie Funko, and that's a that's a Target exclusive, right? The Target exclusive. Uh, I don't know if anyone is interested in this, but if anyone uh, would like to bid on it, happy to send it to you. Jim Henson, oh, 30 bucks. Sparky, the one, two, seven, eight, nine. At thirty dollars. Fifty dollars. One B B B R. Sixty-five dollars. Smart overcoat. Jim Henson and Ernie. $69. Sparky12789. Uh look, keep it going up. Um I had something to say that was rather involved. And I wish I could remember the run-up to it, the preamble yeah. to it. Yeah. Because because uh what was it? It's going to drive me nuts if I can't remember it. Can anyone figure this out? What George was talking about? Mm. Can anyone go back and clip somehow and figure it out? I don't know if that's possible. I don't know. Maybe if I scroll back in the chat, I can see what people were talking about right before. Oh, geez. Good luck. No, I can't. Um, Not everyone maybe. sees everything you put on social media. That's what Potato Molasses is saying. Oh, I know what it was. That's it. Whoa! That's it. Yeah. If I was going to suggest, I'll, I'll bring it up after uh, after we're done auctioning off this Funko. Okay. Let's give this uh, 15 more seconds, George? No, let's give it 42 more seconds. Okay. Do you want to count down? Um... Yeah, let's count down from. So we'll start with forty-two, in honor of the arrest of Michael Ian Black, and uh, in honor of Jackie Robinson, and in honor of the movie in which Harrison Ford um, 
was one of the actors. Uh, the, mm-hmm. the movie is called 42, and the movie was about Jackie Robinson. So we'll start mm-hmm. at 42, then we'll, ca- we'll, we'll drop down to 41, which is the number just immediately below 42. And then from 41, we're going to go down to 40, uh, as in this is 40, as in the Judd Apatow sort of sequel to Knocked Up, starring mm-hmm. uh, Paul Rudd and uh, of, of Ant-Man Quadrophobia fame. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and, and as soon as we're done counting down from 40, guess where we're going next? That's right. We're in the 30s. The upper 30s, true, but 39, that's the number we're going to count down to next. Number 39. And of course, I think you know where I'm going with this. Uh, Sparky upped their own bid to 69, 69. When we're done with 39, we're going to go down just one slot down to 38. 38, we think it's 30 great. Uh, when we're done with that, we're going to keep going. And I'm sure you're spotting the pattern. We are decreasing one number at a time. We're down to 37. We're in heaven. It's 37. We're going to go down a little bit lower. We're going to go down to, to 30, 36, as in 36 pixie sticks. Uh, you know, I was just looking for where my pixie stick went. And then uh, uh, 35, 34, 33, 32, 31, 30. Um, look, at, look at how fast it went. You know, we thought we were going at a rather deliberate pace, really taking our time, making a meal of it. But then all of a sudden the numbers sped up. And before you know it, how did we get from 42 to 30? Well, I just don't even know how it even began to happen, but it did. Here we are. And and, and wouldn't you know it, we're not going to linger much longer in the 30s. We can't stay 30 forever. We're 29. That's right. We're dipping down. 29, it's 20. Fine, if you ask me. Quite a number. Almost 30, but not quite. And then we're going to drop down just a little bit more down to the, the great old number of 28. 28, 28. That's right. The number is so nice. I said it twice. Uh, and we'll have 27, 26, 25, There's, there's not a lot of movement, so hurry up. 3, 22, 21, 20. 20 is plenty, and now the countdown is over. That's right. We skipped from 20 <laughs> to ending the countdown. We didn't even bother. The countdown is over. We'll be accepting no more bids. If a bid comes in now, we will not accept it, even though it would mean depriving the Food Bank of New York. You can put in a bid now. We won't accept it. This is chaos. Uh, um, okay, great. 6969 Sparky's uh, email. If, you know, send the donation, then forward the email receipt to us. Hey, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey. I think it's time to maybe sell off your little friend. Okay. Let's do it. I'm... Okay, so I only have one new friend. And also, happy birthday to Missy Information. Uh, Missy. Happy birthday. Missy Information. Um, okay, so this is my, my one and only new friend. Dave's hot. Dave's mic is hot. Maybe I, don't, maybe I should stop screaming. <laughs> Ten dollars. <for, laughs> all right, so this is um, Sebulba. <laughs> painted like Boba Fett. That's the Boba Fett. That's all I got right now. Things are. George, running. look at the Boba Fett. Look, I, I got the Boba I Fett. That's really great. All right. I mean, we're at thirty dollars already. Uh, I see fifty dollars. Ooh wee. Uh, I mean, he's great. Boba Fett. He's great. That is a real collector's item. That's a real work of art. One of a kind. I think we can um, at least get him to a hundred dollars, at least sixty nine dollars. I say. oh ninety nine dollars. Remy the bub, almost one hundred. This is this is a Jersey Dave original that we're we're seeing the bidding yeah. for. This is the first mm-hmm. uh, figure I ever painted. So that's a whole new world. Oh it's wow, a whole new world. A world right. now. Of what did you figures? Yes, you painted the his jacket. Is that what the paint was? Yeah, well, well, if we want to get into how the sausage is made, yes, let's I got see how the sausage is made. So I got this little helmet uh-huh. and this jetpack. Uh-huh. These were both Django Fett, so they were oh. all the wrong color. Um, so Silver I had to paint for that. I just got a, a free uh, Django Fett with like removable helmet and backpack or uh, jetpack. So Django Unchained. And then I painted Sebulba. He is just mm-hmm. like all brown. Um, 
based on let's see if I have my other guy here. Dave, what's all this cat hair, buddy? Oh, this yeah, no. This is my my downstairs. Yeah, talk about a catty comment from Patrick Cotnar. <laughs> No, yeah, oh, that's a good ja good jacket though. Oh, the gym, yeah, this is what I used to for Jim Henson. Jim Henson company. Um, yeah, so the cat owns this whole downstairs now. I barely go down here, uh, and so everything that stays down here, including the sweatshirt, gets covered in hair. And it's you know, you know, Dave, I, I know that you have a very fun house. A lot of fun things going out around. Mm -hmm. uh, I've heard of a merry-go-round, but a barely go down. <laughs> Yeah. Did you cut? Did you cut open his helmet? How did you do that? Yeah, I cut open his helmet. Okay. Because it's. I mean, I, that was that was all. That was a full. Uh, yeah. But this guy. I, I think mean, we Kibola, we can get this to two hundred. Yeah, we can get this to two hundred. We're at one sixty nine. Who wants to up it? Oh, or uh, or. If you want a bid on this to also be sent to Mickey Knife, we can also do that if that will up the bid. And and bear in mind, even if you're thinking of yourself, you're thinking, I don't need a I don't need this. Uh, think about the people in your life who mm -hmm. for whom this would be a wonderful holiday gift. Uh Hanukkah, anyone here can think of at least ten people that would want this. Uh, secular Christmas is soon. Just this this is a gift that you cannot buy in stores if you were gonna try to make it yourself. Uh, it would it'd be very difficult. It would also be, I think, kind of expensive to gather you know, multiple action figures and then to craft it. Because that's what you're really paying for here is the Jersey Dave craftsmanship. Also, getting the figures is expensive. This is an expensive hobby that I have. It's just dumb. Well, but think of all the meals that people are going to get off of this. That is true. It would be more expensive if we just said the number of meals that you're getting for people. If we just said you, Jersey Dave, you have to cook a hundred meals. <laughs> like, what are we up to on this right now? One sixty-nine, I think. Right? How much? Much Daniel says ten dollars for Dave to go through his little doors again. Done. One sixty-nine is what we're at. Done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what's that times five? Uh, Eight hundred forty-five well. meals. Imagine if we said to you, Jersey Dave, you got to pay for and make. 845 meals. You'd be like, it'd be easier. What if I said, make a... hey, could I make one to Boba Fett instead? Yeah, that's the easier way. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, Jersey Dave takes the easy way out. It <laughs> works smarter, not harder. <laughs> <laughs> this is how I make 845 meals. I make myself a Boba Fett. <laughs> Give me a little bit of paint. Uh, are we are we here at 169? Is that what we're thinking? It's feeling like we are. Do we need to do a countdown from 42? I mean, if you really want to, George. I don't want to. It was horrible. I don't want that uh, to be then, my life. Let's do it from 21, then. That's half of it. 21? More like yeah. 20 fun. I love to count down. Uh, and now here we are at 20. Some would say that's plenty. That's where we ended the countdown last time, but this time we're going to go down into the teens. Number 19. Number 19. That's right. 19. Uh, and then below 19, it's 18. You're in the army now. That's right. You can be uh, in the army once you're 18 years old. Uh, 17, then 16, and then 15. And now we're almost down to 14, but we're not there yet. No, we're not there. We're still on 15. We're heading to 14. We're halfway there, but we can't really count it like we're at 14. We're still at 15 until we get all the way to 14, which we are at now. And now 13. Ooh, that's bad luck. So let's hurry on down to 12. Then we have 11, number 10. And now we are in the 10 last numbers of the countdown. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. And we ended the countdown on 2. That's right. Another little surprise. No 1 and no 0 in this countdown. The auction is over. Blog, 169. We love it. We Two love is it. the lowest number now. Someone said um, that we should, people should send me, uh, they later said send, uh, figures. And I think that that's a great idea. If you got extra figures that you're just laying around and you, you have nothing to do with it, let me turn it into something dumber than what it yeah. currently yeah. is. Reach, yeah. reach out to Dave on social or reach out to us on social and we can connect you. Absolutely. I would love your old figures. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah. Uh, great. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Uh, now, one thing, uh, and Patrick, do you, are we uh, good, do you think, for me to talk about the thing I was going to talk I about? I believe so. Yeah, I think so. A kind of exciting development that some of you may or may not uh, have been following on social media is that uh, as we close in on a decade, because uh, we're heading towards our 10th anniversary of the George Lucas Talk Show, and a lot of times people... Um, will say, hey, what's this show? What, explain it. Explain what this show is. And sometimes what we'll say is, uh, well, it's a talk show, and it's uh, hosted by George Lucas. And that usually does the trick. But it doesn't really convey the breadth and the depth of what the show is comedically and uh, even emotionally. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, recently, we... Uh, were given a gift, essentially, a pre-Life Day, or I guess it was part of the Life Day season, uh, the gift of a perfect description of what we are and it is what we are going to call ourselves going forward. And we've changed in our socials, if you've noticed, our description to incorporate this new name for what the George Lucas Talk Show is. And some of you will be aware of this already. Some of you... Uh, We'll be learning of this right now for the first time. Um, we are a variety spoof show. Do we want to watch the video? Yeah, let's watch the first of the two videos. I think this audio will play. Let me know if it does not. We'll see. I guess me. Who did I Zoom call during the Academy Awards? This was before you knew me. Before you knew me, so it definitely wasn't me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Aw, I wish. You didn't have, I was going to say your dog, but you don't, you don't have a dog have at that point. I didn't have Lenny yet, my little precious boy. Um, um, you, I mean, you're is... very, you have a lovely family who you're very close I with. I do, yeah. Um, it was maybe your lovely mom and dad. I love that guess, and honestly, like, no. I would be, <laughs> you I, wish I, I'm a shitty daughter, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't. Um, I have friends. Yes. <laughs> who, have a, who have a variety spoof show called the george lucas talk show oh, oh I thought about and that. there yeah, is yeah. a running gag on it we had this joke that i was always if i went to the academy awards i was going to call in so you and i called in the, nice. the george lucas talk like show. live on the podcast live on their show oh, yeah. so i got it wrong which means you get points so like look at that cool. all right so we have that uh, yeah a, vari a variety spoof show and we're friends and now that's been confirmed that's uh -huh. vanity fair approved uh content yeah, uh, and of course we want to plug. Uh, if you haven't already gone to see the Hunger Games prequel, the the uh, uh, Legend of Songbirds and Snakes, uh, uh, ballad, ballad, ballad songbirds that's right, ballad yeah. because there's songs in it, um, and it's it good. Is, it's, it's really good. good. It's good, and Rachel's really great fun. in it. Yeah, and, and it's Josh already is made. Great in it too. Other it's already made down. hundreds of millions of dollars. It's a hit yeah. in an yeah. era when it's hard to get people to come to the theater, uh, but. Um, I, I predict uh, if you'll if you go see it in a theater, it'll be more fun. Yeah, it'll be more fun, and it's going to be in theaters all through the holidays because it's doing so well. So it's a great time to um, go support our friend Rachel uh, mm -hmm. in her new smash hit movie, The Hunger Games: The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And of yeah. course, after you just witnessed that little bit of interview, uh, one of the our beloved Georgie Porgies, I made a little suggestion on social media. I said. I was reading because they had the transcript of the text. I said, someone should set these words to music. And then uh, uh, Edie Fake Name on uh, social media sent mm -hmm. me this music and I made a little video. So here we go. This is, I guess, me. Who did I Zoom call during the Academy Awards? Um, I have friends. Yes. <laughs> Who have I'm a. Glad. I have friends. Yes, I'm glad. Who have a variety spoof show called the George Lucas Talk Show. Oh, oh, I've heard about that, yeah, yeah. And there is a running gag on it. 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 Running gag on it. We had this joke. That if I went to the Academy Awards, I was gonna call in. So you called in, and I called in, so you called in. 
to the George Lucas Talk Show, like live on the podcast, live on their show, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fun. I have friends, guess I'm glad. Who have a variety spoof show called the George Lucas Talk Show? <laughs> it's, it's, it, uh, you know, and and Patrick, as you pointed out, uh, to her credit, she would not let it stand uh, that we are uh, uh, a podcast. She, yeah. On their show, live on their show, yeah, yeah, we are famously the world's world, the world's worst podcast. Mm-hmm. This is a review given to us on social media, uh, and it's true because even judging by the most basic metric of whether or not we are available on any podcast app, the answer is no. Number of podcast apps on which we are available, zero, which I think by default at least puts us among the world's worst podcasts. What's that? We don't, have a, we don't have a breaking news bumper. I thought we did. I don't why, think we why, do. What did you just play, Patrick? Pump, pump the brakes pump, on bumpers? Pump the brakes on bumpers. Because A, you have to call Bryson. Okay. And B, some breaking news. The members did approve the SAG after contract. Okay, I'm going to make a bumper for that. You're going to do it or Bryson's going to do it? I mean, I feel like it'd be quicker if I just make a bumper, right? Should I, I call so. Bryson? Yeah, call Bryson. See what he's up to. All right. <laughs> All right, and the bumper will be for the, the SAG deal. Yeah. Do we think he'll pick up? Hold on, let's see. It went right to voicemail. I think it's going to be <laughs> easier if I... And it just, just immediately went to voicemail. Okay. Um, uh, I'm going to need you to carry the show for a minute while I see if I can... How quickly I can make a bumper. Um, okay, that's fine. I mean, here's the thing. We had a donation earlier that someone wanted right. uh, uh, for Dave to climb through his doors again and fall mm-hmm. through. Uh, that yep. money did go through... So we're just going to let Dave do this. Okay. Um, hold on. I'm going to... George, watch the screen. <laughs> oh, no, worse. <sighs> Thank you for your donation. Dave, I have a question. Yeah. And this is, a more, this is a more dangerous one, I think. But I want to see if you're even open to it. I mean, I feel like it's a yes already. Over near that window on the left side of your screen. up, Yeah, that's a staircase. This is a staircase to go to the rest of my house. How much would people need to donate for you to fall down the staircase? I could, I could, I could get hurt. Well, just give a number so we can put it on the stretch goal. Mm, like a single donation or like where where do we need to get to? I think the where we need to get to. I mean, I want to make it so that it's attainable. <laughs> I mean, I'm a, why why do it if it's not if if it's no, not I get good. it. I get it. Um, what time is it? It's 8 I mean, no, no, it's 11 p.m. You could say 3250 or 3500. Okay, let's do 3,500. Yeah, let's do 3,500. Okay, yeah. Do we, we call it... Okay, I think we call it Dave Dave goes up to the stairs, Dave goes down the stairs. And we just... You just see just the just the end of the fall. It's not yeah. many stairs. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I'm in. Okay, great. I knew you would be. It was just a matter of asking, you know? All you got to do is ask. Yeah. Uh I'll throw it downstairs. Um, 
Now people are saying they don't want to donate because of that. Right. Oh. Right. Should we say you will only won't do it if we get to that number by the end of the night? Otherwise, you're doing it? Down these stairs. Unless you all intervene. Yeah. Uh, no one ever asked for this. <laughs> yep, that's true. Uh-huh. How much did not fall down the set? I think same amount. So okay. So do we want to say that you? If we do not reach that number by the end of the night, you will fall down the stairs. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I'm, whatever. Gets the money flowing. I'm still gonna call it. Dave goes up the stairs. Dave goes down the stairs. Okay. Um. This does feel illegal. I, I'm fine with that. It's for a good cause. So. It's for a great it's cause. For a great cause. Yeah. I do want to remind everyone George is currently making a bumper. Uh, uh, because, why is this happening? Yep, yeah, we hit this point in the stretch goal. Um, 3,000, a visit from an old friend. And it's life day, and I feel like we want to see that. So we'll get there. We'll get there before the end of the night. But if we don't get to 3,500, Davy, baby. You falling down those stairs. They're carpeted. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be it's gonna be okay. Unless it's not okay, and then I get really hurt and you guys should all donate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. either way. Next next month's fundraiser will be for Dave's medical pills. <laughs> I will not get hurt. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. Um uh, should we auction maybe one more thing off, do you think? What do we think? I have another shirt. Should we do another shirt? I do have this still. I don't know where it is. Okay. Oh. All right, I'm going to auction another shirt while we're doing this. Uh, Dave, can you make me larger? Larger than life. This is from uh, our Detroit show. This is another Bring the Noise shirt. This is Motor City Presents the Boonty Eve Classic. Now this is pod racing. I believe I only wore this at our Detroit show. So this has only been worn once, but I'd like to get a couple bucks for it. I think this is a good one. I think it's a cool one. Um, who's interested? Who's interested? Let's start at 20 bucks. Who wants to do 20 bucks? George, how long do you think this bumper will take? I think I'll just take a couple more minutes. Okay. It'll be worth it. $20, $20 CBC Night Out. $35 Smart Overcoat. This is great. It's a medium. All of these shirts are mediums. I do not. Uh, $40 1B BBR. This is great. Yes, this is true. The show uh, the show where GLTS was gift, given an official day by the city, and then later on, uh, the city was passing some laws that were not great and now <laughs> now we took it away Wait, should we take it away we should take it away from them maybe uh 40 bucks one bbbr um if anyone else wants to do that otherwise we will end it in about a minute um i'm gonna mute myself for do what you gotta do i guess i'm just gonna talk to myself right now because here's the thing Dave left too, you know? He's not even back there. So now it's just me. Um, we're at $40 for the shirt. Does anyone have any questions? I'll I'll answer questions about the old friend. I won't tell you who they are, but I will answer questions about the old friend. We are getting close. Um, we're getting close to him. We're about $200 away from our old friend. I'd love to show it in the next couple of minutes. It would make my life a lot easier if we showed it in the next couple of minutes. Um, we don't know. Yeah, we're about two hundred dollars away. How old are they? Great question. I would put them. Uh, late thirties, early forties is what I would say. Um, did the old friend appear in Arliss? No. Is it the second guest? No. Can we see some of those Christmas tree ornaments? Sure, for a price. 
you know? All right, let's end this shirt. So we are at $40, one BBBR going once, going twice. Okay, sold, one BBBR. Donate and uh, send us your address and then we'll go there. <laughs> George, we have another guest here. Oh, no. Okay. I'm working on something. You want a bumper or no? No, I do. I do. I'll bring the guest on. We'll see. Uh... Okay. No, wait. I'll do the bumper after this guest. Yeah, this is but great. This doesn't count as time I was working on the bumper. That's okay? fine. That's fine. Uh, to our guest that's backstage, uh, we always, on our live stream shows, have people write their own introduction for how we introduce them. It can be whatever you want it to be. We will read it and we will bring you on. How's the bumper coming? It's good. I mean, the bumper was going to be great, but now it's going to look like I spent an hour working on it when really I was sure. about to be done with it, you know? Sure. Sure. You know? I know. And, and that's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. I'm so curious what this intro is going to be. Because here's what I'll say. This guest is technically an old friend that is returning, but it is not the old friend that was mentioned in the fundraiser. Keep that in mind, everyone. Because in a couple, uh, in like 200 more dollars, another old guest is going to come back, which is fun. An old friend. All right. I just finished the bumper. I'm going to Dropbox it, and then we'll play it after this segment is done. Okay. Okay. Great. All right. Great. I'll send it to you, the Dropbox link. Great. I'm still waiting on this intro. Well, and that's the thing is, the intros are ready when they're ready. They're not and they are a freaking out than they need to be. Okay. I see okay. the terror in their eyes while they're typing. Okay. Here oh, we my go. goodness. Uh, welcoming Eden Share, phenomenal actress and all around good, great person who could do many things. Thank you. I that know. was the most stressful thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I gave birth to twins. <laughs> well, now you have material for your next show. It will be all yes, about writing that intro. Yes, I do. Hello, what are you guys wearing? Why are you wearing this? Oh, it's uh, Happy Life Day. Today's it's Life, Life Day, Day, which is the Star Wars winter oh, holiday. Of course. I've seen that movie. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Well, that's, these are our robes. These are our official Disney license. It's, it's a, a, it's a Wookiee. It's a Wookie holiday. We celebrate a day no, of I, peace, a day of harmony. Mm -hmm. That is this. It's the strangest movie I've ever seen in my entire life. Good, good. I'm very. I'm I should have. Yeah, I'm. It's it's some of your best work. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate now, it. Now, Eden, you were on one of our friend shows. Yes. I was. You were on I was our honored. first Fringe show. Honored. I was. You had a good time at Fringe? Oh, fantastic. And a fantastic time on that show. That really set the stage for my entire Fringe experience. It was a good, it was a good show. And and your yeah. show was great. We really loved you. I see you're touring now. Tell people where you can they can go see your show. Oh, yes. That is I didn't know if I, okay. So here's the thing about my I wasn't even, yeah. I wasn't sure if I should like plug my stuff yeah. already or if I should do um, it. Okay, well, yes, I am going on tour all through 2024. It actually technically, uh -huh. I did some soft launch. I did like a show in LA and I did a little show in Portland. But starting in January, um, I'm going to go all over the US and you can find tickets at EdenShareLive.com. Mm -hmm. Just my name, E-D-E-N-S-H-E-R-L-I-V-E. -E. Maybe it's Eden Share Live. who knows. But EdenShareLive.com. All the tickets are there, all the cities um, I'm going to be in Seattle January 14th and in LA January 6th. I should have started there. Ooh. Yeah. That's insane. No, Where sometimes you, you have to tell the story in a different order than the events occurred. <laughs> that is, that is one of the main pieces of wisdom that you've learned from me. It is. <laughs> that is exactly, you are the person that I learned that from. I yeah. wouldn't have told it in that way were I not in the I'm proud of you, here. Eden. I'm proud of you. Thank you so much, Georgie. Eden, what's your poster behind you? I don't know. It's my husband's. It's oh, is it is it something you did, George? I don't, I don't know. Bond. Moonraker. James Bond. That's that James Bond. Bond. There's also pff, I, pff, there's also an Emmy behind me. It's not mine. Oh. oh, can we see it? Of course. Are you kidding? Yeah. 
see that Emmy. <laughs> it's just always casually behind me. And sometimes people notice and I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's right. You <laughs> see the Emmy in my house. <laughs> mm -hmm. Season four. Season four of the middle was a good year for Eden. Yeah. No, it's a it's for fucking robot chicken. My husband writes on things. Eden, you're gonna lose your damn mind. <gasps> oh <laughs> <laughs> right there. Oh my right god. There. There you go. Um, um, this is heavy. I'm gonna put this back. That's okay. But Eden, when you were on, and if people haven't watched this, this episode, they should. It's a good one. It's you and Ed Gamble came on. Yeah. We talked about something. We talked about one of your friends. Yes. Can my... we can we give a brief uh, recap of this? Yes. Um. So my friend Rachel Keller, um, uh, is a a person in the arts in the field mm -hmm. field, and she had previously. Honestly, I think maybe she's the one she, she, she could tell it better than me, but mm -hmm. she applied for a job or was like being scouted for a job mm -hmm. at your uh, museum. Yeah. Right. George. And then I think she got snubbed or maybe she was like, this is shady. I don't want to do this anymore. And backed out. I, I would love to hear her side of it because this is, that's it. That's it. That's the one. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. We could do that. Yeah. <laughs> Kelly! Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, and so we called her. We called her during the show, and yes. she was so confused. <laughs> I was so confused, but I know I was leaving work, and I saw a call from Eden, and she doesn't, mm -hmm. you know, we text all the time, like all day, every day, but I don't get calls mm -hmm. from her very often, so I got a call, and I'm like, oh my god, the girls, something's bad, something bad has happened, so I pick, <laughs> you know, I just assume the worst. But right. I pick it up and she's like, I'm with the one and only George Lucas. And I'm like, well, let me tell you, I have a George Lucas yeah. story. So it really worked out. That's great. <laughs> yeah. So what did happen, Keller? Tell okay, me. so this was years ago, but, and it was before the museum even opened. So it hasn't opened yet. It hasn't opened yet. It hasn't opened yet. That's <laughs> correct. Yeah. Probably because I'm not working there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so I, I think like it was it was for a job in the like education department. Yeah. And I went in for a lovely interview and I'm sure it was a very competitive a lot of people position. coming in for that department. Yeah. Um so I went for an interview, it was very lovely. Everyone was super nice. I saw like a mm -hmm. little model of the building. It hadn't been built yet, so that was fun. And we've, but, yeah, we've mostly built it now. We've mostly built it now. We're basically done. Oh, great. Yeah, mostly. right by USC, which you've also mm -hmm. contributed quite a bit to financially yeah <laughs> yeah did you yeah. go there sorry wait did you george did you go there or did you yeah. just contribute there yeah oh you also went okay okay yeah oh i yeah. see yeah and you know my uh i have another connection to you george lucas which is that oh. my stepdad what he's a film editor and he worked on as an assistant editor he worked on a new hope ah. so, you probably never met him. He was too small or, time for you. He was was he he probably would have worked with my wife at the time, Marsha. She was the main she was the editor on that. So he probably worked with, with Marsha. Wow. Wait, was, that's was this, this, yeah. this was in the seventies, Rachel? Is, yeah, in yeah. the seventies. Yeah. It was like wow. what it was an early job for him. And then he went on to edit for like Gary Marshall and yeah, he's like extremely successful, you guys. Like you you started cool. something, George. You gave him a start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. But yeah. but yeah. but let but you you came in to interview. I didn't. I wasn't part of the hiring process. On this. no but, no, you weren't. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and you so, you felt like the interview was going well. I thought it was going really well. Yeah. What kind of I things thought, were they asking? Mm -hmm. oh, it was a while ago, but uh, you know, like what kind of ideas I had for educational mm -hmm. programming and mm -hmm. my background. But so yeah, standard tell us boilerplate interview questions. Now, listen, George and I were not in that interview. So what did you say? Oh, well, if I, I mean, this was literally in maybe 2018, but I what, probably said. What would you have said? Yeah. So I have to do the interview over again, basically. So, George, hang on. Eden and I are going to pop off for a second. Yeah. George and Rachel, we're just going to let you guys talk. Yeah. All right. So, so what did you, what did you say? Okay. Um, I think I probably said something like, you know, we definitely want to create public programming that reflects 
the ethos of the collection, but also engages the community and mm -hmm. engages the uh, neighborhood where uh, the museum is located. That's good. And, you know, worked across, did multidisciplinary style programming, which is very, you know, mm -hmm. hot right now in the museum world. I don't know if you're right. aware. <laughs> I, oh, I am. Believe me. Yeah, yeah. I got to stay aware of that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let me, I'm, I'm going to ask you, is it okay if we sort of, I'll give you like, as if this is like a follow-up interview? <laughs> sure. Okay. Um, so uh, do you have any specific ideas in terms of like, what's something that you would pitch as an educational, uh, like an outreach program or something, something to get people in the, in the neighborhood involved in the museum? Mm. I think I think because of the proximity to USC, I would probably and the facilities, of course, you know, you have the screening rooms and you have the sound stages. So I would probably pitch like some sort of mentorship program where like students from USC in film could come and work with young people, maybe high school students in the neighborhood at the museum and like use objects in the collection to, um, I don't know, make their own films or do some storyboard work or something like that. So it's like a mentorship program mixed That's with good. activating the artwork in the collection, something like that. Let me ask you this. What do you think of this? Uh, is that Norman Rockwell? Very good. <laughs> Very good. This is a book I wrote with my buddy, Steve. Wow. Because we both love, we both collect Norman Rockwell. You got that in one. You got that in one. So you know your stuff. You know, I got the master's. I'm in a lot of debt. So I got to put it to good use. <laughs> what do you think? Of, would you like Norman Rockwell? I think he serves a purpose, you know? That's interesting. What a, what a, what a tactful answer. Well, I don't know if I would have like a Norman Rockwell piece in my home, but I think he's super important for the history of American art and narrative art, of course. So you and I don't think you would have one in your home because Steve and I have all of them. That's true. That's true. I don't think you'd I could to, afford. You have to pry them out of our our collection. Yeah, I don't think I could afford Norman Rockwell. Who's, what's a what's a piece? What's a what's an example of a piece that you would uh, like if that might be if you wanted to if I was like surprise me recommend like a a piece of narrative art. Uh, oh. is there an artist okay. or a, yeah so this might be like old news but judith baca um is a really famous um uh, chicano muralist um mm -hmm. from la i think she's from la i don't know exactly where but um yeah. there are a lot of really wonderful murals by judith baca um throughout la there's one in the valley kind of near valley college um that tells the whole story of kind of the the history of the united states mm -hmm. really really long it's like all along the LA river in the valley. Yeah. Um, she's one to check out. She has a, I oh, think yeah? she has uh, some that, Hold on. Is that this uh, Judith Baca? Uh, that's her. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> headline. Look at that headline. You're, yeah. Uh -huh. Lucas Museum acquires. Uh, yeah. Judith Baca is the history of California. So this is, this is great because you were not aware of that because you haven't been following the museum thing. So you, this is, you are right in tune with where the museum is. That was not yeah. a planted bit. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, I may, might've read the, that headline years ago. I don't think so. I don't sell yourself short. I think okay. that was classic parallel thinking, meaning that you are in the pocket. Wow. So I guess you all should rethink your hiring decisions and maybe I can, I can uh, have a are second. You, do time. you have a job right now? I, I do. I do have a job right now. Okay. But I can be bought. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's interesting because I have a lot of money. Um, <laughs> the the do you think if the if the Lucas Museum uh, came back to you and said, "Look, we messed up. Please, <laughs> please reconsider," would you be open? Would you be open to it? I'm not saying I can make this happen. I I might be open to it. Listen, right. cutting edge facilities. We have so many shared connections already. I mean, it seems like a no-brainer. What's something that you might screen? Do you have a favorite? Do you have a favorite, uh, uh, like a film that you think would be uh, um, uh, instructional or inspirational uh, in a museum setting? Uh, like a work that that might pair well with a, a particular kind of exhibit or something? Oh my gosh! I think yeah, it, I'm putting it, you on the spot here. <laughs> I'm like really bad. I'm not like a movie person. Like I'm not. This is like I don't need you. I don't need you to be a movie person. I'm the movie person. Like we don't yeah, need. Like we've got George. We don't need another movie person. You know what I mean? Hmm. I might do. I mean, I'm in like a Todd Haynes phase. Right? I just watched um, May December. May so December. Maybe what did you think of it? 
loved. Loved. Yeah. There's a video you should check out of Todd Haynes talking about uh, the mirror shots in that film. Oh my God. I wanted to pause. Mm -hmm. I watched it at home, so I wanted to pause because I was like, this is a moment, but I'll, I'll yeah. have to uh ch check out that uh look up there's a video of todd hayes talking about uh specifically the mirror shots and there's that great shot with the um when the she's trying on the wedding dresses yeah and, she's and like, how they yeah, film that sandwich. they film that from behind a two-way mirror so that you don't mm -hmm. see the camera so they can film the multiple mirrors from the angles and then about the various shots where characters are uh looking at the mirror but they're actually looking at the camera mm. and we're seeing like the mirror point of view of them that's awesome. Yeah, that's a very, it's a very, that's a very impressive choice uh, of, of, I asked you to throw out a film title and not only is it current, but I think it is a film that, uh, um, I think it is the type of film that I could imagine an exhibit of paintings that have, because, oh, what's the, what is the name of that famous old painting? I'm going to blank on it. Maybe you'll know or someone in the chat. Well, it's, it's a very old painting where there's the the mirror in the background of the painting and the yeah. it's so detailed the reflections yeah uh, even though it's, it's very small. um albrecht Durr is the artist I yeah believe. um and it's it's a marriage it's a marriage scene so it's yes. a, a newlywed husband and wife holding hands yeah yes uh so mirrors in storytelling in narrative art i think that would be an interesting thing and, yes. and that you pair that and talk about the way that uh, art is in its own way. Like when we look at a, a, when we look at some art, we sort of see the world reflected back. But the use of mirrors within art is sort of like a, it's sort of doubling back on itself in a way that's very interesting from a storytelling perspective. Totally. See, I wouldn't have even made that connection, but I think that's that's beautiful. I mean, I I um, I find this very invigorated. Talk with someone who. Uh, um, Clearly, this would have been. I think the thing is, it's just it's hard when you're staffing up these museums because <laughs> by the time you get to the point where you're actually in contention for it, it's just so highly competitive. And there's so many times when it's a coin toss, you know, where it, yeah. we could go one way or another. So, absolutely. Uh, well, you know, actually, someone corrected me in the chat. It's actually uh, by Van Eyck. So, Van Eyck. to all my art history heads, if I well, <laughs> no, you know, I I make mistakes as well. Hmm. Uh, I and, can't imagine uh, that, but <laughs> no, I do. I've had to correct so many of my Star Wars movies because I made so many fuck ups. In them. I have heard about that. Yeah, I. Yeah. Uh, my husband talks about that all the time. <laughs> well, you know, like you know, uh, some artists will go into the museums and touch up their paintings or like fix things. You ever heard of artists doing that? I in my last, I used to work at a gallery, and we had artists and artists do that in the last show, actually. And were they allowed to do that or would they have to sneak in and do it? We allowed it, yeah. <laughs> but some museums would probably be like, don't do that, right? Yeah, I mean, it probably depends. Time's like, up, time's up. Yeah. That's the painting. You don't get to yeah, come in here you're done. and do a it's special control. edition of your painting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I think artists should be allowed to fix their paintings. <laughs> Why not? I mean, <laughs> that's a good interview, George. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. At, at, <laughs> Had had I been the one conducting the interview, who knows what might have happened? I think. She, oh, sorry, Keller. What do you think? You think you, you like you said yes? Would you would you take the job right now? You know what? Um, it, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It depends on the salary. <laughs> what about your current job? Don't you like? How would they feel? Well, I just actually just started a new job two days ago, so I don't think it would be right if I left so soon. Right. Or now's the perfect time. Right, they don't care about me yet. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> what would the what would the hang on, wait, George? What would the the rate have to be, Rachel, for you to leave right now? Because I think George has got money. George has got money. I know. I mean, I think I would probably pitch like a salary that was like a tech company salary, not yeah. like an art world salary, just to see yeah. what would happen. You know, right. like what's the number? Like in the like the four hundred k range. <laughs> All right. Okay, but right. I don't want. to... I don't want a, a repeat of that whole Van Eyck debacle. I know. Oh my God. I know. I'll get it. I'll get it. Like, I don't mind that at a, a museum wage, but <laughs> if we're gonna pay you, if we're gonna pay you the tech salary, that can't mm -hmm. happen again. Okay, of course. Rachel, what makes a good docent at a museum? 
Yeah. What makes a good docent? That's a great question. Because we have some people who, uh, uh, Rob Hubel has said he'll be a docent. Richard Kind has said he'll be a docent. Uh, uh, some other people did too. But those, but those, definitely those, Rob those are the big two. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's doesn't amazing. have any pencils. Yeah. Um, I was a docent at the Broad Museum, which um, I did that during grad school for a couple of years. And um, you have to be really good at like, gauging people's like people start to kind of like zone out mm -hmm. you and you have to be really good at like knowing when to kind of spice it up um sure. you know gotta read read the crowd a bit um you have to have a good i think it's less about like the information you're giving and more about how you're delivering it mm -hmm. um so i like i don't know i feel like i've given eden eden tours of museums before. i was about to say can i give a very quick anecdote just a quick yeah. quick anecdote about yeah. the most one of the most just confusing and frustrating i couldn't believe how frustrated i <laughs> i couldn't believe how frustrated mm -hmm. i got about this okay so keller was talking about rachel keller sorry rachel was talking about um like this new uh way of uh looking at art and how she was like explore or she was being taught this new way of showing art to people like as a docent and so we were at I don't, not the bro, we're at like LACMA or something. And we're with just like yeah. a group of friends. Yeah. And do you remember this? Do you remember this I color? Do. I, you I do now. Here's what you do. And honestly, we started walking around and we stopped at each painting. And the truth is a crowd started to grow sort of because she was really, she seemed like a real docent. Wait, that's what docent is, right? The person that shows mm -hmm. you around. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So she's like, we're looking at paintings and she's like, this is what you do. Um, so with the thing of, uh, m you know, that mirror painting, say, you go, you go, you look at it and you go, so what do you see? And you say, I see a mirror and you go, that's great. And you reflect it back to her or you reflect it back to the people. And she's like, that's great. There's a mirror over there and the mirror is above the whatever, the yellow thing. Interesting. What else do you see? <laughs> I see a man getting married. Like, oh, great. What do you think that means? And mm -hmm. then we meet whatever. What else do you see? What else do you see? What else do you see? Sure. And we just talk for like, and like, we talk for like 10 minutes. And then at the end of it, she just went, okay, next painting. <laughs> I was like, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. What does it actually mean? And she was like, no, that's the whole thing. We just talk about it. And I was like, that's not a strategy. <laughs> what? Maybe so it's a typical laziness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it's, that's true. There's a, there's a really well-known um, art education strategy. It's called visual thinking strategies. And it's like a series of, it's a Socratic inquiry. So it's a series of questions. It's only three questions and they're very specifically worded. And you engage the, uh, the visitors in this question, line of questioning. And it basically just puts the ownership back on the viewer rather than on the docent to mm -hmm. create this, or like the docent's more like a facilitator for the experience. And then the the audience or the viewers become more activated by their own thoughts and their own lines of inquiry. And they feel empowered to kind of speak about art because art can be really alienating. So um, yeah, it's, and you really, you really don't give any information about the work and that can be kind of difficult for some people. Yeah, it was very frustrating. Like this one, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's really fun. Visual thinking strategies. People should look it up. Ooh. What's this? <laughs> oh my God. What do you think of her? Do the thing with that, with that right there. Ask the questions about it. Okay. The first question I think I'm forgetting. I think it's like, um, what do you notice? Is the first question. What do you notice? Uh oh. <laughs> is it the same and then thing? the second question is, uh, what do you see that makes you say that? And then the third question is, what more can we find? Well, what I'm going to ask this question to you. What do you notice? I notice. Well, she's. There's a, it seems to be a little girl cutting butter, but it's weird because she's like almost putting all the butter onto the bread. Mm -hmm. Instead of spreading the butter on the bread. Mm -hmm. Like it's odd. You're on to something here. Yeah. Oh, wait, is it the same? Is is, oh, is that Annie? In the figure. Whoa. In the figure. Wow, it, it is supposed to be the same girl. It's too bright, so I can't. It looks like Annie. What the hell is that? This is Butter Girl. <laughs> Do they sell that at the gift shop? At the George Lucas Museum Narrative Art Museum? I, they better. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, they butter. <laughs> yeah, this is Butter Boy and Butter Girl by Norman Rockwell. Mm -hmm. And you asked exactly, you said little girl who cuts butter. And that's <laughs> basically what it is, it's Butter Girl. That's and then Butter is. Boy. But see, they ask you how differently, like she cuts whole cubes of butter. And that's exactly... Yeah. 
and, and then he spreads it on, but like not all of it, and only on one piece. Yeah. And I and bought this both this week. Happy about it. And George, I bought this this week, and it showed up, and it was completely smashed, and I had to glue it back together. Oh no! But those one are some Norman few... Rockwells as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, before I let you guys go, there's there's one piece of fan art that came in, and I do want to hear Rachel's take on this, too. <laughs> and Eden, I also want to hear your take on it. I mean, Keller will know better than me. What do we think about this? Uh, this so is... This, is a Nor- this is a Norman Rockwell, but that's George's face replaced. Is this a real... Man's... It looks like he, it's like a union man, like, standing mm-hmm. up. Or something, you know, like something about it looks political. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I quit the director's guild. <laughs> Is that real? Is what Did real? You quit the director's guild? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they yeah. The, the DGA fined me uh, $250,000 because I put the director's name, the credits are all at the end of Star Wars movies, and you weren't allowed to do that back then. So they fined me a quarter of a million dollars, and I turned in my DGA card. <gasps> what? Wait, how can you make films then? Don't you have to make? How do you? Are, are you all in? Not union? I'm not. No, I. But I mean, I did make films. <laughs> did they make an exception for you? Like, how did you get around that? Are you a scab? I'm a scab. <laughs> I'm a scab. <laughs> I, I, I go wherever I can make films, mm-hmm. and then I mm-hmm. stop making films, and now I make museums. <laughs> right, that don't hire good people. Well, <laughs> it's not that. It's that there is one example we know of of a good person that the museum didn't hire, but it could uh-huh. be an outlier. <laughs> like, Eden. I bet if we did a show where we brought in all the people that didn't get hired, it'd be a bunch of jerks. And and one, and, and, and Rachel mm-hmm. would be the only one, and we'd be like, well, what are you going to do? <laughs> we all make now- Eden, we're raising money tonight for the uh, food bank, New York City Food Bank. Yes. Uh, we're doing pretty good. Um, we've raised over. We've. They will be able to purchase almost fifteen thousand meals with the money that we've raised. Wow, which is great. That's a lot yeah. of a lot of meals. Someone is asking in the chat, and I'm gonna ask this. I don't know if this is doable, uh-huh. but I'm gonna say it. Serious inquiry: How much do I need to donate to get added to the comp list in Eden's sold-out <gasps> Boston show? Oh, that's a great, great question. Wow. Um, I, okay, can I? What is? Yeah. I want to say what is fair because I do have the power. Like, it, yes. like, that's this person. What's the ticket the price, price for that? What's the ticket price? Great question. Well, the, I think the ticket price for a VIP in Boston was forty-eight. I want to say maybe okay. it was fifty-two with fees and stuff. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, should it just be that? I don't. I guess I don't want to like price gouge. I feel like this is for a good cause, so it should be like yeah. a little. Yeah, it's like it's that. like the good kind of price gouging for charity. It's one of those yeah. things where yeah. you want to be like, because they're asking the question, "How much?" We're getting an eighty-five. I'm gonna say, can we bump that up to a hundred? Can we get that bumped up to a hundred? Uh, yeah, I, I think that's. A, I think that's I, a good round. Even I think that's a steal. Also, it is a sold out show. It's like, a sold out show. Yeah. Steal at a hundred, yeah. you'd be crazy not to. Pistol McDaniel says uh, they think the VIP ticket was twenty one hundred dollars. <laughs> hundred dollars done. <gasps> it, yes! it actually says hundred dollars. It actually says hundred dollars dome. I don't know <laughs> if that means anything else, no. but we'll pretend. Uh, I uh, think they're requesting that some sort of dome be placed over <laughs> them so that the other people in the audience what? know. That they are, a, a, it was a special ticket. They paid extra. Okay. So, smart overcoat, you email me your name and I will get that to you and we'll figure it out. Yeah. I need to, yes, yes, yes. get it yeah. ASAP yeah, yeah, so yeah. I can get the venue so I can do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and that, then that'll, and that'll pay for 500 meals. Is that, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. For that's every good. $1 that's donated, they will make five meals. We don't know how they do it, but that's Whoa. what they say. Whoa. Yeah. So, that's incredible. Yeah. Um, thank you guys for coming on. This was yeah, it was very nice to be able to close the loop on this. Yes, this is you know? one of the weirdest things I've ever done. So also I'm not like a also, public person. So this is very odd. It's great. Also, no, it's uh, Eden, did you hear about the the SAG deal went through? You mean oh go oh, it did it like yeah, went through yeah. went through it went yeah. through yeah. and yeah. and Patrick do we have a bumper for it to announce it? Oh, we do have a bumper. George made a bumper for this. All right, here we go.
There you go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, is that art? That's, well, what do you think? <laughs> That's the question. We should do a, we should put that in, on a special exhibition in the museum on a loop. <laughs> you gotta hire her, George. Yeah. <laughs> what uh, was that? <laughs> that's the official video announcing that the, the, member, the actors have voted on the contract. Um, very exciting. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming on. Come back anytime. Come, Come back, back anytime. again. This was very fun. Thanks so much. Go to Bye. Oh, wait, say that. Wait, what were you saying? Go to the Eden's shows all over the country. Find a city near you. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, yeah, I just, I had a couple of videos on my phone, so I just used them. Oh, this is rich. Rich, did you see the news? <laughs> I did. I, I got the email from SAG that included a video going up the uh, escalator thing. <laughs> yeah, the escalator. I don't want to over explain it, but the 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 escalator was the what the strike felt like, which is yeah. just like we're we're ascending, but it feels bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> a little bit feels like it's taking too long. It feels a little mm -hmm. dirty, a little dangerous. Yeah, and then we saw an example of what what. Um, performers bring to this medium which is just a certain kind of excitement and energy that you can't mm -hmm. get anywhere else mm -hmm. i thought i was supposed to write an intro He's, this hey guy we have a guest backstage to this the guest backstage the way that we always introduce our guests is that you write an intro in the private chat and then i'll bring you in this guy thinks he needs an intro after everything we've been through this guy thinks he needs an intro. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, he's almost forty-six years old. Happy pre-birthday! Thanks. Well, it's it's Gary. I got a couple of months to go. Oh. <laughs> now, Rich, how many months? Uh, it's in February, February second. Oh, well, that's a long time. Yeah, February second. That's the night. That's the the night that we will be up doing the Baron and the Junk Dealer and George Prov at San Francisco uh, Sketch Fest. All right. Sure. So I there guess you, you won't be there. Well, I don't know. Maybe that's how I'll celebrate my birthday. I, I seriously doubt it, Rich. <laughs> I doubt it too, but who knows? I mean, of all the things you've ever said to me, that was the one that it almost was <laughs> contemptuously uh, uh, insincere. <laughs> maybe, maybe that's how. You have a family who loves you. You think you're going to go up to Sketchfest well, and, and, and watch uh, two uh, shows? Uh, Fun fact is my wife's birthday is also the same day as mine. We have the same mm -hmm. birthday, so probably, probably Rich, won't be there because it'll be her birthday. Rich, I apologize for saying this, but that's disgusting. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> I hope fair. that's Rich. Yep. I hope to God that's not why you married her because that's a silly reason. It's well. Tell me that's it, not why, Rich. It's it was a part of how it all came together. Certainly, what was the main reason? The love. main reason. <laughs> love, Patrick. Love, mm -hmm. I think love. Uh, this guy yeah. hasn't seen Strange Magic. What was the second reason? Birthday. Okay, third reason. <laughs> oh, third. There's a third. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Pistol McDaniels is asking if you met at a birthday convention. <laughs> we, did. we met in the February 2nd uh, section of a birthday convention. You know, how'd you guys meet? Schedule... Tell us how you met. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Um, <clears throat> we met. Oh, in... I'm sorry. We're not the ones who brought it up, Rich. <laughs> we, we met in, we met in graduate school. Mm -hmm. We met uh, the first day of, of graduate school. Mm -hmm. Oh, when they're like, you, go, you stand up against the wall and the teacher's pick. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Thank you, LED, LED light. This has become an interrogation so fast. White House plumbers. Let's get oh, into good. it. Let's White House it. plumbers. Let's talk. Uh, because we couldn't talk about this stuff during the strike. Yeah. We couldn't come on in promo, you know? Yeah. And uh, White House plumbers. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think a really uh, uh, intelligent and funny piece of work. Mm hmm. No question. Uh, thank you. Great. Uh, noted. You're in it. 
I am in it. You're very good in it. Thanks. I'm, you've been, I'm, you've I'm, been popping up all over the place, Rich. I, Rich, I, I'm going to bring this up. The first time you came on, <laughs> yeah, we were talking about how you had 68 credits. Mm-hmm. This shows how long this has been and how good of a couple of years you have had. How many credits do you think you have right now? Uh, I'm guessing it's it's exceed. We've exceeded. I know 69 was was here on this show, obviously. Yes, yes. But uh, uh, I don't know. It's gone above that, is what you're saying. We're at 83 with three upcoming. Oh, hello! This is exciting. Yeah, we're looking at we're looking. We're, you're staring 86 right in the face. <laughs> I'm knocking on the door of 86. <laughs> Um, would you say they've been good years, uh, these, these years, the best of years? <laughs> the best of years. It's been a real net positive uh, <laughs> over the last few years. Uh, I feel like everywhere I turn, uh, you're showing up and stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm. And uh, does it feel good? <laughs> or does it feel bad? You hate it. I hate whatever setting is on this iPad that it follows me. It's like yeah. a cameraman. Is that what that movie? That's what that movie It Follows is about. It is? I wondered. It's about, just about I, a basic I, iPad. I, <laughs> I thought it was on a bed, and every time you moved, oh, it I would, would move the bed. Would, would that that were the situation? You were picturing that yeah. right now he is lying down yes. on his stomach, and at some point we're going to see like. Heels kick up in the My back. My feet behind me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's see if I can get there. Like, hold on. Oh fuck. Oh there. Yeah. There he goes. Look at no. this. Rich, what kind of lens is on that? What kind of lens is on that? Because you're not like eight feet tall. <laughs> oh Jesus. Yes. Not some things. My hotel room is a little. It's in. It's in disorder. A hotel room. Are you on a shoot? I'm. I'm on a shoot right now, George. Is this number eighty-seven? It might be. Or is this one of the? Is this one of the missing three? It, it, I think it's one of the upcoming. One probably. of the upcomings. Yeah. Uh, have you signed paperwork? You can't talk about it until it's done. Uh, uh, maybe I don't know. They didn't tell me whether I could talk about it, so I'll just I'll err okay. on the side of caution. That, that's very wise, especially. Mm-hmm. I mean, we just got out of the strike. Yeah, everybody's going to get back to work today. Oh, During God. our show, we did it. I know. Thank you for doing it. I'm, no I'm one's welcome. so glad. No one watching our show will ever know if you're there in production on Charmers or the Book of Jobs or the Sterling Affairs. Nobody has any idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will narrow it down. Sterling Affairs was the last thing I worked on before the strike. That was my last day of work in January. So yeah. Seth Burton. Seth Burton. So you finish. Can't, you finish. Can't that. wait to you meet finish. Seth Burton. You I met Seth Burton. On that. He's a real real guy. guy. He's real a real guy. guy. What's yeah. his deal? He uh, he was the uh, oh god, what was his title? Something like head of communications <laughs> or something for the uh, for the Clippers, the Los Angeles Clippers. Oh, mm-hmm. oh so this isn't about Roger Sterling? Uh, it's not about Roger Sterling. It's about Donald Sterling, the racist former owner of the <laughs> Clippers. Mm-hmm. His little. Have you seen that video of the the his girlfriend? Uh, when I have. she. She's doing the interview the, and she's the she's like, Yeah, she's like, We love each other. I'm his I'm his love. I'm the light of his life. I'm his little rabbit. And they're like, You're his what? And she goes, I'm his little rabbit. And they said, Did he call you that? And she says, No. Yeah. They're a tough a great couple. Video. They're a real sure. tough set of personalities. Sure. Did mm-hmm. you meet them? No, I didn't get to meet them. I don't believe they wanted to have much to do with this project. It doesn't Honestly. show them in a in a, a glowing light. Well, sure. Rich, Rich, mm-hmm. if I may, yes. love is love is love. Thank you, George. I couldn't agree right. more. That's why I married my wife. It's the number one reason I married my wife. Number two, birthdays. That's correct. <laughs> um, let me let me ask you this. So, mm-hmm. you're on a shoot now. Um, mm-hmm. There's been a lot of speculation uh, about. Uh, whether Robert Downey Jr. is going to come back as Iron Man. They're all saying mm-hmm. they won't do anything to undo uh, the sacrifice that Tony Stark mm-hmm. made at the end of the Infinity War during Endgame. It was so noble. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, it was at the end of Endgame, George. Yeah, I know, but it was the Infinity War and then at the end of oh, Endgame. Sure. Jesus okay, Christ. God, you know what? You don't still work for them, Patrick. Get off the clock. Mr. Marvel over here wants to come in with the corrections. 
I want a life day robe. Okay, well, you can order one. These are they, they sell them. <laughs> Do you have a robe you in buy... your hotel? Do you have a robe in your hotel? I don't think so. No, I don't what? think so. Could you fashion so. a really? robe out of a duvet? <laughs> I suppose I could. It'd be white, however. Well, that's okay. <laughs> hey, let me just. How about this? How about this? Okay. Uh huh. Anything on either in the room or on the room service menu that would stain the duvet rug? <laughs> We will pay for it. We will pay for it. I don't. I don't think so. I don't think this place has room service either. Well, what's really? up behind you, you? What's what's up behind you? Uh, it's art. That's art. Yeah, that's the color of the robes. That's mm-hmm. all three. All three uh, art pieces in the room are right there. Is that? Can you pick up that reddish, orangish thing? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, Ooh, all right. Here's looks what like do. it was glued down at one point. This right. is amazing. It's like zooming in on you. It's really it's cinematic. It, it's, it's so cool. Unsettling. Here's what I want to try if we can, Rich. If there's enough room in there and if the camera will allow. Mm-hmm. Is there a way to place that on something so we can see the whole of that red thing? And then you stand far enough back so we just see your head popping out the top of it. Mm-hmm. I see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Well, I don't know what my camera will do in this. Yeah, well, I mean, we're, a lot of it depends <laughs> on the camera. Rich, this really looks like a bong. I'm gonna be real with you. I would again. I wish it were. You gotta go back Hold further. On. You gotta. Go I gotta, back, go you gotta back up. I mean, truly, like <laughs> when they say the camera loves you, Rich. This camera really Honestly, does this, love you. This might. <laughs> this <would> be... <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Hide behind it. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Uh, no, move, move your, move your body just a little bit more to the side. It's a wall. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Now you have a life day robe. <laughs> you have a life day robe. Yeah, wave oh, the arms this... out of the side. That's great. Oh, wow. Genuinely, I have no idea the layout of this hotel room because <laughs> the, size, the size of this base in the camera to you is so jarring. <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> It's so insane. <laughs> oh, thank uh, you. Wow. Rich, I have yeah. to say, yeah. and this is no disrespect to the work you did in White House Plumbers, but what, what we just witnessed some of your best work. <laughs> thank you. I really I really thought you, you took direction so well. You also were manning the cinematography which, what I, with what I assume is some sort of new horrible AI camera. I, it must be. It must like, be. Mm-hmm. Threw out all the things that make a camera good, meaning like the camera <laughs> just points at whatever the fuck you want it to point at and just films it. Like, no, I wanted the camera had a brain and it had desires and made choices. <laughs> it's just one of those things where I feel like everything is going to have a computer in it that's going to just uh-huh. do something you didn't ask it to do. Yep. Yeah. And like that's it, the future. It, I feel that's one of those and, things where it's like, in the old days, you would make soup and it would just sit in the bowl. But the new AI soup just goes wherever the fuck it wants. You gotta <laughs> catch it. <laughs> you gotta catch it. Yeah, it's like everything. Everything that we used to just love about things that things that did what we want them to do now mm-hmm. will become things that have this sort of weirdly programmed in free will. So suddenly it's like, like oh, I bought a notebook to take some notes, but I don't know where the fuck it is. Like, why? Well, it's an AI, it's AI paper, so it thinks of places it wants to be other than with me. <laughs> Someone just wrote, no one likes soup, George. I didn't even wow. that. Wait a that minute. can't that's, be true. That's, that's not can't be true. true. The soup industry is thriving. Yes. So, wait, I I want to get some logistics here. You're yeah. in a hotel somewhere. Mm-hmm. Your family no. is at home. That's right. That's the job. That's how it works. Did you leave him at home with them or did you bring him with you? Oh. Uh, I, I don't feel comfortable leaving him at home. That's what I'm saying. So did yeah. they get you two beds or is it a single bed? Oof. Rich. It's a long. It's been a long. It's been a long ten days and a long week to go. And I'm is assuming it's not set? like this. Yeah. What's that? Is he allowed on set? Well, he, they. The, part of the deal was that he, he he had to pay his own way, so he's been given uh-huh. uh, odd jobs. Okay. 
earn your keep. Mm-hmm. How well, has he been at them? I mean, I'm sure he's. Out. Yeah, I'm sure he's in the room with you right now, so you probably can't talk about it too freely. But let's just say the the, the, the bar isn't set super high, so they're easily sure. achievable uh, jobs. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Is he uh, what you, what, what's your beverage there? there? What's your beverage at, there, Rich? I'm enjoying a uh, a cherry bubbly. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's in the room with you? Yeah. Uh, as, someone just said Stephen is the one controlling the camera. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why the shots are so haphazard. Oh. Uh, um, what does this um, say? What, what does this say? Funny oh, story. Funny... When I visited LA, my, my, I've got some eyeball situation yeah my in april my friend invited me to her friend's comedy show but i couldn't make it the next day she tells me she sat at a table with a guy who according to his wiki he's in your george he's in your george <laughs> lucas show and sent a screenshot i was so mad at myself that i did not go with her and then introduced myself to the guy at the table by saying oh hi stephen charleston missed opportunity so oh, stephen so charleston was the so one stephen was at the comedy show i see i for a moment thought they must have been talking about me but no they were talking about stephen being at it yeah i see can we ask yeah. him what that comedy show was? Uh, sure. <laughs> Just go get him. Just go get him, Richard. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. So go get Stephen. Will, will the camera allow Rich? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just wanted the to. The camera is so. <laughs> lonely right now like you, you, it's so sad to watch this camera just hunger for like where is the one person that i was designed to care for oh no hi steven hi steven <laughs> how you doing steve hey guys we haven't seen you in so long steven it's been a, it's been a minute the last time the we la- saw you was uh, was it in 2022 it was at the live show at Dynasty Dynasty Typewriter, Typewriter. you yeah. ran uh, from backstage out into the audience and said, "Who who wants? Does anybody want a pickle?" I got some pickles. Oh, that's good. Of course you do. We, when we're traveling, we have to get packets. Sure, pick, you can't bring glasses. Packets. I'm gonna go see if I. Can. These are hottie bites. Hottie bites. Yeah, they're spicy. Do you prefer that? Yeah, I always like a little. A little bite. Yeah. Happy Life Day, Stephen. Happy Life Day. That's why I wore red. Well, you, you seem to celebrate Life Day in your heart every day that we've seen you. Every day is Life Day. It's true. You know, in a way. I mean, it's not true technically, but it's true in a, in a, in a, in a deeper way, I guess. George, have you ever worked on a movie? Yeah, I've uh, made quite a few <laughs> films and worked on, on many more. I feel like we have that in common now. Yeah, we do, Stephen. You're you're crewing on it. I I was sort of in your position for my mentor Francis's first few movies. It's helping out, doing what I could. Your mentor is Francis. Francis Ford Coppola. Mm, I just watched. Rich and I just watched a movie of his that I that neither of us had ever seen. Was it Jack? It was. It was filmed. 40 minutes from here. What is it? The Outsiders. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. I've just poured pickle juice all, all over this desk. Well, Steven, it's crazy that Rich wasn't in the deal. Did Rich audition for the deal? The deal? Or the offer? The offer. The offer. Mm, the offer. Rich chose not. He told me he chose not to audition for it. Oh, okay. oh it, was, it was an offer Would he could you... refuse. <laughs> It's because they asked him to audition for who was the guy. I hope it wasn't for me, because I'm. No. I was like, I'm no. not in it, but they have someone playing me in the background. It was the guy. The guy who. Oh no! What <laughs> was it? There was a guy who did. I just Rich didn't feel he was exactly suited to be. Sure. But I can't remember. Brand- Brando. No, it was okay. a different guy. Sinatra? Okay. No, keep going though. 
Mario Puzo. Should I hang on wait? Should yep. I read everyone on IMDb? Yep. Oh, it's Mario Puzo? Yep. Wow. Wow. Mario Puzo. Okay. It didn't really fit. I'm covered yeah. in, in pickle juice. <laughs> I don't. I'm surprised that that sounds like you're complaining. I feel like it almost would. No, no, no. What I meant to say is I'm covered in pickle juice. (laughs) That's that's more like it. Um. So what have you been doing on this set? Mm, This and that. Yeah. Sometimes someone will have something they need. They say, "Hey, this is over here. This should be over there." And then I go, "I'm on it." Sure. And I'll move it over there. What has been your favorite thing to move so far? An envelope. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> someone's just pointed out a very well observed uh, uh, little little uh, observation. <laughs> so you're wearing a wedding ring. Do you have oh, something you'd like to announce? <laughs> no, I wear this just to keep, to oh. keep people from asking too many questions about me. Very oh. clever. Yeah, because sometimes people, they go, I wonder if that, oh, no, never mind. Mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm. yeah. You think you think that happens a lot? <coughs> it, well, no one ever asks me whether I'm married because they just see the ring and yeah. they just presume. Now, Stephen, something we've never talked about, hmm. and I feel like we've gotten pretty deep in the Stephen Charleston lore at this point. Have we ever talked about why the towel, what the towel is? What's going on? <laughs> I don't think it's come up, no. It's a really dramatic zoom in, too, that I really like. I wish it would stop. <laughs> I wish it would stop. I mean, Pat- Patrick, I don't know if you heard this before, but he did say he was wearing it for Life Day. Oh, that's true. Oh, yeah. Okay. I said that's why I'm wearing it red. I'd love oh, to no, rinse George- my hand. What? Sh- George left. No, what he's back. happened? I don't know. What happened? Oh, I don't know. Don't rinse I'm... your hands. Just lick it. You like pickles. Uh, yeah, I just. Um, Patrick, just bookmark that because that's a shirt. <laughs> mm. This is the perfect time to it remind everyone. This is good. Oh. Anyway, what? you guys just you share drinks. Well, he said it was good, and I I hadn't tried it yet. It is good. I feel Steven, like that's just... sort of a that's sort of a pattern with you, Stephen. When you see that Rich likes something, you want to try it. Well, we we get we we see a lot of things the same way. We in the yeah. Venn diagram of life, there are actually a lot of ways in which we cross over. Mm-hmm. We're not a perfect circle. Yeah, Stephen, no did you watch? No two people are. Stephen, did you watch White House Plumbers? I saw uh, enough. What did you think of what you saw? Yeah. It was it too political or not political enough? I don't know. I just, uh, you know, I watched it for Woody. Mm-hmm. Because uh-huh. he and I see eye to eye on uh, on politics. Uh-huh. On right. Vaccines. Mm-hmm. But the mm-hmm. rest is... Uh, yeah, oh, I take it or leave it. Hmm. I'm surprised um, you brought it up. Would you say I'll bring it? I'll talk about it anytime. I will talk <laughs> about it anytime. It's you guys who don't want to talk about it. I'll talk about it anytime. Would you say if you had to if you had to um, pit two of of, uh, of Rich's recent works against each other? Mm-hmm. Um, what side would you come down on, uh, Blackberry mm-hmm. or Firebuds? Firebuds all day. You like fi- your Firebuds, boy? Firebuds all day. Wait, now, Stephen, I actually have a question about Firebuds. Can you get rich really quick? Because I feel like he'll be able to answer this, and I don't know if you can. Yeah, can I just? Can I? Just, I'm gonna go rinse my hand, and then I'll get rich real quick. Great. I'll be. Okay. He'll be. We'll all be right. He'll be back. Patrick, we haven't talked to Stephen in years. I'm worried if we send him off that he won't come back. We'll get him back. I also... I... Oh, God, that camera moving on its own is <laughs> terrifying. That genuinely, like, scared me that he went into the bathroom and the camera followed him and then looked away as if it was like, no, no. <laughs> Did you see that? Yes. Oh, 
Oh. Oh. Someone's that, asking that about the merch me. link. George. What's happening? CLTS.threadless.com. You can buy this. You can buy this. You can buy this. You can buy this. Oh my God. You can buy this. You can buy this. Jesus, there's, there's so many things juice you can buy. All over this desk. What happened? This is as angry as I've ever heard you, Rich. There's just there's pickle juice. Rich. Okay. Yeah. You're in four episodes of Firebuds. Uh yeah, that sounds right. At least four released episodes. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. as as Mr. Wexel. Yeah. Three of those episodes, Wexel is spelled with two L's. One of those episodes, Wexel is spelled with one L. Right. What's going on? It's a it's a it's a little wink, a little wink to the audience. Uh-huh. Just to the but to the real ones who are checking the IMDB to catch the spelling. Oh, okay. You know? Okay, great. That's Just all that was say, my question. Not fire butts. No, the show is not fire butts, it's fire buds. Yeah. Yeah. Like buddies, buddies, fire trucks who are buddies. Air buddies, snow buddies, space buddies, spooky buddies, treasure buddies, super buddies, Santa buddies. Um wow. Rich, is there more of you in the is there more of you in the uh T V cut of Blackberry? Is there bonus <laughs> rich in oh, the T V cut? I believe I believe there is a there's like one in fact I asked the director, I was like, what in what the fuck is on the T V thing that's not in the movie? And he said, Oh, you remember that scene where like I show you around because the director is also uh, one of the stars yeah. of the movie. Mm-hmm. He's like where I show you around the office and like introduce you to me, I said, Yeah. He said, like, that scene's in the TV one. And I was mm. like, oh. Well, I didn't, like, miss it from the movie, so I'm not sure how it's going to hmm. work in the TV. I like that, that movie. If people like haven't that seen that movie, movie it's, it's good. It's really good. Uh, I, I was very pleased to be a part of it. Yeah. Um, I feel... Can we talk to Stephen again? <sighs> it's come. unbelievable the way you treat our guest, Patrick. What well, you just no, I mean, back on the why don't you talk to me? But, I, but how George, many, how many IMDb DB credits does Stephen have, and how many do I have? I mean, let's, let's look. look. Let's look. <laughs> I mean, who do you want to talk to here? Did you know that Stephen Charleston is the name of a bishop, Ameri- a- American Episcopal bishop and academic? He was the bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Alaska from 1991 to 1996, and dean of Episcopal Divinity school from 1999 to 2008 he has a wikipedia page it couldn't possibly be the same Stephen. i mean the dates line up we didn't see him on the show <laughs> the long dates do line up which i find a little unnerving but uh i don't know it says he's 74 <laughs> that feels that feels on the high side for the Stephen. but it says his know. birth it says his birthday is february 3rd well that doesn't work because my birthday is february 2nd that's what I'm saying. So you're, so you're suggesting to me that I was born February 2nd, 1978, but you're suggesting that Stephen Charleston, the one that was we born know. February 3rd, 1949. <laughs> right, right. Was was born uh, uh, nine <coughs> months before my dad. Have they ever met? No, but thankfully. Wait. I don't think. I'm gonna nine be months before your dad? I'm going to say something nine, nine months before. <laughs> rich, Rich, yeah. Rich. Yeah. Is Stephen Charleston your grandfather? <laughs> he was born nine months before your dad. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think that's how it works. <laughs> Wait a minute, Rich. Hold on. Let me do the math. This <laughs> explains everything. <laughs> So if Stephen was born nine months and four days before my dad. Yeah. No, don't think about possibly, it too much. Don't think about it too he much. Possibly be my grand. Jesus, I think I don't it adds know. up, Rich. I have never thought about it. Nine months. That's how long it takes to make a baby. So uh, it's a lock. It's a guarantee. It just Holy makes shit. sense, Rich. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, this person Oh, my said, God. Oh, my God. Blog, Ethan Runt Ethan Run just said, cracked it. He time shifted. That's why Stephen Charleston is a time shifter. Kids, kids. Yes. Yes. That's it. 
Wow. wow. <laughs> it meant grandchildren. <laughs> I, yeah. You know what I appreciate, Patrick, is that you've kept track of the Stephen Charleston lore. Because I've tried. Someone has to have. This right. I've really, tried. This is I cracking love, it all wide open. Here's what I would love. There is a YouTube video that is a supercut of every Stephen Charleston appearance. There is? Yes. Oh, I. No. It is six and a half hours long, I believe. I would love... <laughs> that cannot be true. I would. I believe it's both of your appearances, but, you know, we're counting all of Stephen in there. I wow. would love if someone went through and tried to piece together a biography of Stephen. Oh, that would be amazing. I wonder if someone, how many... Yeah. Get the chop on it. The chop. Come on. I wonder how many contradictions there are. I mean, he's oh. a man of he's a man of contradictions. It's true. If anything, it's the true. contradictions would only confirm what we already suspect. <laughs> I couldn't agree more. Uh, are those AirPods, Rich? Yeah, yeah. You ever lose them? Uh, do I like just misplace them? Have you ever lost AirPods and had to buy replacements? No, that has not happened. You're very responsible with them. I try to be. They have oh, a what is of... going on with this fucking camera? <laughs> Can I make is that it a stop? laptop or what is it? No, it's an iPad. Can I make it stop? Hold on, wait. What's this do? Whoops, that did, that's the wrong <laughs> button. Hold on. Uh, that isn't it. That flipped it around. I would miss. Whoops, honestly, sorry. I would miss. I would miss it if the function went yeah. away because I've I've grown accustomed. Why well, won't it turn back? Oh my god! It says there is a <laughs> center stage button. Yeah, but I don't... Oh, God. Everything's frozen now. And it, if you turn off... Uh, there's like a video effects... That, I mean, we hear you. You're good. Yeah, great. Great, but I can't... I can't... I can't... I'm never coming back. The camera's locked forever. No, that's not true, Rich. That can't, no, can't be true, Rich. I'm going to throw it away. Rich, that can't <laughs> possibly be true. You, you sound so much like George right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm hitting every button and it won't... It won't Just hit back. individual buttons. I think the problem is if you're hitting every no, button. No, I have to hit them all at once or nothing will happen. No, the, the, the answer is to make a choice. Pick which button you want. Press just that button. Why is it? Why is this happening? Yeah, someone has some great advice that maybe Steven can figure it out. <laughs> He's gone. George, we did get, we did hit our point of uh, an old friend returning. Yes. So what Would that you mean? like, it's a video that I have that I'm going to play. Oh, this is the old friend you, returning? Yeah. Do you want to do the intro? I don't even know what this is. Can I put it in the private chat? Yeah, put it in the private chat. Have I forgotten this? Yeah. All right, let me see. <clears throat> oh, we could do it in a little bit. There I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> happened. I don't know. We're what back. But I, I didn't figure out how to make this all stop. We like it. The only thing we didn't like is when you went to the bathroom... The camera followed you, and then it... How, how far did it... Like, just go. And then when you duck out of sight, oh, Whoa. it starts to lose interest. <gasps> I'm here, camera. Hey, dance. The camera, dance. I'm over here. Dance. dance I'm it. dancing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Come on, come with me. Come on. Yeah. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. Come on, camera. Oh, no, no it it's going no, away. It gives up. It doesn't like when I go over there. It's very, it's very creepy, but I'm growing to love it. Okay, good. Oh, oh. God. So the times are good. Are they rich? <laughs> the times are fine. Um, you were very uh, outspoken during the strike. You you mm -hmm. would post a lot of videos where you're walking to uh, striking events, mm -hmm. and you'd be talking about things. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. <coughs> what a wild year! You got a little tickle there, George. A little tickle. Oh, a little tickle. What's going on? Well, I'm about to turn eighty. Oh my God! Is it really? You really? You're rounding the band yeah, in, on that in one. May. Next year is a very big year because uh, we have we have three exciting things happening. The tenth anniversary of the George Lucas talk show is coming up in a few months. Wow! Um, uh, I turn eighty at the beginning of May, and Watto turns twenty five near the end of May or mid May. Wow! So you guys are coming up on a birthday just like me. We're going to celebrate I... very very soon. 
Yeah. I turned 32. Turn off your camera for a second, Patrick. Nobody cares about that number. It's just the most... 32 is not even a mentionable... I'm not even sure if 32 is technically even a number. To be honest. <laughs> no, I'm, no, I remember it coming and going with absolutely I, no fan. Yeah. All right, Patrick, you can come back. Um, did you hear about Slam Dance, Rich? No. The documentary about the making of the George Lucas Talk Show uh, got into Slam Dance, going to premiere in a month. Congratulations. When yeah. can I see it at my home? Um, well, we sent a copy I... there tonight for one night only, uh, but you're not there. Oh, why would you send it? You didn't even ask if I was going to be there. I, I wanted to surprise you, and now, <laughs> you know, look what you've done. <laughs> what maybe, you're, done? <laughs> maybe your wife and kids are watching. Yeah, maybe your wife and kids are watching. Oh. That's what's happening. Are there swears in it? Yeah, mostly it's mostly swears. Uh, mostly it's mostly, it's mostly, mostly swears. swears. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> you want to see the poster? Yeah, you want to yeah. see the poster, Rich? I do. Um, where is it? Here we go. Oh, that's. <laughs> that's Isn't that fun? <laughs> that is really fun. I like that. It's fun. I like that. Yeah. Um, Who's Who's Connor Ratliff? Great question. It's a story about him. Yeah. Oh, I know. Be. I know. I actually do know the answer to this. Oh. Uh, he's a guy who put himself on tape for White House Plumbers. <laughs> but you won't find him in the show. <laughs> who did he put himself on tape for? Uh, multiple parts. <laughs> okay. Did you? Did, That's my did, understanding. Did he, did he put himself on tape for Eggle Bud Krogh? No. You want to know? I'll tell you exactly who. Hold on. Yeah, let's find out. Yeah, because I got Richard uh, Nixon. <laughs> I'll find out because uh, that guy, uh, what's his face, was emailing me about it. What? What's that his guy, face? Was... What's his? Yeah, just what that guy just emailed you about White House plumbers? Dave Mandel? No. Um, what's Woody? his face? No. Justin Thoreau. Thoreau? No. Crumholtz? No. Uh, Toby Huss? <laughs> no. Okay. Uh, oh. uh, uh, oh, the, uh, the, the woman from Game of Thrones? No. Cersei? No. Kiernan Shipka? Thalmo no. Gleason? Donal. Donal. Donal? Judy no. Greer? No, uh, Paul Begala. Judy Greer, Judy Greer was just here. She was in this this movie as well, but she's really? gone That's now. Exciting. She's already left. Paul Begala. Oh sure. The the oh wait, that's who you were up for, or who he was up for? No, that's who emailed me this stuff because uh, Paul Begala and I were in a White House plumbers uh, chat group. A WhatsApp. What are you, group. George? What are you talking about? <laughs> I was in a White Former House Plumbers pl WhatsApp group. Don't ask me how. I found myself in there. We were all talking about it. George Lucas and former political consultant to President Bill Clinton were in a WhatsApp group about White House There's Plumbers? There's hundreds of us. It's just one of those things that happens where you, you're like, I like White House Plumbers. And I end up in a WhatsApp group. And then we're like trading around like, you know how like people will trade around. I don't know if you know this, Rich, but like for character actors, whenever people are into a show, people mm -hmm. will trade around the sides that like unknown and, and uh, sort of like who's that guy kind of actors will trade them around like trading cards like guess who was up for it here we got their sides and their watermarks that's what power <laughs> players power I, players in the I've, industry first of all yeah I consider I I mean I don't know if I match the description of character actor it's what I've always considered myself but and I've never done what you're talking about uh, no you wouldn't do it why wouldn't I? Well, you might get in. You might buy your way into a WhatsApp by passing out a few of your watermark sides, <laughs> and then they and then we pass them around. We pass them Why? around like trading cards. What? We we trade them like pogs. <laughs> like pogs. Yeah. Rich power what? players. If we're interested in a show, we'll see if we can get. It's like a sign of status if you can get. You get like an under five or a, uh -huh. someone who's up for an under five or someone who's up for a guest spot. 
you and because you, you're not supposed to give out your watermark sides. Of course, right? That's why they're watermarked? Yeah, but uh, uh, actors to buy their way into the the WhatsApp groups where people are buzzing on shows, they'll buy their way in with the watermark sides, and then the power players will trade them around. I've got a handful of Rich Summers watermarks. I don't know if you gave them up or somebody you know might have passed around a few of your watermark sides. Uh, I'm just Steve, really having trouble. The role was, one of the roles was Steve. And one of the roles was Who um, Steve in White House Plumber. Trying to figure it out, yeah. One of the roles was Steve and one of the roles was Baldwin. Baldwin. Alec? No, just Baldwin. <laughs> Steve, I'm looking. Who for did Steve. Neil Casey play? He played an attorney. Did you audition for Neil that? Neil Casey plays Douglas Caddy. I didn't okay. audition for anything, Rich. Follow the story. I'm a oh, power I'm player in a Connor, White House I'm, plumber's I'm sorry. I forgot. I got mixed. Okay. Up. Oh, John Glazer played Steve, the CIA disguise maker. Yeah, no wonder Baldwin. this guy didn't get it. They gave it to Glazer. Baldwin. He never had a chance. Who played Baldwin? Oh, and uh, Michael Ian Black's former uh, co-star Zach Orth played oh, Baldwin. Yeah. We love Zach Orth. Zach Orth is yeah. great. Have I told you my Zach Orth uh, thing that I Zach Orth was like my we would he was on at every audition I ever went to in New York. Sure. He was just sort of you know we had a very similar. I mean I'm younger than him, but we had a very similar thing, and I I uh, I'm such a fan of his um and we have now had the chance to work together a little bit and so we've we've hashed it all out but that mm -hmm. guy I'm a, yeah th there's really no story that was really the whole story i don't know why i would have ever told when i said have i ever told you like what what the story was there there wasn't one really i saw him at a play where uh john lithgow played bill clinton and laurie metcalf played hillary clinton and zach orth was i think the only other person in the show wow and it was on broadway that's amazing yeah. Uh, yeah. He was on Broadway with those guys doing a thing. Yeah. Look, Look at that. You ever meet Lithgow? No, I saw him uh, in Central Park once. He's very tall. Mm -hmm. Very tall. You ever meet Lori? Lori Metcalf, uh, her daughter used to do the same sort of community theater group that my daughter and son are in. And so we never, I mean, I think we had like a hi, hi, Lori, hi, yep. Uh, but that's that's as close as we can. We used to be in a lot of the same audiences, but that was it. Here's a question. Who was your favorite person you saw on the picket lines? Um, my favorite person that I saw, like that I talked to or that I just saw going by? I think someone that you were like, whoa, that's cool. There's so-and-so. Alfred Molina was out there a few days. That was good. Bo Bridges. I mm -hmm. liked seeing him out there. He, he mm -hmm. was... a. Cranston, Brian Cranston uh, was out there a lot. That was good. Um, I did, you get, did, you get any food? did Drew Carey give you any food? No, he gave mostly the writers food. Writer. Yeah. You didn't try to get any food. <clears throat> I'm not. I'm not in the writers guild, so I didn't try to get any of the writers guild food. I just want to know if you got any of that writer food. I didn't. I did not get any of the writer food. I want to be clear. You got zero writer food. Believe I've believe I've, I've stated it, but uh, okay. Uh, there's no reason to get defensive if you truly didn't get any of the writer food. You can just you can just let it stand. I don't know what's going on here, George. Let me ask: Have you put yourself on tape for anything this week, Rich? This week, no, no. Slow week. Slow week. It's been a slow. I have a. <clears throat> Since the end of the strike, put myself on tape uh, two or two, two or three times. So it's been mm -hmm. pretty slow yet. I'm I'm hoping the new year has a little bit of a little kick in the pants. Right? Uh, did you um, did you have any um, during during this period that you've been striking? Uh, were you able to do any non struck work? Like an interim agreement type thing, or just like like there's like motion capture things or animation, there's things like that. Anything like that oh, pop up? I did. I did do a Firebuds episode um, during the strike. Can you do us a favor? Mm -hmm. Do you have the script on your email, and can you check and see how his name is spelled? 
Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, let me see. Great idea. Let me see what I've got. Actually, here. do a search in your email first for the one spelling and then for the other, and see if you <laughs> get, get matches for both. Okay, here I'll I'll do two L's first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got a lot. I got a ton of two L's. All right, yeah. now let's try with Although, the one. Oh well, yeah. Okay, I was just trying one L. Okay. I think I have to put that in quotes to make sure it doesn't bring yeah. me any of the other one. So. Oh yeah, I've got a Wexel one L here. When was Which, that dated? What day? Which episode? That is from. Hold on. Uh, hold on one second. Let me just make sure I've got it correct. Yeah. So this was from uh, Science Fair Snafu. You're not even credited in that episode. Uh, maybe it's not out yet. Oh, maybe it's not out yet. I have seven lines in it. Although maybe I got cut out. I mean. We recorded it in July of 22, so I feel like it would have been out by now. But yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> yeah, it's wild. So I do have one one L Wexel, and the rest are all two Ls. Right. So the two L seems to be the dominant. Uh, that's the that's, preference. That's the that's the real Wexel. The single L feels to be a, a perhaps a mistake, or certainly the lesser of the two roles. Do you know that um, you don't know this? I'm going to just tell you. In one of the episodes, I had to, I, I, they sent me the thing that said, "Hey, there's going to be a song, and you're going to sing." And I was like, "Oh, okay." I mean, I, I, I don't mind singing a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when I got the song, it is, it was so high, um, and uh, it's that one is out. I don't remember what which episode that one is, but you, uh, you sang in a high pitched voice. I, I sang at the absolute ceiling of my range you know rich you have such a deep voice i have a hard mm -hmm. time imagining what you would sound like if you had an incredibly high-pitched voice that 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 strikes me as almost unfathomable i wouldn't i would i i, ju I generally don't dabble in the upper part of my range uh, yeah i wouldn't I, i'd find it to be demeaning yeah have they ever asked you do a lot of voiceover stuff now and i just feel like with steven I don't want to say riding your coattails, but riding your coattails. Does he come along to these recordings? Do, do they ever ask him to be a part of the shows? No one has asked Stephen. No one has asked Stephen to be a part of anything that I'm aware of wow. ever. I think Stephen, I have asked people to yeah. allow Stephen to be a part of something. But I have never, other than, actually, you know what? That's not true. You guys have said, can we talk to Steven? That's the most anyone has ever asked for Steven. George, should, should we work on an animated thing for Steven to be in? Um, well, let me, let, I think there is a world in which uh, a show called The Animated Adventures of Steven Charleston, um, if there was enough interest, um, but I would need. <laughs> <laughs> there would need to be a lot of interest. You know, there would have to be a profound amount of interest. But it, it's a good title. It's a great title with no content. It's it's all skin and no guts. Do I, we think he would be interested? He would be interested in anything, as far as I can tell. I I wouldn't be comfortable unless you signed on as some sort of producer. Maybe a Neither would producer. I. I wouldn't feel comfortable with that either. But you would. Well, how about this, Rich? Will you take line producer? It's a lot no. more work, but no. it's a real job. No, I would not it, take line producer. I want producer. to be clear. I want to be clear. Uh -huh. Line producer, you'll be in charge of the scheduling. It's not one of those things that we just right. throw in an actor and you give him a title. It's no, I gonna, know what line producer is, and I will not be the line producer. I'm just I'm throwing it out as hypothetically. If... if if you were offered line producer on um, an animated show specifically, mm -hmm. what's the answer? Yes? No? Is there a maybe in there? No. Okay. I want to be clear on something. This is... <laughs> you know what? Yeah, let's get... We should really make sure this is clear. I want to make sure... Because I want to make sure I'm not misunderstanding you. Yeah. I don't want you to misunderstand. If an offer like this... And I'm not saying it's in the works. But if uh -huh. an offer like this for you to be a line producer... Uh, and we probably pair you with someone because you haven't done this before. We probably no, pair you with I someone who has a lot it. of experience line producing. Mm -hmm. 
and and then phase them out to be honest and we'd be upfront about that like you're the veteran here we're, but we're going to phase you out this is really rich's job right uh between you and me because mm-hmm. uh, we're not making an offer yet fire your reps and mm-hmm. get ready because mm-hmm. then, they, then they, that's when we swoop in with the offer of lion producer. Because then you get, then you keep the lion's share of the bounty, yeah. right? Because I think this um, could be a game changer. You've been primarily known in the acting space, right? And I think it's going to be intimidating to a lot of the other lion producers. Yeah, because well, they're going to be like, "Summer's coming in hard on this." Like he, he has he he dropped his reps. He's not doing any acting work anymore. Mm-hmm. And he just was line producer, well, co-line producer on a, a little show called The Animated Adventures of Stephen Charleston. The, yeah, uh, yeah, this is, a, apparently it's his grandfather. I I, I tried to figuring out uh, how that was possible, but they tell me the numbers add yeah. up. Right. He was born ni- exactly nine months before his father. <laughs> it's just, it's just ever so barely. I know it sounds impossible, but it's just, if you... Don't think about it too quickly, but also don't take too much time to think about it. Anyway. Yeah, right. This, if you do they, neither they, of those things. Yeah. They say it's sort he's sort of sending a message out to line producers everywhere, like, look out. Somebody's about to line produce the hell out of everything. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh his initials are R S. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you think Stephen would be asked about it? Yeah. Uh, would he? Would he what? Do you think Stephen would do ASCAP <laughs> uh, for monologues or playing? <laughs> oh, <laughs> a little bit of both. I have a feeling Stephen would be one of those people who would do the monologues and then do jump the in about halfway through one line. of the scenes. Yeah. I. Uh, I. Uh, uh, yeah, I think he'd probably. No, no, he oh. wouldn't do that. Let's oh, be okay. clear. He Can I tell you a fun story about an improv show that I witnessed recently? Uh, yes. I was visiting New York City over the over the holidays, and I'm not going to name names, but I, I went to see an improv show in mm-hmm. which uh, uh, the monologist got up, uh, did some monologues, and then um, in the second half of the show, he got up, did another monologue, and then halfway through the scenes, uh, the monologist uh, jumped up on the stage and entered a scene as the drug police um, and didn't arrest someone for drugs, but fired someone from their job uh, and then walked off the stage again and made no further moves. <laughs> now, can I ask, George, I know you were just in the audience, so you mm-hmm. wouldn't maybe have intel mm-hmm. on this, but right. did you get the vibe that this monologist had been given license to join in? No, absolutely not. No. There, There was no... It felt like a moment in which everyone involved in, in the process was somewhat baffled because normally you would think this kind of impulse wouldn't be so completely isolated to such a, a disciplined amount of stage time. It wasn't like a, a bid for more attention. I want more stage time. They didn't stay on stage. They made what if they had been on the back line as another improviser it would have been considered a, a, a baffling but somewhat judicious uh, mm-hmm. uh, support move. Mm-hmm. Um, but they jumped on stage, announced that they were the drug police, didn't arrest the person who'd been caught with drugs, but fired them from their job and then left. Huh. So there was a certain amount of it, the, the confidence carried the day, uh, but also the, the amount of, of restraint. Mm-hmm. From, because the whole, the whole thing was really uh, uh, begins as a moment of a complete lack of restraint. What's going on? The wheels are off the, the cart at this point. Mm-hmm. But then to make your move and then step aside, having accomplished whatever it is you think you've accomplished. <laughs> Pretty delightful as an audience member. Um, sure. I'm sure. I wonder what the other improvisers thought. Yeah. I, I, I judging from their expressions, Mm-hmm. I think well, their initial. I think because it, it, it's as an observer of human behavior, this is something that I've studied mm-hmm. my whole life. Mm-hmm. I think they were shocked and delighted, mm-hmm. and then almost seemed as if they were anticipating uh, 
more. Oh, this is not going to stop. Yeah. yeah. This is the new reality. And when it yeah. ended so immediately, I think there was a sense uh, that something truly special had happened. Something, something they would never feel again, which is like a moment of chaos. Normally, uh -huh. when chaos arrives, and this is true in all walks of life, we can expand this from, uh, um, from a mere witnessing of an improv show to, to many things they have in life. Normally when chaos arrives, it arrives in full force mm -hmm. and is devastating. And, uh, and the aftermath of it is, is uh, immense. Mm -hmm. It's so rare to have a moment of chaos. It's just like a tornado that goes whoop. And then immediately. Just uh, one little boop. Just like <laughs> picks up a house, lifts it up, drops it down and then leaves. In roughly um, the same place, it sounds like. Like, there wasn't yes. any real destruction. There, yes. It, 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 as if it had never been there. <laughs> that kind of tornado. A tornado that demonstrated the power to destroy and then showed an, uh, uh, an almost moving level of inadvertent mercy. Wow. Well, I wish I had been there because I'd love to know. I'd just love to know <laughs> more but but you know well that's... you are a working actor rich so i'm afraid uh the only wish that is going to come true for you this year is the ratification of the sag tv and theatrical contract i'll take it i'll take it I'll um take it. but mostly the wishes of actors are among the most neglected forces <laughs> in the universe it's true you think about it. How often? Uh, yeah. Every Don't day, every day, hard. every day, most actors wish for something to happen that absolutely does not happen. Uh huh. <laughs> I haven't seen the latest Disney movie, Wish, but I, I have. I, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you if it happens. I've seen it. So my understanding is there's a, a guy who seems like a good guy, but he's really a bad guy, and he's hogging all the wishes, and he's only granting the smallest mm -hmm. percentage of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is basically how show business works. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. That's Where it's just movie. like, oh, a thousand of you want to do this? Well, guess what? One of you gets to. Hmm. Keep trying. I want to. Jim, I want to figure out. Sorry, I want to figure out how Rich can make a Jim Halpert face while the camera is zooming in on him. Oh, like God. Office, you know, just like a one of those while it zooms in. But I don't know how to make that. Rich, happen. what happens if you do this? If you if you just sit there and, and say, "Come here." What happens if you point at your face? <laughs> Hold on. Wait, if I, wait, well, maybe do if I do, let's do this. <laughs> I can't get it. It, it, it. it has no, there's no rhyme or reason. What happens if you back up? There you go. I mean, that's okay. sort of it. So. He left. I don't know what happened, but he left. What is going on tonight? There he is. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I still I can't know. really suss it out. Oh, it really wants to keep me. I guess it just really does keep you like center. Yeah. That's wild. It's a good feeling. Listen, gentlemen, I hate to do this, but my, my children just got home. My uh, I need to say goodnight to them. How do you know this? How do you know this, Rich? I got a... Got you a, sense it? I got a thing on my phone. So oh. I just got home, but I have to say goodnight to them. I barely talked to them today. Oh, oh my God. God. Well, they must think you're furious with them. them. When you're I, told, talking, I don't want them to think that. I need to I need to allay their fears. Yeah. When you're done talking, if like Stephen wants to come talk to us, that's totally fine. Just gotta, you know, if, if Stephen wants to come talk to you when I'm done, think, when I'm done talking to my kids, just to, like say goodnight to people, you know. Mm. Or while you're talking to your kids, if Stephen wants to come on camera. No, I think I think he's. Uh, oh God! Oh, you know, shh, I think he fell asleep. <laughs> You've been making so much noise, though. I know. I didn't even. That pro he's probably used to that. That probably is what calms him. Yeah. Oh, he, he woke up. Oh, he woke up. Rich no. just said. I actually no, he didn't wake up. You can't see him from where you are. I can see him perfectly. He's sleeping. I think. God, all right, that's. I bet that looks adorable. I it wish does. the camera wasn't so fixated on you. But as, <laughs> as we've established, the camera won't even dare to look at something else while you're in the room. <laughs> I'm sort of zoomed in a little while you put your head down. Put your head down for a second. Look back up. Oh, and make a gym face. <laughs> 
not bad. <laughs> okay. All right. Hi, Rich. Um, Thank good you. Good to see you seasons, all. Seasons greetings. Seasons greetings. Happy, Happy life, life day. day. Happy life day. Thank you for having me. Bye. 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 Well, what are we at, Patrick? What did we? Oh. What did we do? We are currently at 3071, which means if we don't get there by the end of the show, Dave goes up the stairs, Dave goes down the stairs. Can we get Wait, what, was really our goal? what was our goal to get him fall down the stairs? 3,500. That's too much. That's, if that does not, ha if we do not hit 3,500, he does it. If we do hit 3,500, he does not do it. Wait, so you have, poor Dave has to fall down the stairs if we don't get like, Four hundred and thirty more dollars. Yeah, yeah, I have to. Dave, can you do me a favor? Is there something? This is a big ask. <laughs> is there something maybe a little fragile that you could demonstrate what happens if it falls down the stairs? Uh, something that's like okay to break. I mean, I didn't want to say it, but now that you've gone there, yeah. Um, just as an example of a cautionary example of what um. What might happen to you? Yeah, maybe I could find something. Okay. Well, yeah, while, you're you had, that, while you're doing that, those... we have something to show, George. Oh yes, we do. Uh, well, let's. What's the? We we're at three three oh seven one. Yeah, three oh seven one. Let's get up to um, thirty one hundred before we show this. Wait, but we've already passed the goal to show it. Oh, we did. Well, then never mind. Uh this is a kind of a life day tradition on the George Lucas talk show, um, particularly in the, in the live stream era of GLTS and uh, ladies and gentlemen, Grand Bell Fisher.
Cheers. I, look, he's got one song left to complete the Life Day soundtrack. And I told him he could easily put out an LP. It's true. I also think there are um, patches of dialogue uh, mm -hmm. throughout the special that he could set to music very easily. <laughs> yeah. Not everything needs to rhyme. Bjork's songs don't rhyme. That's true. I think you could take the Harvey Corman segments and easily turn whip, those into songs. Whip, stir, stir, whip, stir, stir, whip. Turn that yeah. into a song. You could definitely. I think, so. I think. I think once you do that, then you find yourself in real um, uh, danger of uh, having a gold record, having to go platinum. Uh huh. <laughs> um, so, how far are we away from uh, Jersey Dave? Um, uh. Oh, we are currently, let's see, one, two, three. Let me just do some math. Just some basic math. That's all we need to do basic here. Just a little bit. We're like $320 away. And how many people are watching right now? 210. If some of you donate $2 and some of you donate $1, we will get there. Yeah. And the only, the thing you need to decide is am I a $2 friend or a $1 friend? Or a five dollar friend, or a twenty dollar friend. You know, uh, a single twenty dollar friend could could buy a lot of uh, people. Could be no dollar friends if there were enough twenty dollar friends. Hey, Dave. Hey, how much? How much was it for you to fall out of the door again? <laughs> I mean, I did it for ten dollars last time. <laughs> we, I wouldn't mind up in a bargain. What a bargain that was. Scratched my, my back a little bit. How much? Uh, well, plausible. <laughs> it really says another 10. So, you know, honestly, I'm good with that. <laughs> no, up it, up it. All right, $20 for me to fall again? I don't want you to get your back too scratched, though. Because mm. you're going to have to go down those stairs, too. Did you find something to show us what the stairs look like? I don't know what exactly you mean. Like, just something to drop it down the stairs and it like an egg have, will fall you apart. Have, you like have an egg. Hands. I was going to make a little tower of Legos. Big, big That's Legos. Good. But Dave, I think you just pushed that bucket down. It's loud. Know. It's late. He has kids. There are two floors up. It's fine. Oh, well, then do it. <laughs> We've never seen this side of your 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 wall. Wow, what a treat. Yeah, we should have made that a stretch goal. <laughs> so this is what's going to happen to Jersey Dave if we don't make another $320. Yeah. <laughs> now... We don't want that. Interestingly enough, in the future, that's um, how they'll make movies. They'll just throw a bunch of Legos down the stairs and AI will turn it into the actor. <laughs> they won't need actors anymore because they're just like, dump a bunch of shit down the stairs and then we'll make it Bruce Willis. Can't do that. We don't have that kind of budget. Mm -hmm. No, what I'm saying is we'll use the AIs. <laughs> Wow. How's your night going, Dave? I'm sorry we haven't talked to you a lot. Oh, that's fine. Um, it's good. It's good. Yeah. We um we bought a, a, a an indoor like garden thingy. It's like a mm -hmm. hydroponic tower where it just pumps water through it and then you a can water feature? It's a water feature. It's an internal water feature. You don't really see it. It's and... basically three PVC pipes. Just upright, and then you grow like lettuce and shit uh, inside. I'm super excited about it. Hmm. Yeah. That sounds like the most Dave thing possible. I was gonna make this myself, but they are they're I mean they've made it, and it's way better than what I would have done. So wow, wow. pretty pumped. Wow, yeah. lettuce. That's right, Ethan Runt. Uh, they, we do have some more. Uh, Ooh, we just got some. Yeah. 
Oops, I'm going to react like I can see the numbers too. Oh, jeez. I'm seeing the numbers come in. Yeah. What do you I think mean, of the uh, numbers, George? Pretty big numbers coming in, guys. Uh, George, what was your favorite part of the show tonight? Um, I, I enjoyed so much of the show tonight. Uh, mm-hmm. I enjoyed being able to uh, do the Art Museum interview. Uh, it was nice to see Mike Lee in black. I enjoyed uh, talking about... Um, being a uh, an actor uh, in a pretending to be a doctor or pretending to be you know the approach to acting i enjoyed seeing those cats mm-hmm. I enjoyed um making that bumper of the of the um announcing the sag strike is over mm-hmm. um what else um i uh there were so many fun things um yeah I enjoyed seeing uh, um, Rich in his Life Day robe. Mm-hmm. It's nice to see Stephen Charleston again. I'd miss Stephen and Rich. Stephen hasn't been on a live stream since our return to live streaming episode, the the PFT, Odenkirk, Wyatt, Patton, that episode. So this is only a second well over a year, there. right? I, yeah, I think it was like <laughs> October 2021, maybe. Um, uh, Jersey Dave blog blog is asking what kind of friends does Jersey Dave request we send him to make new friends I mean do you have so many action figures that you have to choose uh, I mean any anything I, th- I, I don't you, you never know where inspiration is going to come from you never know where inspiration is going to come from so anything that's like Got a, a an interesting name? Uh, anything that you just think looks cool? I mean, yeah. If you got any wuzzles, send over the wuzzles if you got them. Send over this guy. This is Halloween Wookie. Halloween Wookie. He's a wear. He's a wear Wookie. And look, because we're talking about them on the show, that's how they become tax write offs. You know what I mean? That's right. You can, over, you can send over these guys. Junior. Junior. So now you're, you're writing off all of these things? Junior. They named the dog you, have, you have so many things that you, I'm sure, want to write off. Junior. Do we want to hear what, uh, what uh, Butterbear has to say? Yeah. Can I get a full screen? Yeah. Oh, we're so close to me not falling down the stairs. So it asked if I have Davy still, and I can't find the. Oh, here we go. Blogtoven. Yep. 
George, because we're talking about that, I feel like I should bring this up, which is the shirt that's available in our store. I just made it today. It is a Wuzzles shirt, uh, and on it, uh, it says, I mean, do you want to read this, George? I can't read that from here. It's a two-point type. Okay, well, it says the Wuzzles are not a George Lucas creation. They're Walt Disney creation, specifically Michael Eisner's Disney. In the 1980s, the Disney Corporation was floundering, and they were looking to create some new characters, so they created a couple of made-for-television franchises featuring all new characters. You might be familiar with the adventures of the Gummy Bears, but did you know that there was also a series called Disney's Wuzzles? The Wuzzles are animals that are a combination of more than one animal, usually two different animals, a la a bear cat, retired filmmaker George Lucas. Pretty good shirt. Right now, fifteen dollars. They're normally twenty two ninety five. All of our shirts are on sale currently. Uh, we that means we only get like a dollar from it. So if you want to get it, get it now. You know. Yeah, but we're not really. We don't really need to push that right now because we are trying to raise money for the food. Right, we, you know. we did sell a Wuzzles notebook, so you can get a like a journal, and any of these designs can be on the cover of the journal. Yeah. And so someone. Did buy this uh, that that, that quote design <laughs> just a paragraph of words. I, I think mean, that would be a great pillow, to be honest. Let's just go through. Look at this. Uh, we're gonna do home. You can get it as a fine art print. That's a you great can get fine it, art print. You can yeah. get it as a framed oh, fine art print. Oh my god! Is is this isn't the best present for to get someone to hang in their home? You can get it as a stretched canvas up to 24 by 24. Oh, my God. Uh, you can get a tapestry. Uh, <laughs> really lovely. You can get it as a rug. Great rug. Uh, you can get it as a throw pillow. I like it as a throw pillow. I might I might get the throw pillow myself. How could they possibly make that as a rug? You, oh. There's no way that you, they could make that as a yeah, rug. That's a circle. It's a circle. Excuse me. Up to a 26-inch by 26-inch throw pillow. It's a great pillow. Uh, you can get it as... Someone get it as a rug and let me know if you can read it. You can get it as a blanket. Blanket's nice. You can get it as a duvet. <laughs> You can get it as a bath mat. <laughs> I do love that one. You can get it as a shower curtain. Come on, where is it? There. It is. <laughs> uh, I feel like that that's a hard one because of the 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 folds of it, you know. Yeah. You can get it as a mounted aluminum print. Uh you can get it as a mounted acrylic print. Um, now we're going to go to accessories and you can get almost any of our things in these things. You can get it as a mouse pad. You can get it as a yoga mat. You can get it. Now, Dave and I really like this one. You can get it as a 500 piece jigsaw puzzle. I recently did just buy a jigsaw puzzle from this yeah. website. You can get it as a sticker. That's just a quote. It's very uh, tiny. Yeah. You can get it on a mug. Uh, you can get it on a bag. You can get it as a tote bag. You can get it as a weekender bag. You can get it as a drawstring bag. Or you can get it as a laundry bag. This is a great idea. Yeah. You can get it uh, as a magnet. Uh, you can get it as a notebook, which I think this on the cover of a notebook is kind of great. I, someone, someone bought this. Yeah, the like actual it's, thing is is. I yeah. think it's pretty great. It's pretty uh, cool. You can get it as a zip pouch. Uh, <laughs> I mean, some of these it's incredibly hard to imagine reading it on. <laughs> sure, not this one. You can get it as a skateboard, baby. You can get it as a button. Where's this button? Why did the button not come through? You can get it as a button. There it is as a button. You can get it as a uh shoot. You can get it as a phone case. Hmm, what's going on? Hmm. There's a phone case. We're almost we're almost 
threw him. Phone case. It looks like it. that looks like a weird minion. <laughs> you can get it as a greeting card. <laughs> you can get it as a face mask. <laughs> <laughs> you can get it as a neck gator. And I didn't want to put neck gators because I feel like people pretend like those are uh workable face masks and they're not. Uh but they're on there. Uh you can get it as a beach towel. Um, is that it for the I like that it's it's that way, it's this the small way. Like they could yeah. rotate it. Yes. Make it large. No. But then you can also get it. These are the things that I like. You can get it on a jacket. You can get it on a bomber jacket. Oh, wait. Oh, oh that didn't work. I'll have to figure that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not all combinations are. Oh, it's, on the, it's on the pocket. Yeah. No, no, no. It's on the. <laughs> I like that. Uh, no, it's on the back, but it's in black, so you can't read it in black. Um, <laughs> I mean, these are so weird. Uh, there's so many things. There's so many things. Um, so we have... I, I thought you said a face mask, and then it was like a full face mask where you just see the quote. Uh-huh. Like, I was thinking of like a face shield yes. where you just go out and people just read the quote and you'd see through it. Yes. So, Dave, we hit it, you said? We did. That's I do not hard. have to throw myself down the stairs. That's great. Hey, what a what an anticlimactic end to a, a show we designed. Dave, it ends, you know? if we reach our goal, it means that you don't have to do something. I mean, we could just say, like, anyone that doesn't want to see this, that this is the end of the show. We can't. No, we can't really do that because people paid for you to not do, do not it. Do or, it. or Dave, we can make one last stretch goal to make you do it again. I feel like there's a precedent within our bidding system, within our fundraising system that was established a while ago, which is that like once people have bid for something to happen or not happen, we have to live up to it. You know that like. But here we go. Here we go. Look, I'm glad Dave is uninjured, but I will watch. You don't have to, but if you feel like it. <laughs> but I, I don't feel I, like I don't. I, I feel like people pay choices. good money for him to not risk his uh, well-being by doing it. And if we just tell those people to go away and then we do it, it's sort of just like a really silly angle from here. You wouldn't be able to see much anyway. Dave, do you have pillows you can put at the bottom? Oh, I have a whole couch full of pillows right here. Okay. Let's yeah, put some pillows. It. Let's put some pillows. And can I design this a little bit for you? Um, I would love that so much. Okay. So get some oh, pillows. God, all of these pillows are so covered in cat hair. So Wait. covered in cat hair. Well, hey, that's babe. something that's hey, rich. You're already yes. covered in cat hair. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I'm allergic to cats. Yeah. What? I take pillows every fucking day. My life is terrible. Are you I have really a cat and I'm allergic to cats. Oh, there's so much hair. It's so much hair. Okay. Do you okay. see? The, do you see that? That's yeah, all see. fucking cat hair. All right. So, Dave. Yeah. Here's what I think. Here's what I think I want. And it's going to be different than falling down the stairs. Okay. Okay. I want you to. Get on the stairs and lie down, face down on the stairs, out of sight of us. Okay, head head up or head down? Head at the bottom of the stairs, legs up higher at the top or whatever. And on my stomach. On your stomach. Well, you can do it on your back if you want. But well, here's what I want, though, is I want you to slither down the stairs like a snake. Legos everywhere. <laughs> All right. Legos everywhere. Yeah, well, whose fault is that, Dave? I, which one of you asked me to, <laughs> to throw something down the stairs? I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we anyway, asked for something. Uh, all right. George, Let's George, slither down the stairs. What did you say, Patrick? Doing that, let me remind people that a lot of your works uh, will match donations. Mm -hmm. So if you're able to do that, uh, let us know and we'll, we'll double the donation that you gave. Great. Great. So 
what I'd like to see from you is to slither down the stairs like a snake. And I want you to kind of burrow under those pillows and then pop your head out like a, don't you keep your arms at your side. You're a snake. Okay. Okay. Oh, hold on. I, uh, hold on just a second. I, I got a, I got a call. Um, coming in. Hey, Bryson, you're on speakerphone. <laughs> hey, George, sorry I missed your call. What can I do for you? Uh, we wanted you to make a bumper, um, for just for charity for all time's sake. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Yeah, you called an hour ago. I assume you no longer need a bumper. Well, I made one, but it, it, if you have one, uh, feel free, but it, I don't want you to worry about it. I'm, I'm driving at the moment. Otherwise, I would. Oh, don't make a bumper while driving. What if? No, I'm what not if? Make a bumper while driving. George, I feel like in a way that's its own bumper. It's kind of like a PSA we're recording now. Like, don't make bumpers while driving. It's wait, not George, George, George. Also, I'm not in a bumper car. I'm in a. I'm in a Ford Escape. Yeah, but even if you were, I actually I would say if you're in a bumper car, you probably it's probably the safest kind of car to make a bumper in because it's just a it's just a, a fairground attraction. If you're on a car on the road, that's life or death. So you want to not make bumpers unless you're a passenger in the car. Definitely not if you're the driver. George, I'm starting to get the feeling that I only get a call from you when you need something. Yeah, that's right. Okay. okay. Bye, Bryson. Bye, bye, Bryson. Um, all right. Are we ready for a slither? Bye, bye, Bryson. All right. Let's see the slither. Oh. Now I want to see the slither. He's slithering under the pillows. All right, and then pop his head up out through the pillows when you get a chance. There he is. Just an ordinary garden snake. He's harmless. Don't worry, he's as frightened of you as you are of him. Jersey Snake. Ugh. You okay? Yeah. Fuck. Ugh. I think I pulled a muscle on my back. For real? Well, yeah, I'll stretch it out. I'll stretch it out. I do feel like that was very impressive looking. It looked cool. I had... I, I, Felt like there was zero reaction from you guys, so I had no idea. <laughs> what? Well, Patrick cut away right at a crucial moment. He wanted my reaction, but I was engrossed. Mm -hmm. I thought it looked really good, Dave. Thank you. Very good snake work. I appreciate it. It's my first, it's my first snake roll. I think your kids will like that. Do you think you'll do it for them? <laughs> I could. Um, hold I, on. I, I, I have to say, if you build a, a snake nest at the bottom of the stairs, then do that same move. Hey, hey, Bryson. Hey, oh, he's hey, gone. Hey, oh, he's there. Doing? Hey. Hey, um, I, I wanted to call you. I just got the weirdest call from retired filmmaker George Lucas. Oh, yeah. He's on one tonight. Well, he, here's the thing, Dave. Can I confide in you privately? Yeah, this could be private if you want. Okay. Well, it's just like I feel like I spent a majority of like my quarantine with retired filmmaker George Lucas, and I feel like we got really close. And like we all we all got like really tight knit and everything. We had like a good time working on the show and everything. But I don't really hear from retired filmmaker George Lucas all that much anymore. And whenever he calls me, he seems to want something. <laughs> yeah. Is it well? Can I guess? Is it usually a, a bumper? Well, no, I, I'm uh, absolutely rubbish at making bumpers. The thing is, you're really good at making bumpers, so I think that's probably why he asked you. I just, I mean, I, I, I just wanted to confide in you as a friend, because, you know, I, I, I like George, I like George a lot, and, and uh, I just, you know, I wish we were closer, you know? So you wish that you he saw you beyond just your bumper making abilities? Yeah, like, is he asked you to do anything weird recently? Uh, no, just like normal kind of stuff. It's like, you know, hell, I, I help with the donations. I sl slither down the stairs like a snake. 
Um, sometimes I make little little guys, little friends. What was that? What was that? What was that second one? I uh, I slither down the stairs like a snake, or I fall out of my closets. Dave, I've got closets. They're little closets. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm losing you. Love you. Love you. George, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that you had to hear that. That's okay. I feel like Bryce needs to go see Disney's Wish. <laughs> he wishes we were closer. He should go see that movie and see how uh, the deal with Wishes is. I haven't seen it yet, but I understand it. it from what Patrick tells me, it's a pretty clear-eyed view of the fact that most wishes don't come true. Mm -hmm. What's our grand total, Patrick? Uh, as of right now, we are at three three five two one point nine zero, which means seventeen thousand six hundred and nine dollars in or seventeen thousand six hundred and nine meals. Meals. Point five. So if we can get that point five fixed, that'd be great. But that's probably our, our end. Uh, well, I want to thank everybody for uh, hanging with us tonight. Um, if you want to see part two of the holiday special, it'll be a, another Life Day celebration. Because the thing about Life Day is it's not just a day. It's at least two days. That's what I think. Maybe more. But more than a day, it's a way of thinking. And I, I think everyone who contributed a little bit or a lot to uh, the Food Bank of New York uh, tonight, uh, you, are in the, you are in the life day frame of mind. Uh, and you should, uh, it's something to feel good about. Because, you know, a lot of days it feels like there aren't necessarily it's it's very easy to think about all the things to not feel good about so every now and then it's very nice to be able to focus on even just one thing to feel good about and uh everyone who uh spent a little time with us tonight and gave a little bit gave a little bit back um it makes us very happy um to, to be able to um, make things a little bit better. And uh, Jersey Dave, I want to say happy life day. It was very nice seeing you tonight. And I, I applaud your snake work and your artistry on the action figures. Mm -hmm. uh, the art piece is really uh, very impressive. I'm always so impressed with the work that you do. Thanks. Yeah, we I had a great life day. Thank you guys so much for, for spending it with me. We love you and we appreciate you, Dave. I feel very appreciated. It's just like it's like sort of turned to a little bit of a dark, you know, sort of mood here. But um, I'm just very, very happy that I can make some weird things for you and slither down. I've never slithered down these stairs before. Why would so I, I ever do that? And I, I think your kids will genuinely oh, enjoy yeah. that. I think you get some good laughs out of that if you build a if you do that and say, look, daddy's a snake. They love they love physical comedy. Yeah, well, it was very good. If you when you I watch the tape, something just like oh, hours, you'll watch that forever. Yeah. Hey, George. Yeah. We did just get another one hundred dollar donation in. So I think the only way to end this show, Dave, is with you falling out of those closets again. Okay. Should you? Okay. Here's All right. This is the part that I don't love to show because it's like, you know. <laughs> the struggle is part of the fun. You just can't quite close that door. And I like how those look like eyes. They're a little bit cross-eyed.
happy life day to all. And may the force be with you. Okay, Dave. Yeah, that one I can do. I can, that's that one doesn't hurt. But your cat was right outside the door. Didn't know that.